The main character, Lin Fan, is depressed. He suffers, lies and thinks about how to continue to live, tears welling up in his eyes. In desperation, thinking very poorly, Lin Fan goes out onto a busy road how bad he feels. Abandoned by his girlfriend, he wanders aimlessly in despair, not knowing where, until he is hit by a car. With a powerful blow, the car hits the guy. He flies off several meters, falls to the ground, and hits the asphalt very hard. Experiencing unbearable pain, the hero lies on the asphalt and thinks that this time he will definitely die. After all, Lin Fan doesn't want to die and hears someone's voice telling him that if he doesn't want to die, he needs to sign a contract. Seeing no one around, Lin Fan looks around in surprise and asks who is talking to him. A pretty girl turns to the guy, asking if he can hear her and if everything is okay with him. The girl invites him to sign a contract, but Lin Fan, being at a loss, does not understand where he is. Confused, the main character, with a shaking hand, tries to sign the contract. Suddenly, the girl punches him in the face and he finds himself confused and bewildered. The main character loses consciousness, and the last thing he is aware of is the sound of breaking glass. Lying on the floor and coming to his senses, Lin Fan sees a girl who asks if he is okay. Lin Fan lies on the floor with a bloody face and hears a repeated phrase. The guy lying on the floor wonders what's going on, while the girl thinks about how badly he's hurt. Lin Fan is lying on the ground, looking up at the sky, with thoughts in his head that all of this might be a hallucination or an illusion. The hero looks indifferently into nowhere. He is completely indifferent to what happens next. A virtual screen appears in the air, inviting you to become the number one genius and join the system. The guy cannot understand what it is, and an unknown voice tells him that he must wait. Lin Fan wants to turn off the annoying gadget, but he fails, and he hears information about himself from the gadget. Information appears on the virtual display screen that you can score points by absorbing emotions. The virtual screen goes on to explain that it converts spontaneous emotions like fear into points. A smiley appears on the screen and suggests trying to score points right now. The guy thinks that this is some kind of nonsense, but is forced to agree because he wants to stay alive. The girl watches all this with a frightened face and offers to take Lin Fan to the hospital. The main character's eyes lose their human appearance. He agrees to the offered help. The guy crawls up to the girl, licks her hand, and asks her to bring him back to life. Lin Fan looks at the girl but sees in her appearance an ugly ghost who screams heart-rendingly. The girl loses consciousness, falls to the ground next to Lin Fan, and he receives 200 points from the system. The main character is thinking about where he can find so many people with their emotions in order to earn a lot of points from the system. Lin Fan ahead sees the neon sign of the women's restroom across the road and crawls towards it with all his strength. A beautiful girl with long hair looks into a hand mirror and corrects her makeup. The girl turns around in fear. There is fear in her eyes. She is scared and does not know what kind of noise is coming out. Lin Fan crawls out to the frightened girl, takes her by the leg and touches her knee with his lips. The main character holds the girl tightly by the leg and with a distraught look, tries to talk to her. Lin Fan, with a bloody face, presses against the girl's leg and invites her to kiss. The girl is horrified and amazed by what is happening. She is speechless. Tears appear on her face. A cry is heard calling to kill the pervert, and the girl kicks Lin Fan in the back with all her might. The main character looks at the virtual screen and sees that the system has awarded more points for his trick. Lin Fan believes that what he is doing is nonsense, but he is not going to stop there and give up. Lying on the ground, the main character reflects that he should not act further and not give up. The guy, with his last strength, grabs the toilet door and tries to open it to get inside. Opening the door wide, Lin Fan sees the restroom in the bright light in front of him, a row of wash basins. Having completely lost his strength, the guy cannot get to his feet and walk. He holds on to the doorway, hoping to get inside. Lin Fan, seeing people inside cleaning themselves at a row of sinks with mirrors, realizes that he needs their emotions to live. Loud sounds are heard from the room, the screams of frightened girls and curses insulting the main character. Girls quickly run down the street, forced to leave the toilet, tears streaming down their faces, their eyes full of fear. A virtual score balance display appears and offers a Lin Fan heel for deducting a thousand points. With his arms and legs spread out to the sides, the guy lies on the floor of the toilet. His healing process is underway. A virtual screen is watching him. Greatly surprised by his healing by the system, the main character considers what is happening to him to be an incredible event. 
A virtual screen appears with a smiley face on it, and a question is asked to Lin Fan about how it went and how he liked it. The guy turns to the virtual screen with questions about what is happening and calls him a ghost. The virtual screen does not like this. The main character asks the virtual screen not to be offended and thanks him for the fact that the system saved his life. The virtual screen suggests that Lin Fan should naturally be grateful for his salvation and that the system has a mission to bring order to the development of the era. The guy asks a question regarding where the screen and system came from, and in response he hears information that he is a carrier, and he does not need to know anything else. The screen tells the main character the balance of his points, which are 660. Listening to the call to press the red button on the virtual screen, the guy presses the indicated button with a bloody finger. Lin Fan lies on his back with his hands behind his head and wonders what cooperation with the system will give him. The main character's thoughts are interrupted by an object that falls from above and hits him right in the face. The guy jumps up in bewilderment, grabs the object with his hand, and looking at it in surprise, realizes that it is bread. The main character understands that he got the bread because he listened and pressed the red button on the virtual screen. Frantically, Lin Fan begins to repeatedly press the red button, expecting new gifts from the system that will be more useful than bread. The guy presses the red button again and again in the hope of receiving gifts from the system, but nothing happens. Lin Fan is angry. His face loses its human appearance due to the fact that there is no reaction after pressing the button, and he hears a voice saying that the gifts have been delivered. There are strange objects on the floor. Lin Fan looks at them with bewilderment and cannot understand how they can be useful to him. On the floor there is a plumbing plunger, pieces of bread, a black and red whip, and other incomprehensible objects. The guy is trying to stop the process of getting things he doesn't need using a virtual screen, but he can't find the necessary button. Suddenly, Lin Fan sees a message appear on the screen stating that he has received the massage therapist skill. The guy sits on the floor and thinks about how useful this new skill is and how it will help him. There are shouts, insults, and calls to call the police outside, and Lin Fan suddenly realizes that he is still in the women's restroom. The guy is very scared and asks the system if it has any necessary skills for him in this situation. The system offers Lin Fan camouflage functions and informs him that for this skill, he will deduct 150 points from his account. The door to the toilet opens wide and frightened girls enter the room along with a police officer. They are looking for a guy, but all they see in front of them is a girl in a black corset and a white blouse with a big red bow on her chest. Lin Fan hears the system's voice saying that the countdown is beginning after which the disguise that turned the main character into a girl will disappear. There is a dialogue between the girls and the policemen, in which they cannot explain where the strange, inadequate guy has gone. Lin Fan listens to the conversation between the girls and the police officer, and realizes in horror that in 13 seconds the disguise will disappear. Those present turn to the main character in the guise of a girl with a question whether he has seen a zombie pervert. The guy realizes in horror that the disguise will only work for another eight seconds. Beads of sweat run down his face from excitement. Those present are discussing where the zombie pervert could have gone, and the main character asks those present to leave the room. The girls decide that the intruder could not have gone far, and invite the officer to continue the search somewhere nearby. The girls turn around and leave the toilet. Lin Fan follows them with his gaze and is relieved to realize that he is saved. The timer ends, the guy loses his disguise and takes on his natural appearance. A virtual screen, visible only to Lifan, informs him that he can use a disguise purchased in one of the menu sections only once. The main character is annoyed by the fact that the system did not warn him about this information earlier. The screen informs Lin Fan that the more points he scores, the more useful skills he will gain. The guy comes to the conclusion that if he has enough glasses, it can radically change his life for the better. Lin Fan realizes that all he has to do is be extremely unpredictable. The people in the restaurant got up and went to the window. Something happening on the street interested them very much. The main character slowly walks down the street. Passers-by look at him in bewilderment. They are surprised and alarmed by his appearance. Lin Fan sits down at a table in a street cafe. Passers-by pay close attention to him. Their faces are surprised and wary. The main character takes a towel, wipes his bloody hands and face, and understands that the main thing is not only the points earned in the system, 
Lin Fan is aware of the fact that he may soon become an invincible genius. People run away in horror, and the guy receiving points from the system slowly leaves the street. The main character's name is Lin Fan. He is a university student. Since his father died, he switched to distance learning. Now Li Fan works with his uncle and studies. People around him look at the guy and sincerely don't understand why he looks so tired. The main character wonders why his condition can be compared to a squeezed lemon. Lin Fan talks about how the system saved him yesterday, how he got into a serious and long-lasting mess. The guy lies on the bed and thinks that he does not need to pay for housing since he lives with his uncle in the store. The main character lies on the bed and compares his yesterday's adventures with science fiction comics. The guy looks at the virtual screen and sees his new skill as a massage therapist with a one-star level. Lin Fan reflects on the possibility of using his abilities in life. The guy imagines himself in a superhero costume, fighting hostile, ugly monsters. The main character has a desire to become a demon king and bring the whole world to its knees. Lin Fan receives a message on his phone from his girlfriend, saying that she has found another guy and wants to end the relationship. The guy comes to the conclusion that money is the reason for everything. A cozy room appears before the guy's eyes. It has a large, expensive chandelier. Everything is filled with red. Lin Fan gives a massage to a beautiful girl with long hair lying in front of him. The girl experiences great, fantastic pleasure from the massage that the guy gives her. Lin Fan praises his massage technique, gives his office number, and recommends that the girl come to him in the future. The guy thinks that the girl liked the massage session and she will definitely come back again. A powerful electric shock hits the main character. It is completely unclear why this happened. Lin Fan's face is distorted. Tears are flowing from his eyes, and steam is coming from his ears and mouth. A screen appears in front of the guy, which tells him that the system should be used to develop talents and not to court girls. The main character, in wild irritation, explains to the system about the misunderstanding of the situation. Lin Fan notifies the system that he will train on himself. Video icons are displayed on the computer screen, and the cursor is directed to one of them. The guy nervously and casually takes a large number of napkins from the box. Lin Fan sits slumped in a chair in front of the monitor in a dark room with his eyes closed. He has a strong desire to drown out the pain of a broken heart. The main character picks up a joystick and begins to play an exciting computer game, experiencing genuine joy. The guy is wearing a fighter pilot's helmet, and colossal tension and determination are displayed on his face. Combat fighters take a difficult turn, and the pursuing aircraft opens fire on the enemy. Lin Fan sits at a computer in complete darkness, on the screen of which an exciting air battle is taking place. The main character is at the controls in the cockpit of a combat fighter. Attacking and downed aircraft are visible through the cockpit glass. The pilot enters the attack line, fires a swarm of deadly missiles, and hits the enemy command board. The guy is sad that he cannot find the right use for his fantastic skills. People around him discuss Lin Fan's appearance. They do not understand the reason for the guy's sick appearance and his psychological state. A virtual screen appears in front of the main character, which shows the balance of his points awarded by the system. Lin Fan is dissatisfied with the number of points received from the massage therapist's skill, and he intends to acquire a new skill that will allow him to receive more points from the system. The virtual display turns into a mesmerizing portal and the guy looks into it, thinking about his destiny. There is a cup of aromatic noodles on the table. Its smell fills the entire restaurant. The main character peers into the cup of noodles and wonders why the system chose such a strange gift. Lin Fan gets angry at the system and begins to furiously press buttons on the virtual display, demanding more valuable prizes from the system. The guy watches as all the tables and stoves in the kitchen are filled with bowls of noodles. Lin Fan is not satisfied with the fact that the system only offers noodles as prizes. He wants to receive more useful gifts. The main character is worried because, in a fit of anger, he spent 1,200 points on choosing prizes. Lin Fan is very upset, cries, and presses the button on the virtual display again, hoping to win a more valuable prize. This time, the guy wins a new skill. The system congratulates him on this achievement. Lin Fan looks at the virtual monitor screen in amazement perplexed at the new skill he has acquired. A tall young man appears at the door of the restaurant and addresses Lin Fan by name. A gray-haired old man is having dinner at a table, pretending to be indifferent to what is happening. 
The guy standing next to the girl is discussing Lin Fan in an offensive way, and the girl thinks that her boyfriend is still drunk. The waiter politely invites the guy and girl to go into the restaurant and sit down at a free table. The tall young guy turns his attention to Lin Fan again and insults him loudly for the entire restaurant to hear. A tall young guy named Xiao approaches Lin Fan and announces that he will teach him a lesson today. Xiao expresses his opinion that Lin Fan is a beggar and is unable to pay for housing on his own. Xiao talks about Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend who left him, justifying her actions. A tall young guy, Xiao, declares that he has incriminating evidence and shows his phone. Xiao laughs loudly and rejoices. The reason for his joy is Lin Fan's sad financial situation. Xiao tells Lin Fan about his serious relationship with his ex-girlfriend. Lin Fan picks up his phone and points it towards the interlocutor. Xiao wonders what Lin Fan is doing. Lin Fan filmed an unpleasant conversation on his phone and is threatening to post the video of the conversation on the internet. Xiao grabs the main character by the chest, shakes him and demands to immediately delete the recording, threatening him with physical harm. Xiao becomes enraged and threatens to kill Lin Fan, clenching his fist and raising his hand to strike. Flying out of the restaurant at wild speed, Xiao reaches a car parked on the side of the road and hits it hard. The main character stands on the threshold of the restaurant in a combat stance. Everyone around him is in complete amazement at his combat abilities. Experience points are added to his account in the system. The girl is very upset about what is happening, and Lin Fan tells her of his innocence in the current situation. The protagonist's ex-girlfriend shows dissatisfaction with her past relationships. She is unhappy with what is happening and asks not to interfere with her happiness. Lin Fan comes to the conclusion that the ex-girlfriend is only interested in money. The girl expresses the opinion that she made the right choice and can afford a lot and will not need it in the future. Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend made a choice in favor of financial well-being. The girl slowly leaves and asks Lin Fan not to look for an opportunity to meet her. People around him discuss Lin Fan's recent fight, express concerns about his future, and share information about the powerful Zhao family. Uncle Lin Fan suggests that before it's too late to go beg for forgiveness from the Xiao family. The main character thanks his uncle for his concern, but decides that he will solve the problem himself without the advice of others. Lin Fan is completely confident in solving his problem on his own. Xiao sits defeated near the car and curses Lin Fan. Those around him are anxiously interested in his well-being. The main character appears on the horizon, and Xiao's henchmen immediately rush towards him headlong. Lin Fan's uncle runs out into the street, swings a broom, and calls on the attackers to leave the guy alone. Lin Fan powerfully hits the opponent, sending them flying into the air, from where they fly away, screaming loudly. The next opponent is subjected to a powerful uppercut from Lin Fan, after which he flies several meters away. Changing his face and taking on a demonic appearance, Lin Fan leaves defeated opponents lying unconscious by the machine. The main character's eyes pop out of their sockets, under the influence of the frantic rage that overwhelms him. On the threshold of the restaurant stands the amazed uncle of Lin Fan with a broom in his hands. He cannot believe how Lin Fan dealt with superior opponents. Approaching Lin Fan's uncle, the mysterious old man says that the guy is not a failure. He has potential. In a calm voice, the old man asks his uncle a question about who taught Lin Fan so well. The mysterious old man and uncle stand at the threshold of the restaurant watching Lin Fan's fight. The uncle expresses surprise at his nephew's skill. The guy stands in a fighting stance, realizing the usefulness of the new skill given by the system, and sees how new points are added to his account. The car door opens, a stranger steps on the ground, and admiration for Lin Fan's skill is heard all around. The girl who got out of the car claps her hands, admiring how the guy defeated two opponents. Lin Fan stands in front of the car, fascinated by the beauty and charm of the girl. A girl, a university student named Mei, offers to see what Lin Fan is capable of. She offers to fight. Lin Fan is amazed by Mei's beauty. The girl's appearance completely paralyzes the guy. Xiao calls the main character a freak. He asks the girl to teach her offender a lesson. Demands to be silent are replaced by Mei's blow, which instantly knocks Xiao to the ground. A virtual screen appears in front of the main character, informing him that a serious enemy has been spotted. During her freshman year, Mei took second place in the national taekwondo competition. The girl runs up, pushes off the ground. Her attack is directed towards Li Fan. The main character looks at what is happening in amazement. He is surprised by the speed of the girl's reaction. 
Mei makes a jumping strike at Lin Fan. The guy blocks and professionally deflects the blow. The girl's furious attack continues, performing a somersault in the air. Mei continues to strike. The guy is very surprised by the level of the girl's combat technology. The battle continues. Lin Fan doubts the outcome of the fight. Mei uses a secret technique against the main character, hoping that the enemy will be defeated now. The girl continues to attack, delivering deadly blows one after another. Mei's next attack throws Lin Fan back several tens of meters. The girl is very surprised by the guy's skill. She thinks about how the guy managed to block all her fatal blows. Lin Fan was lucky to block in time, and he is ready to continue the fight. Mei tells the guy that until now, she has succumbed to him, and now her attacks will be in full force. Lin Fan really likes Mei, her chic appearance and fantastic fighting skills. The main character examines the girl with an insatiable gaze. The battle temporarily fades into the background. Mei takes off her shoes, raises her hand with her shoes in front of her, and slowly unclenches her fingers. Boots fall to the ground. Mei looks at her opponent with an arrogant look, confidence in her eyes. Lin Fan's face is distorted with fear and doubt. The outcome of the fight is in doubt. The men at the entrance in front of the restaurant are discussing the fight. Lin Fan's uncle is worried and unsure of his nephew's victory. Mei, a first-class martial artist who previously wore heavy boots, will now fight barefoot. The system's virtual screen informs Lin Fan that everything is bad and the situation is critical. Meanwhile, Mei understands the advantage of his situation and intends to continue the attack. The guy repels the girl's numerous attacks and realizes the weakness of his equipment compared to Mei's combat equipment. Lin Fan is greatly surprised by the strength of his opponent and wonders how much longer he can hold out. The girl did not expect Lin Fan's high combat level. The guy repelled all her blows. The main character understands that he will not have another chance and decides to launch a final counterattack. The system allows a guy to use his boxing skills at the maximum level. Lin Fan continues to attack his opponent with the skills gained from the system. The girl is thinking about how a guy can fight back and attack her under such severe pressure. Mei plans a cunning attack that will end the fight with her victory. The girl decides to use the Black Silk Path combat system. The guy is trying to fend off monstrous blows. The technique of the Black Silk fighting way is deadly. Lin Fan is dissatisfied with the level of abilities that the system has provided him. He thinks that he clearly does not have enough skills to defeat his opponent. The system screen appears and explains to the guy that genius does not guarantee invincibility and encourages him to train more. The guy is in severe pain. Mei continues to furiously attack him using black silk path techniques. Lin Fan begins to experience a strange, previously unknown feeling that was not inherent in him before. The world around the main character freezes and Lin Fan begins to remember something long forgotten. Distracted and unable to cope with Mei's next attack, the guy misses a series of blows and, struck, falls to the ground. Mei looms over the defeated Lin Fan, looking like a happy winner, demanding an apology. The defeated guy asks the girl to spare him. There is bewilderment and fear on his face. Lin Fan lies on his back, looks at the blue clear sky above him. He feels calm and serene. The main character returns to reality and wonders why he should apologize to Mei. The girl understands that the guy will not apologize to her and decides to destroy him. Horror seizes the guy. Lin Fan does not want to die. He screams and begs for mercy. The main character sits prostrate in front of Mei. His eyes are closed, and he does not understand why this happened. Lin Fan curses yesterday, getting to know the system that got him into trouble. The protagonist's uncle thinks about how he will be able to look into Lin Fan's eyes after his death. The old man considers what happened to be a natural outcome. The guy suddenly remembers the massage therapist's skill that he was the first to receive from the system. Suddenly, Lin Fan realized that he could use this wonderful skill in battle now. The girl demands changes from the guy. She is perplexed how an adult can lie in front of her and cry. Lin Fan suddenly grabs Mei's leg and begins to massage her using his secret skills. The girl is perplexed. She does not understand what is happening. The guy massages her leg. The main character finds a secret Tijan massage point on the girl's leg and begins to intensively massage it. Only Lin Fan and the system know that the Tijan secret point can put a person into a deep sleep. The mysterious old man watches what is happening with genuine amazement. The protagonist's uncle does not understand what is happening. Surprise and misunderstanding are displayed on his face. The girl looks angrily at the guy, screams loudly at him. She does not understand what is happening. 
Suddenly, May is overcome by a strong wave of weakness. Her eyes close against her will. The girl has no ability to control what happens to her. She lacks the strength to resist. May, in a rage, calls the guy a scoundrel, demands to stop what he is doing to her to let her go. The main character continues to massage the girl's leg and moves to Sanji's point to relax the body. May is very good. She feels that her life has reached the peak of pleasure and joy. The girl loses consciousness, falls to the ground exhausted. A guy sits next to her, satisfied with his skill. Lin Fan is struggling to get to his feet. His shaking legs prevent him from doing it quickly. He has almost no strength. The main character, satisfied, leaves, sarcastically asks to thank the girl for his work. The system points are credited to his account. The old man is shocked that the guy masters the long-lost art of Wulin acupuncture. Lin Fan approaches Xiao and his ex-girlfriend. They ask him for forgiveness for their arrogant antics, calling him a great hero. Suddenly, Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend changes her mind. She questions his victory since he used the system's secret techniques. The main character considers himself a great master. He does not agree with the girl's opinion. With bewilderment and delight, young people look at Lin Fan, sitting on the ground near the car. Lin Fan tells the girl that she always has the right to choose, but his gaze is focused only on the future. Lin Fan turns around and leaves. The guy and the girl are left in despair and disappointment. Zhao bows to the new master. Mei, defeated, lies on the ground. She has no opportunity for physical action. She lies and simply watches what is happening. The thoughts in the girl's head are chaotic. She is in a state of shock and does not understand what happened to her. The protagonist's uncle stands at the window, admiring his victory in today's unequal battle. The man imagines the guy as a mighty warrior walking towards the unknown. Lin Fan's movement is courageous. He holds a weapon in his hands. Uncle Lin Fan is delighted with how his nephew has matured and matured. A man enters the restaurant kitchen. Undisguised surprise appears on his face. The protagonist's uncle glances around the kitchen, amazed at the amount of noodles Lin Fan made. Visitors ask for a few more servings, but the man agrees, since the entire kitchen is stocked with noodles. Uncle Lin Fan serves fragrant steaming noodles to visitors. He believes that today will bring good profit. The man cautiously sniffs the noodles on the table. He has strange doubts about the food. The visitors greedily gobble up the noodles offered by Lin Fan's uncle. They can't stop. They eat more and more of it. Loud screams are heard from the dining room. A man holding a box of vegetables in his hand, he turns around in amazement. With quick steps, Uncle Lin Fan moves towards the dining hall. Something mysterious and terrible is happening to the restaurant's visitors. The man is shocked by what is happening. What the man saw puts him in a state of wild horror. He is paralyzed with fear. Shenzhou University is beautiful in the morning rays of the rising sun. Beautiful birds soar above it. The main character, looking bored, sits at the first desk with his classmate. The guy's friend is sleeping at the desk. Lin Fan is excitedly thinking about the state of his account in the system. He is tensely counting the number of points he has earned. The number of points on the account in the system has increased, but the guy does not understand how this happened. A mysterious old man is near the university building talking on the phone. He reports that he has found a suitable person. The mysterious old man's interlocutor is surprised by the outcome of Lin Fan's fight with his opponents. The old man explains to his unfamiliar interlocutor the strange methods that the guy used in battle. The main character examines the balance in the system and thinks about how to spend the points he earns. Lin Fan notices a pattern that after purchasing a product in the system, its value increases by zero. Soon the guy finds a product he is interested in, which is called Spring Mushrooms. Lin Fan doesn't know what opportunities the new product will give him. After purchase, its value will increase tenfold. The guy remembers his last fight with Mei. He decides to find and acquire a skill that will help in new possible battles. The main character asks the system about the opportunity to improve the talents he has. The system agrees with him, but puts forward the necessary requirements to implement this. An angry emoticon appears on the system's virtual monitor. The system blabbed about spring mushrooms. The system considers itself the most powerful in the entire universe, but is upset because it cannot keep its mouth shut. The system blames the main character for its fatal mistake, and an angry emoticon appears on the monitor screen. The main character is hit by a powerful discharge of current. In front of him is a virtual screen of the system with an evil, smiley face. Everyone around him is perplexed by what is happening. 
The guy does not understand the reason for the aggression. He tells the system that it itself told about spring mushrooms. The teacher standing behind the board in the classroom pays attention to Lin Fan. He gesticulates vigorously and addresses him by name. In an angry manner, the teacher asks the guy to leave the classroom if he is not interested in the class. Those around him discuss what is happening with the main character in a vivid manner. They conclude that the reason for the protagonist's inappropriate behavior is that his girlfriend left him. The person sitting next to him pays attention to Lin Fan, puts his hand on his shoulder in a friendly manner and speaks sympathetic words. Suddenly a girl appears at the threshold of the classroom and greets the teacher in a casual manner. At the entrance to the classroom, May stands with an expression of arrogance on her face. She looks at the teacher and asks the teacher to attend his classes. Lin Fan notices May standing at the entrance next to the teacher. Outright joy appears on his face. The girl gracefully walks into the classroom. The teacher bows and says that it is a great honor for him to communicate with a representative of a noble family. The girl slowly walks through the audience. Those present recognize her and animatedly discuss her. The guys are fascinated by the look of the girl, look at May as she passes by, and compliment her on her appearance. An unfamiliar guy is aware of the fact that he has no chance of dating a girl. The protagonist's deskmate expresses his opinion regarding May's studies in the group. The guy fantasizes about May falling in love with him. He is overwhelmed with emotions. The girl approaches the main character, stabs the neighbor sitting next to him. She wants to take his place. The surrounding students suspected a connection between May and the main character in this action. The girl slowly approaches Lin Fan, addresses him casually, and waits for an answer from him. The guys sitting at the next desk are outraged. They can't remember May talking to guys like Lin Fan. The teacher nervously watches what is happening. Perspiration appears on his forehead, surprise in his eyes. The main character reflects on the need to remain calm in this situation. He is convinced that the visit of the girl May is revenge. The girl turns to the teacher, expressing misunderstanding about the pause in classes. An oppressive silence reigns in the classroom, creating a tense atmosphere. Students behind the main character's back discuss the current situation and ask questions about the relationship between the main character and May. Lin Fan turns to the girl, showing interest in the reason for her presence in the class, curiosity visible in his gaze. The girl talks about her desire to attend this medical department since she has the opportunity to choose additional subjects. The main character believes that May is blatantly deceiving him, looks at her with a suspicious look, expecting an explanation from her. The faculty of Wushu recruits only the elite. Graduates will have huge salaries and high status. Everyone around them treats them with respect. Lin Fan recognizes the girl's right to attend any faculty and asks about the reasons for her choice of the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. The guy suggests forgetting all past grievances, not remembering the incident that happened in the morning, and moving on as if nothing had happened. The girl reacts to the guy's words, takes his hand, and prepares to tell Lin Fan something important. The guy does not understand what the girl is trying to achieve. Her actions remain incomprehensible and unclear to him. The main character loses his temper, filled with anger and irritation. He wishes that May would immediately stop pestering him. The girl expresses a desire to repeat the massage session and learn the art of acupuncture with the help of the main character. The guy experiences completely new feelings. Previously unknown to him, he is shaking all over. His condition is losing stability. The system's virtual screen closely watches the main character, and a wary emoticon appears on the screen. Lin Fan informs the girl that he cannot teach her, since this system is a family secret passed down from generation to generation. A girl with strong persistence is trying to get the guy's consent to learn the secret art of acupuncture. The guy on the next desk gets jealous and tries to attack Lin Fan, which results in the main character getting extra points in the system. Lin Fan is holding on with all his strength. It seems to him that he is at the limit of his capabilities and can't stand it anymore. Another powerful electric shock strikes the main character, and the girl screams in amazement as she watches what is happening to the guy. The girl comes to the conclusion that the guy is struck by a powerful electric discharge. She thinks that perhaps there was a spark in their relationship. A loud sound is heard, and suddenly the doors of the classroom are opened by the kick of a stranger. A large, athletic-looking man appears on the threshold, arms crossed over his chest, wondering who offended his student. The girl pays attention to him, 
She recognizes the person who entered the class. This is her teacher, William. The teacher is going to end the lecture prematurely and leave the classroom. He refers to urgent work and lack of time. A small dog in a box standing on a desk barks loudly at William as he enters the classroom. William delivers a powerful blow. He is infuriated by the dog's reaction. He wants it to shut up. The main character looks at what is happening. He concentrates extremely, preparing to jump. The guy gets up from his desk, quickly runs up and pushes off the floor. The main character flies across the entire class, hoping to catch the defenseless animal in time. Lin Fan flies through all the students and the entire class, catching the little puppy. The students present in the class are surprised at how quickly the main character reacts. Exclamations of surprise are heard. William approaches the main character holding a small dog in his hands. He expresses his angry and aggressive mood. The guy manages to block and parry William's blow. He flies several meters towards the wall. Unambiguously examining the main character, William expresses his surprise and admiration for his combat capabilities. The guy doesn't understand why harm an innocent animal. He wonders about the reasons for William's visit. The main character, William and Xiao, are standing opposite each other in the classroom. A serious conversation is brewing. Xiao tells William about how the main character treated his ex-girlfriend badly and then attacked him and beat up four other students near the store. William, an academy teacher and taekwondo master, informs Lin Fan that he has been expelled. The girl is surprised and upset by the taekwondo master's decision to expel the guy, considering it unfair. Those around him learn details about the adventures of the main character, actively discuss what happened to him and admire the master's decision. Lin Fan explains to Xiao his position regarding his innocence in the incident, believing that he used self-defense and was not the instigator of the incident. Xiao claims that he has evidence to the contrary. The main character is perplexed by his answer. Xiao takes out his phone and provides evidence in the form of a video of a guy attacking him on the street. The video footage shows Lin Fan effectively dealing with all the opponents attacking him. Xiao shows his phone to the main character, confident that the recording is irrefutable evidence of guilt. As he leaves, Xiao pointedly touches Lin Fan with his shoulder and says that he knows what kind of relationship the guy has with his uncle. Xiao brings to Lin Fan's attention that the land where his uncle's store is located belongs to his family, and his uncle owes them a debt. Finally, Xiao gloatingly talks about the possibility of demolishing the store. Lin Fan is very upset by this news. The guy tells Lin Fan that he is not too cruel and easygoing, gives him a business card, and invites the main character to meet after class. Lin Fan stands with a business card in his hand. Xiao leaves, finally saying that he will be waiting for him. After classes, Lin Fan heads to the block indicated on the business card. Evening comes, the streets are flooded with the light of neon lights and shop windows. From the underground entrance, you can hear enthusiastic screams and calls to move faster and win. In a large, brightly lit ring, a duel between two fighters takes place. Those present shout loudly and gesticulate. A fighter in a green mask defeats his opponent to the applause of the audience. The latter has no chance. The opponent of the fighter in the green mask is defeated. He is forced to give up and stop the fight. The system, using a virtual screen, tells Lin Fan that the student has no chance of winning here. Two experienced and serious opponents are fighting in this secret club. In the corner, a guy sees Xiao sitting at a table surrounded by beautiful girls. Xiao invites him to defeat the leader of the competition, then he will forgive him for all his offenses. Lin Fan hesitantly agrees with his proposal, the system is indignant, saying that he has no chance, and a menacing and irritated emoticon appears on the system monitor. Xiao appreciates the guy's agreement to take part in the competition. He shouts to the referee that there is another contender for victory. Lin Fan stands in the ring and shakes hands before the fight with the leader of the competition in a green mask. The opponent looks at him threateningly. The girl is perplexed by the fact that Xiao is giving Lin Fan a chance admires how he kicked him out of the university and threatened to close his uncle's store. Xiao explains that this is not forgiving Lin Fan. He explains that this is a trap in which Lin Fan will be defeated. He will have no chance of salvation. The professional green-masked fighter is a Xiao man. Lin Fan has no chance of standing up to him in a duel. Xiao is dissatisfied with Lin Fan's expulsion from the university and causing problems with his uncle's store. He wants to physically humiliate and destroy him. The girl admires Yao's treachery, meanness, and cunning villainous plans. 
A gong sounds in the ring. The fight begins. The opponent in a green mask runs in the direction of Lin Fan. The opponent of the green mask attacks the guy. Lin Fan cannot resist him. He flies to the opposite corner of the ring. The guy sits in the corner of the ring, in pain. The system tells him that it warned him that there is no chance of winning. The spectators present mock Lin Fan. The system reports that these are illegal training fights and not university competitions. Lin Fan does not listen to the system's instructions. He intends to continue the fight and win. The guy remembers how his uncle raised him. He doesn't want his store to be closed. Lin Fan's mind brings back pleasant memories of the past time when his uncle raised him. The guy is motivated by these thoughts and believes that he will defeat the enemy if he uses his secret massage skill in time. An opponent in a green mask distracts Lin Fan from his thoughts by shouting at him. The opponent standing opposite leans towards Lin Fan and says that he knows about his secret acupuncture technique abilities. The guy realizes that he has no chance. He thinks that he has lost. The enemy in the green mask attacks, hoping to prevent the guy from using the secret technique. Lin Fan repels numerous enemy attacks. This is difficult for him. He does not have enough combat skills. Xiao wishes the green masked fighter to win quickly. He wants to see Lin Fan lose as soon as possible. The fighter in the green mask appreciates the fighting skill of his opponent and believes that there will be no quick victory. Lin Fan hopes that he will soon have the chance to use his secret acupuncture techniques on his opponent. The green masked fighter is aware of the real threat posed by Lin Fan, and he warily watches his movements around the ring. The guy hopes that now there will be a chance to use the secret technique bestowed by the system. His expectations come true. Lin Fan delivers a series of successful blows to his green masked opponent. The fighter in the green mask misses Lin Fan's blows, loses his balance, and his attack ends in failure. The spectators are surprised by the changed situation in the ring. Lin Fan's opponent in the green mask can barely stand on his feet. The fighter in the green mask stands motionless, he is shaking violently. He cannot move and continue the fight. A grimace of pain appears on his face as he wonders why his stomach hurts so much. The green-masked fighter realizes that Lin Fan was able to use his secret acupuncture technique. He cannot move. Lin Fan walks up to his green-masked opponent and gives him a proper slap. Lin Fan's opponent is very indignant at the slap he received. He considers the guy very impudent. Concentrating all his last strength, Lin Fan's opponent rushes into a furious attack, a rumble and roar echoing across the ring. Lin Fan is happy with the current situation. His opponent is moving very slowly. The system awards a large number of points. The fighter in the green mask has no strength left at all. He believes that he cannot continue to fight. People flee the Golden City in horror as buildings collapse behind them. They only had to run a short distance to the safety gate. A man and a woman work together to open the blocked golden gate. The fighter in the green mask is trying to hold on with all his strength. Unbearable pain grips his entire body. The audience is shocked. No one expected to see the fighter in the green mask in such a state. The golden city is being destroyed, and the man in the green mask does not understand why the saving door does not open. Lin Fan's opponent has no chance of winning this fight. He is trying to regain control of his body to no avail. Whistling and shouts are heard calling for the fight to continue. The audience is dissatisfied with the inaction of the fighter in the green mask. Xiao wants to see the fight continue, and Lin Fan lose as quickly as possible. He is dissatisfied with the course of the fight. The fighter in the green mask begins to concentrate key energy. The spectators present see this skill of the fighter for the first time. The fans are chanting loudly, confident in the quick victory of the fighter in the green mask, and stomping can be heard from the fan benches. The green masked fighter has concentrated enough Kai energy to continue the battle. He is ready to attack. Lin Fan is outraged by the indecisiveness of the opponent in the green mask, gives him another powerful slap in the face. The system continues to award points to Lin Fan. The spectators are very upset. They are indignant because of this attitude towards their idol. They can hear screams and calls to deal with Lin Fan. The second slap unbalances the green mask fighter, who is upset that he has no way to resist this humiliation. Boundless anger and rage fill him. He is unable to move or resist Lin Fan's actions. Lin Fan strikes his green mask opponent without encountering any resistance. The system awards more and more points. Xiao jumps up from his chair in rage. He shouts that he is not paying money so that the fighter in the green mask can be a punching bag. 
Another slap in the face tears off his green mask from Lin Fan's opponent. Lin Fan realizes that his expulsion was Xiao's insidious plan. Those present learn that the fighter in the green mask is a teacher from the university. Xiao is worried that his evil plan has been exposed, and now everyone knows that the fighter in the green mask is a university teacher, Mr. William, whom he sponsors. Viewers are actively discussing the new news. Many are surprised by the participation of teacher William in illegal fights for money. Martial arts teacher William is furious and fears dismissal and other negative consequences after revealing the secret. Professor William still cannot move. He stands motionless in the ring in pain, shaking violently. The efforts of the man and woman finally bear fruit. Now the gate gives way. They continue to try to open it. The university's martial arts teacher, Mr. William, makes a strange noise. Insults and wild laughter are heard from the fans' benches. Many guess what happened. Someone present talks about how first-class martial artists are able to push their bodies beyond the limits of what is possible. If all energy centers are opened, the body is permeated by universal Kai energy. The referee says that the body of the teacher, Mr. William, is being transformed. The muscles are enlarged and filled with colossal Kai power. Mr. William is transforming into an ideal fighting machine. The stands of fans are roaring. Xiao's mood has changed. He is filled with joy, calling to deal with Lin Fan quickly. Mr. William walks towards Lin Fan with a confident step. The fans shout, calling to tear apart the opponent. The noise and screams of the fans are perceived negatively by Mr. William. It bothers him very much. Lin Fan is standing in the ring. He is in a great mood. He is humming a simple song. Mr. William is angry. The Golden City is collapsing. People in green masks are fleeing headlong, fear and despondency on their faces. The rescue gate is very close. They have very little time left to reach it. Mr. William does not have the strength to endure poverty at all. He feels very bad. Teacher William puts one hand behind his back, which means that he is going to defeat Lin Fan with just one hand. The guy approaches Mr. William and whispers something quietly in his ear. Lin Fan informs William that when shaking hands at the beginning of the fight, he pressed a secret acupuncture point on his hand. Lin Fan's opponent is shaking all over. He realizes that he has no strength to endure at all. Professor William screams in rage, demanding that the guy stop singing his stupid song immediately. May runs as fast as she can down the street. She knows that her brother dragged Lin Fan into illegal fights. The girl runs inside the room, quickly approaches the ring. She realizes that she made it on time. Running up, the girl jumps into the ring, shouting to Professor William not to dare touch her man. Lin Fan is completely perplexed by the current situation. He could not even think about May's reaction. The guy tries to stop May, telling her that there is no need to interfere, since he will win the fight very soon. They collide in the ring and have an unusually romantic meeting. Spectators and judges are perplexed by what is happening in the ring. They scream loudly in a fit of indignation. Lin Fan explains to May that this is an accident, apologizes sincerely. The system gives the guy a large number of points. The girl is very angry with Lin Fan. He annoys her, and she does not understand the motivation for his actions. The guy shakes May hard by the shoulders. He wants her to come to her senses as soon as possible. The system adds even more points to Lin Fan. Xiao becomes enraged and demands that Lin Fan take his hands off his sister immediately, the bucket of popcorn shaking in his hands. The noise in the hall is getting louder and Teacher William can no longer stand it. Mr. William again pays attention to his condition. The pain in his stomach becomes unbearable. People in the Golden City demand the gates be opened immediately. A giant human hand has blocked their exit. In surprise, they fall silent and turn around. Someone is approaching them very quickly. A man in a red cloak appears in the sky with a hammer in his hand. He demands to step aside in order to unlock the gate. Those present welcome the unexpectedly appeared hero. They have high hopes for him. Salvation is already close. Mr. William rushes towards Lin Fan standing in the ring. He is depressed. An unknown hero hits the gate with a hammer in the hope of unlocking it and saving people in the Golden City. The teacher, Mr. William, finds himself in a very sensitive situation. He does not care about the opinions of others. The judge looks at Teacher William in surprise. He cannot understand what is happening to him. The audience stops chanting and looks at Teacher William in surprise. Lin Fan stands motionless. He is in a completely serene mood. The system gives him new points. The residents of the Golden City are saved, and in joy and fun they jump inside a large glass of popcorn. 
On the table, there is a large, beautiful cake with burning candles in it. The girl is discussing on the phone the latest news about illegal fights and Xiao's involvement in them. The girl lights the candles on the cake. She discusses Lin Fan and his participation in today's competition. The girl doesn't know who owns the map of the dragon's territory. She begins to laugh when she hears the information from her interlocutor. The girl approaches the table where the man is sitting and says that the Tianhong group will take care of everything. The girl begins to have powerful flashbacks that take her into past memories. In the mysterious house, they are discussing the location of the dragon territory map, and the name Lin Fan is heard in the conversation. Strangers in a mysterious house discuss further plans. They say that number three and number four have been sent to complete the task. The guy holds a mug of tea in his hand and tells others that numbers three and four are very bloodthirsty. Lin Fan walks down the street and comes to the conclusion that the more emotions the viewers have, the more points the system gives him. The emotional outburst of the audience is over, but the system continues to award points to the guy. Lin Fan is very pleased with what is happening. Looking at his balance, Lin Fan makes sure that he has enough funds to purchase the spring mushroom. A spring mushroom appears and he offers to eat it quickly. The guy holds the purchased spring mushroom in his hand. He believes that the cost of 6,666 points for such a purchase is very high. The system offers Lin Fan to eat a mushroom to improve his skills to the maximum, but the guy is not ready and believes that he needs to mentally prepare for this. Lin Fan approaches his uncle's store. Construction work is underway on the street. Passers-by are looking at what is happening with interest. Sing Long, a fourth-level martial artist of the Tianhong faction. Sing Long is severely bitten on the hand by a girl. He goes into a rage and screams loudly. An evil grimace distorts his face. He is in great pain. He clenches his teeth. The offender of Mr. Sing Long was punished with a powerful throw and thrown ten meters away. Suddenly, Lin Fan appears, preventing the girl from falling and trying to catch her. The guy manages to deftly catch the girl. He holds her in his arms and tries to calm her down. The guy asks the girl if she's okay. The girl calls Lin Fan her brother. She is very scared and upset about what happened. The girl's name is Lee. She returned from school and noticed that her father was not at home. Lee notices that there are two strangers in the room, a man and a woman. Sing Long turns to Lin Fan with questions. He is interested in knowing whether the guy really became the winner in illegal fights. Lin Fan is outraged that his agreement with Xiao has been violated, according to which if he wins the duel his uncle's store will be untouched. Sing Long tells him that he has no written proof of this agreement, so he is not going to stop the dismantling of the store. The guy rushes at the offenders. His sister asks him not to do this rash act. Master Sing Long has a high level of martial arts. He easily stops the guy's attack. Lin Fan manages to press the secret acupuncture point located on Master Sing Long's chest. Master Sing Long is confident in his abilities and knows that the secret acupuncture technique has no effect on him. Master Sing Long has reinforced concrete muscles. Even a knife cannot penetrate him. He inflicts a series of blows on the guy. The fight continues. Lin Fan flies off with a roar and falls to the ground, struck down. Master Sing Long had a higher opinion of the guy's fighting abilities and wondered how Lin Fan could win the difficult competition. The system warns the guy not to start a fight, since their strengths are not equal. The sister tries to protect Lin Fan. Master Sing Long watches her attempts in bewilderment. Her efforts lead to nothing, and she flies ten meters away and lands on the ground with a crash. Sister Lin Fan is aware of the fact that they have no chance against Master Sing Long. Lin Fan is not ready to give up and stop the fight. He decides to gather his strength and continue the fight. A stranger appears. She is delighted with the fighting spirit of Lin Fan and his sister. The girl believes that only losers who cannot find a decent job take the path of a fighter. Lin Fan is very angry at the girl's statement. He does not agree that the path of a fighter is taken by weaklings and losers. The girl sits on the prostrate Lin Fan, threatens him with a knife, and puts her stocking in his mouth. Raising a knife over the guy, the girl says that the guy has one last moment left to live. The guy is horrified by what is happening. He realizes that a deadly blade is about to plunge into his head. His face is covered with perspiration. The girl's knife approaches Lin Fan's head. The guy asks the system to turn on the healing mode to maximum power. The girl deals a powerful blow. The guy has no chance to survive. Lin Fan lies prostrate on the ground, a deadly blade pierced into his head. 
Master Singlong asks the girl what the guy screamed before his death. She replies that something about super healing was heard in the scream. The girl says that even before his death, Lin Fan spoke some kind of vulgarity. It is slowly removed. The system turns on the guy's healing mode. A spring mushroom appears. He says that he heard the call of the owner, asks him to eat him. The guy greedily eats a spring mushroom, he believes, and hopes in its magical abilities. The girl pays attention to what is happening. She turns around in bewilderment. She is interested in finding out what is happening. With a sharp movement, Lin Fan jumps to his feet. The girl is shocked by what is happening. She thinks that the guy is not human. The system informs Lin Fan that his boxing skill has increased to the fifth level, and this is enough to defeat his opponents. A man rides a bicycle and talks on the phone. The wind blows his raincoat. He says that he received the necessary information very late. The man's interlocutor says that numbers three and four most likely completed their task. The man asks when this was done and how. Having received the required level of power and healing from the system, Lin Fan continues the fight. He attacks his opponent fiercely. The guy deals a crushing blow to the Singlong master, throwing the enemy aside. The girl, paralyzed with fear, sits on the asphalt. She watches Lin Fan approaching her. The girl is outraged by what is happening. She tells Lin Fan that Master Singlong is number four, and she is number three. The guy apologizes to the girl for breaking her arm. Number three tries to ask Lin Fan if he is afraid of her. Lin Fan hits the girl on the second hand, invites her to break the second hand. The system awards more points to the guy for this. The guy stands in front of the defeated girl and ponders whether he should be worried about the secret organization that has declared a hunt for him. A stranger appears and he tells the guy that a map of the dragon's territory can give its owner superpowers. The stranger demands to give him a map of the dragon's territory, which his father gave to the guy. Lin Fan wonders who this impudent stranger is asking him questions. The stranger continues to obsessively ask the guy about the location of the map of the dragon's territory. Lin Fan points to the defeated opponents. He believes that the stranger is an accomplice of his enemies. The guy wants to punish everyone who was involved in the attack on his uncle's store. The stranger concludes that Lin Fan is misleading him because he knows where the map of the dragon's territory is. The guy believes that all those responsible for causing problems to his uncle should be severely punished. The interlocutor tells the girl on the phone later that number three and number four were defeated in the battle with Lin Fan. The girl considers number three and four weaklings and offers her services to solve the problem. The leader of the secret organization is sitting in the dark near the window. He decided not to resort to the girl's services and will send number two to deal with Lin Fan. The girl does not feel any concern about this decision. She believes that the secret organization is making the right decision. The girl remembers that last time she supported the organization and helped solve its problems. The girl takes a step forward and falls down. Below, the police are heard demanding that they surrender and release the hostages. The stranger's name is Master Tian. He is number two in the secret organization. The master snaps his fingers. A combat blade appears in the air. The system warns the guy that the presence of Qi energy has been detected and explains that number two is a cultivator. The guy doesn't know who cultivators are. The system explains the relationship between Qi energy and martial arts. Master Tian has telekinesis using Qi energy to direct the flying blade towards Lin Fan. The guy is ready to take on a deadly challenge. He coped with number three and number four. He expects number two to suffer the same fate. The blade flies 10 centimeters from Lin Fan and crashes into the wall of the building standing behind him. Due to the powerful blow, cracks appear in the wall. The guy is amazed by the skill of number two. Number two has no desire to destroy the guy. He wants to find out where the map of the dragon's territory is. Lin Fan intends to answer number two decisively. He takes off the shirt that will hinder him in the battle. The guy considers number two's skill useless in a real battle. His telekinesis skill did not impress Lin Fan. A deadly battle ensues between Lin Fan and Master Tian, with a map of the dragon's territory at stake. Lin Fan hits number two. His fist misses the target. Master Tian blocks the attack with his secret skills. Master Tian paralyzes his opponent. The guy is amazed by the unknown technique. He cannot move. Lin Fan concentrates all his strength, but cannot even lift a finger. Master Tian revels in his abilities as a cultivator. He considers the outcome of the fight to be a foregone conclusion. Number two releases a large number of knives leaving energy lines that should trap Lin Fan. 
Energy lines envelop the guy, they paralyze him and prevent him from moving. Lin Fan has fallen into trap number two. He cannot get out of it. The energy lines hinder his movements. The special forces are preparing to storm the premises. The soldiers know that the chief of police is being held hostage in the premises. Police special forces receive the command to begin the assault. The soldiers run forward, hiding behind shields. A girl falls on them from above, a huge blade in her hand. She hopes to use the factor of surprise and fear. The girl lands in the center of the special forces group. The fighters scatter to the sides and the terrible blade does its job. The girl wants to see Lin Fan give up and break under the pressure of attacks number two. Master Tian uses key energy to lift Lin Fan into the air in front of him. Lin Fan rises higher and higher above the ground, his body bound by energy lines. Master Tian openly mocks the guy by asking him to pose in this position. Lin Fan is angry because of his powerlessness and demands that number two immediately stop bullying him. Number two offers to stop everything if the guy gives him back the map of the dragon's territory. Lin Fan doesn't know about the existence of the dragon territory map. His father died a long time ago and didn't tell him anything about this map. Master Tian continues to think that the guy is deceiving him and does not want to tell him where he hid the card. Number two tells Lin Fan that he is the best information acquisition specialist in the organization. He warns Lin Fan, tells him that his methods are scary and cruel, and invites him to give him the Dragon Territory map in an amicable way. The guy is struggling to break the energy lines holding him in the air and shackling his body. Master Tian is surprised and appreciates the guy's ability to resist. Lin Fan continues to try to break the lines. Lin Fan asks the system if there are options to counter number two and his energy lines. Master Tian tries his best to strengthen his trap and prevent the guy from escaping from it. A stranger lands on the ground with a crash. He frees the guy from the trap. Number two is very surprised by what is happening. Master Tian reflects the poisonous blow. He met a worthy opponent. The stranger is trying to find out from Master Tian what is happening here. His eyes glow with streams of energy. The stranger's name is Poison. He advises number two to leave the guy alone. Otherwise, he will be forced to use his poisonous blows. Master Tian is trying to find out why Poison wants to help the guy so much. Master Tian decides to challenge Mr. Poison. He concentrates the key energy in his hands. A mysterious old man appears from around the corner of the building and offers to stop the battle. Number two recognizes the mysterious old man as Elder Zhao and is surprised by his presence here. Elder Zhao says that he has not met number two for a very long time. Elder Zhao demands that Master Tian show respect to the guy. He likes Lin Fan. The system turns on the disguise mode. Lin Fan turns into a young, beautiful girl. Elder Zhao is fascinated by her beauty. Elder Zhao is indignant that the beautiful girl had to lie on the cold ground. Master Poison tries to warn Elder Zhao. Master Tian dissuades him and offers to see what happens next. The guy's disguise, which the system provided, turns off. Elder Zhao realizes that he was deceived. He is at a loss. Elder Zhao is uneasy. He has a terrible physiological reaction to what is happening. Elder Zhao is calmed down by Master Poison, and the system awards Lin Fan points for his trick. Master Tian believes that the guy did not deceive him, and he really does not have a map of the dragon's territory. Master Tian questions Lin Fan about whether his father really left him nothing as an inheritance. There are five cards in total, dragon, sand, water, acupuncture, and feng shui. Master Tian wants Lin Fan to get a map of the dragon territory for him by any means. With these words, he gets on his bike and leaves. Energy lines envelop bodies number three and number four. Master Tian leaves on a bicycle. With the help of energy lines, he drags fighters number three and number four through the air. He gives Lin Fan ten days to find the map. Lin Fan, using his superpowers, tries to stop Master Tian, but he fails. Lin Fan thinks that perhaps his father disappeared because of the Dragon Territory map. Lin Fan remembers being very young, standing in his room and looking at his father's awards hanging on the wall. On the wall is an old newspaper with a photo of his missing father. Lin Fan's father was and remains a great hero. The feeling overwhelms him from the memories. In honor of one of the achievements of Lin Fan's father, the villagers prepared a ceremonial meeting and waited for his return at the entrance to the village since the morning. The last time Lin Fan saw his father was when he was in third grade. Lin Fan recalls that in the past he could not decide how to address his father. He thinks he'll call him daddy instead of daddy because it sounds more mature. Young Lin Fan's thoughts are interrupted by a group of people who ask how long he has been standing by the tree. 
Lin Fan thinks that his father will return soon, and this thought fills him with joy. Today, Lin Fan learned something new about his father and got into serious trouble. Lin Fan is opposite Elder Zhao in his office. His younger sister is next to him on the sofa. The man approaches the elder and says something to him. Master Poison invites Elder Zhao to play a game of legends, and a bored Lin Fan sits next to them. Lin Fan does not understand anything about what is happening to him. He demands those present to explain to him who they are and what is happening. Elder Zhao reveals that he is the leader of the Zhao group, and Lin Fan is in serious trouble. Lin Fan doesn't understand how he could get into such a serious mess. Elder Zhao offers to help Lin Fan, but only if he fulfills one mandatory condition. Elder Zhao's condition is that Lin Fan must become his granddaughter's boyfriend and marry her after a year. Sister congratulates Lin Fan on the proposal received from Elder Zhao. Her statement infuriates him. Lin Fan doesn't understand what the catch is. He believes that no one in their right mind would refuse Elder Zhao's offer. Lin Fan thinks that the catch is that the granddaughter is as beautiful as a Picasso painting. Elder Zhao tells the guy that his granddaughter is the first beauty at the university. Additionally, Elder Zhao believes that the reasons he made his choice were Lin Fan's personality characteristics and their common enemy. Elder Zhao sits down at the computer and wants to tell the main reason for his proposal. He begins to remember the story of his distant youth when he was 18 years old. Lin Fan refuses to listen to long, boring stories. He wants a summary of the situation. Elder Zhao sits thoughtfully in front of the computer monitor. Master Poison stands gloomy and silent next to him. Elder Zhao asks Master Poison to take Lin Fan to the underground secret room and tell him the whole truth. Through incredible mental stress, Master Poison agrees to carry out the instructions of Elder Zhao. The high wall is filled with tens of thousands of names. It stretches to the very sky. Elder Zhao is going to tell Lin Fan the tragic story that this wall is connected with. Lin Fan is scared. He suspects that Elder Zhao's granddaughter is cursed, and the names of those who wanted her hand and died are written on the wall. Elder Zhao tells Lin Fan that the list contains the names of all the women he slept with. Elder Zhao says that because of his voluptuous past, all of his granddaughter's suitors turned out to be his descendants. Master Poison was also courting Elder Zhao's granddaughter, and later he received some unpleasant news. Master Poison found his mother's name on a huge wall. Elder Zhao cries he takes all the blame on himself. He wants his granddaughter to know happiness. Lin Fan learns that the elder made inquiries. He is not his grandson. Tired from a hard day, Lin Fan is about to leave to rest. Elder Zhao orders him to stop. Elder Zhao tells Lin Fan that his family has a map of the dragon's territory and invites him to look at it. Master Tian gave Lin Fan ten days to find and hand over the dragon territory map. Elder Zhao looks at the guy, knowing about the offer of ten days. Elder Zhao tells Lin Fan that if he does not give up the card in ten days, Master Tian will destroy him. Lin Fan refuses the deal with Elder Zhao, leaves and hears an offer to solve the financial problems with his uncle's store. Lin Fan turns to Elder Zhao and asks where his granddaughter is now. Master Poison wants to make sure that Lin Fan has the ability to protect Elder Zhao's granddaughter. Master Poison and Lin Fan are discussing which of them is older and how old they are. Master Poison reveals that his body is being poisoned by his poisonous palm, which is a side effect of his superpower. He invites Lin Fan to fight, says that he will not use the poison hand. If Lin Fan wins, he will receive a blessing. Elder Zhao tells Master Poison that even with one hand he is a great master of category E. A short fight ensues in which Mr. Poison completely loses to Lin Fan. Lin Fan, pleased with himself, leaves, offers to go see his granddaughter. The system gives him new points. Elder Zhao says that his granddaughter is currently on a business trip and will arrive only tomorrow morning. The girl tells Elder Zhao that she doesn't know where her father is, who strokes her head and calms her down. The girl goes into the room, says Lin Fan, with a hurtful and insulting remark which infuriates Lin Fan. Lin Fan goes into his room, can barely stand on his feet. Today he had a damn difficult and eventful day. Entering his room, Lin Fan suddenly notices the presence of a pretty maid. A tall skyscraper is illuminated by bright moonlight. Zhao receives a powerful slap from his father, flies into the corner of the room and hears a voice saying that he is stupid. The man tells Zhao that he always causes only problems, and now, because of his stupidity, underground battles have been uncovered. Sister Xiao locked herself in her room. She hears everything, but does not interfere with what is happening. Master Tian urges Xiao's father to calm down and tells him that things are not so bad. 
The guy says that he has very good news from the spies in the Zhao group. The father is indignant, scolds Yao, and advises him to follow the example of his brother. Brother Xiao shows off a flash drive containing information worth billions. The maid makes the bed and an interesting and fascinating picture appears before Lin Fan. The system reprimands Lin Fan for his dirty thoughts. He makes the excuse that he just wanted to earn points. The girl smiles and wonders where exactly Lin Fan was looking while she was doing her work. She tells Lin Fan that she is ready to fully satisfy his wishes, if any. Lin Fan tells her that he doesn't have any wishes at the moment. The guy calls the girl by name. She is at a loss as to how Lin Fan can know her name. The system reminds the guy that there are two ways to improve the skill. The first is spring mushrooms. The second is completing special quests. Lin Fan recalls that it is very difficult to eat spring mushroom, and its cost increases after each purchase. The guy is aware of the fact that he will have to fight Master Tian in ten days. Lin Fan is not going to give away his father's inheritance if he finds it. He decides to upgrade his skills and emerge victorious in the future battle. The system tells the guy that in ten days, he needs to score not only the maximum number of points, but also complete as many quests as possible. The girl offers to tell her a bedtime story and says that few guests remember her name. The system is dissatisfied with Lin Fan's thoughts and behavior. The virtual screen turns red with an angry, smiley face. The system detected a jump in heart rate and concluded that Lin Fan was up to something. Lin Fan closed his eyes. He stood motionless and was completely immersed in self-reflection. The guy informs the system that he is doing this solely for the sake of the quest. Lin Fan thinks he has five minutes. He wants to know the girl's secret and decides to listen to her bedtime story. The system begins to get nervous because of the guy's unauthorized decisions. Lin Fan brings his deepest apologies to the system and asks it not to worry. The guy comes to the conclusion that he is doing this for the sake of a common mission, for the sake of common prosperity. The girl asks Lin Fan what bedtime stories he wants to hear. The guy is surprised by the fact that he is awarded a huge number of points. Lin Fan looks confused. He doesn't know how this quest will end. The girl has no emotional outbursts at all. She is calm. Lin Fan cannot understand the reason for the system awarding points. The guy begins to guess what the reason might be, but he does not have clear confidence in his actions. Lin Fan enters the room in an excited state. He excitedly tries to start a dialogue with the girl. The guy is chaotically trying to tell the girl what kind of bedtime stories he likes. Lin Fan wants the girl to leave and offers to walk her to the door. Surprise and confusion appear on the girl's face. She did not expect such a reaction from the guy. Elder Zhao and Master Poison burst into the room, holding secret maps of the territory in their hands. They happily tell Lin Fan the news that he has successfully passed the test they had planned. Elder Zhao apologizes to the guy for wanting to test him before meeting his granddaughter. The guy is introduced to Wei. She is the personal maid of Elder Zhao's granddaughter. She is treated like a member of the family. Elder Zhao tells the guy that he has passed the test of seduction and is worthy of his granddaughter. Lin Fan had no idea that this was a test. Passing it makes him very happy and calms him down. Elder Zhao and Master Poison stand in the corner of the room and laugh loudly. They look at Lin Fan with kind, sympathetic glances. The guy is amused by the fact that he was able to quickly cope with the situation and react correctly. Elder Zhao tells Lin Fan that his granddaughter has been at home all this time. He offers to go to her. Elder Zhao's granddaughter appears on the threshold. She is a tall and attractive young girl. The guy is struck by her unreal charm and beauty. He stands motionless in a surprised state. The girl looks closely at Lin Fan and conflicting thoughts arise in her head. The girl attacks the guy with accusations that he is the pervert who caused the incident in the women's restroom. The system awards Lin Fan a large number of points. The granddaughter tells Elder Zhao about an incident that happened recently in the women's restroom. She tells her grandfather that Lin Fan suddenly crawled towards her and grabbed her leg. With horror and disgust, the granddaughter recalls the terrible events that happened to her. Lin Fan is in a state of shock. He cannot believe that such coincidences exist. The granddaughter suggests driving the guy away. Elder Zhao wants to listen to Lin Fan's explanation about this incident. The guy doesn't know how to explain his action. He doesn't want to tell those present about the existence of the system. The system informs Lin Fan that he only has 30 seconds left until the end of the quest he has started. Elder Zhao demands an immediate explanation from the guy. Lin Fan's gaze is concentrated on the leaving maid. 
Lin Fan rushes towards the leaving maid. Those present continue the discussion. Master Poison tries to stop the guy. The guy rushes as fast as he can towards the maid. He needs to complete the quest at all costs. The system counts down the last seconds until the completion of the required quest. Lin Fan believes that the main secret of the quest should be hidden in the body of the maid. The maid realizes that she is being followed, turns sharply towards the guy. She does not understand what he needs from her. The girl begins to run away from her pursuer. Lin Fan tries his best to catch up with her and stop her. The guy demands the girl to stop. He wants to detain her at all costs and complete the quest. Lin Fan delivers a crushing palm strike, sending energy waves across the surface where cracks appear. The girl still intends to flee. The energy of a crushing palm strike reaches her. Lin Fan concentrates all his strength. He jumps towards the running girl trying to grab her. Those present look at what is happening with great surprise. There is no overt surprise on their faces. Lin Fan manages to stop the maid. She falls to the ground. The guy holds her legs tightly. The system awards new points for his actions. The girl does not understand where she is at the moment. She does not remember her name. The guy wants to find out the truth. There are 12 seconds left until Lin Fan's important quest is completed. The maid demands to let her go immediately. The guy refuses to comply with her demands. Lin Fan believes that the flash drive with secret information is in the girl's body. The maid fights off the guy and calls him a pervert. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao does not approve of the guy's actions. She does not understand the hidden meaning of what is happening. The granddaughter throws her purse into the air and asks those around her not to call the police, saying that she will sort out this situation herself. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao quickly gets involved in the fight. She wants to stop the guy. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is named Lin. She has secret combat technologies and intends to use the first form. Her hands transform into a perfect cybernetic mechanism with enormous destructive power. Lin deliberately gets involved in a fight. She quickly runs towards Lin Fan. The guy asks her not to draw the wrong conclusions. Lin Fan's time is running out. He needs to grab a secret flash drive, but the maid stubbornly resists. The guy doesn't know what to do in this fight. He must stop the maid and not hurt her. Lin Fan uses his secret acupuncture technique. He presses the Tao points on the girl's body. Maid Wei reacts very emotionally to the pressing of the secret points. Her emotional state changes. Trembling runs through her body. Wei says loudly that she has never felt so good. Her face turns red, the maid's eyes close. The girl lies on the ground. She has no way to move. She cannot control her body. The guy picks up the flash drive that fell from the maid's hands. The system informs him that the quest has been activated. The system awards Lin Fan a large number of points. He is quite pleased with the replenishment of his account. A voice is heard that says that the guy is a pervert. Lin Fan receives a powerful blow to the face with a mechanical hand. The guy is in severe pain. He offers to listen to his detailed explanation of what is happening. Elder Zhao's granddaughter does not want to listen to his explanations. She raises her mechanical arm to strike. The guy tries to explain to Lin that he did not harm the maid. She just lost consciousness after pressing the secret points. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao does not want to listen to him and strikes an imperial blow. Lin Fan concentrates to deflect the blow. He begins to get annoyed and angry at Lin's misunderstanding. He is ready to use the full power of secret techniques. The guy is unable to stop the emperor's blow with his fist. He looks at his hand and realizes that Lin's mechanical hands are a formidable weapon. The girl is sure that Lin Fan most likely broke his arm. She thinks that she did not come out of the fight unscathed. Her titanium glove was damaged. The elder's granddaughter takes a swing at the guy and warns that she will beat the crap out of him if he doesn't stop resisting. Elder Zhao asks Lin Fan where he got the flash drive. The guy tells the elder about the flash drive that fell out of the maid's pocket. Elder Zhao invites the guy to familiarize himself with the contents of the flash card together. Lin Fan is interested in the elder's opinion regarding the battle. Those present view the contents of the flash card with great interest. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao sees on the computer screen information about a patent for a new phone developed by the company. Lin asks the maid the reason for her treacherous act. She does not understand why Wei tried to steal the corporation's secret information. Maid Wei tells the story of how she had to sign a contract with KTG Karaoke Television, owned by the Xiao family, in order to save her daughter. The maid sits on the floor and sobs loudly, while those around her discuss the presence of her daughter and the seriousness of the threat from the Xiao family.
Lin offers to tell the maid everything in order. Master Poison supports her. Lin Fan understands the motivation for her action. The girl begins to tell her story from the time she was 18 years old. She is very nervous. It is difficult for her to speak. Wei says that when she lived with her boyfriend, rats chewed through the condoms, and this was the reason for her pregnancy. The girl's boyfriend ran after the rat. He fell into an open sewer hatch and died instantly. The maid's daughter communicates with a guy from a bad company, smokes cigarettes as a teenager. Wei watches with horror what is happening. The maid says that her daughter became addicted to drugs while hanging out with guys from bad company and began to often steal money. Wei continues her story, informing those present that her daughter borrowed money from the Zhao family and sold herself to KTG. The Zhao family invites the maid to spy because she is unable to pay off her daughter's huge debt. Lin says that it was necessary to tell about this earlier. Master Poison becomes furious at the treacherous actions of the Xiao family. Those present are outraged by the fact that the Xiao family does not hesitate to protect prostitution. Elder Zhao calls on everyone to immediately go to KTG's lair and on behalf of the Zhao group to save his possible granddaughter. Those present agree with this. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao, Master Poison, and Lin Fan take a decisive step towards the KTG headquarters to bring justice and put an end to this issue. Unexpectedly, the Elder's granddaughter and Master Poison strike the guy in sync. They say that he wasn't invited and it's none of his business. The guy asks to reconsider their position and take him with them. The Elder's niece is categorically against it. She believes that Lin Fan should not be trusted. Lin Fan persistently asks them to stop and listen to his explanation. Elder Zhao is extremely outraged by the guy's actions. He demands to immediately explain Lin Fan's unworthy behavior towards his granddaughters. The guy doesn't know how to explain this to the elder. He doesn't want to admit that the reason was entertainment and tasks of the system. Lin Fan doesn't want to lose the Zhao group's trust, but he has no thoughts on how to convince the elder. Master Poison and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao scatter the guards at the reception of the KTG headquarters. They demand to call the chief to negotiate with them. A beautiful girl appears before them. She addresses them by name in an authoritative voice. Master Poison stops and looks at her in fascination. The girl casts an arrogant glance at the guests and makes a very sarcastic and offensive joke addressed to the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Master Poison is offended by the impudent behavior of the stranger, calls her a witch and rushes to attack. The girl opens her fan with a sharp movement of her hand. She intends to attack the Master Poison. A furious battle between the girl and the master poison begins. The master delivers his signature blow with a poisonous hand. The girl reflects his deadly attack. The master is perplexed that his deadly blow was reflected. The girl throws a caustic joke at the master, declaring that she can easily repel his blows. The girl sits on the back of Lin Fan, who is on all fours, and demands that her people immediately block the front door. A noise is heard. The subordinate girls securely block the front door with the help of a powerful metal clamp. A stranger in a red dress asks the Master Poison the reason for their visit. She is dissatisfied with the impudent behavior of the guests. The girl in the red dress is named Lou. She is the manager of the KTG Corporation guesthouse. Master Poison tells her that they know about the dark affairs of the KTG Corporation. He threatens to call the police. The girl tells the uninvited guests that she is not at all afraid of calling the police. A man comes into the room. He holds a bottle of alcohol in his hand and is dissatisfied with the noise. The man is very outraged by the accusations against KTG. He states that he checks the company every day, and there is nothing illegal here. A corrupt policeman present in the room infuriates Master Poison. The man heard the accusations against him. He loudly declares that he will punish and arrest everyone. The manager of the KTG guesthouse demands that the police officer immediately take action and arrest the uninvited guests. Master Poison intends to administer justice. He concentrates his power in his poisonous hand and attacks the corrupt official. The policeman grabs the girl accompanying him. He intends to block the poisonous blow of the master with the help of the girl. Master Poison's poisonous blow is blocked by a girl. He grabs her by the throat. The girl is paralyzed by his blow. Energy lines envelop the girl's entire body with a dense aura, and strong changes begin to occur to her. The corrupt policeman cannot contain his emotions. He screams loudly as he watches what is happening. The girl does not understand what is happening to her. Her face and chest are instantly covered with dense vegetation. She screams loudly. 
People around watch how the girl's body is instantly covered with thick vegetation. She grows a giant beard and mustache. Master Poison says that a special poison consists of hormones that provoke intensive hair growth on the human body. Master Poison gives the example of his former enemy, who was stricken with his poison, and who spent four hours a day getting rid of the vegetation on his body. Poison declares to those present that the poison he used is not the most deadly of those he owns. He demands to immediately bring all the girls. House manager Lou listened carefully to Master Poison and struck him with a poisonous hand. Master Poison is surprised by the reckless attack of the controlling Lou, and he is alarmed by the girl's fighting skill. He deftly blocks the blow of the controlling Lou, firmly grabs her leg and tries to perform a painful hold. The girl intends to hit Master Poison with her battle fan. The outcome of the fight is not determined. Master Poison concentrates energy in his poisonous hand. He tries to deliver a decisive blow. Controller Lou delivers a slashing blow with her battle fan. Master Poison's attack was unsuccessful. Manager Lou shares her opinion about the master's fighting level. She makes offensive jokes about him. The corrupt policeman is aware of the fact that Master Poison's poison has hit his head. He is worried and waits for a further reaction. Elder Zhao questions Lin Fan about the reasons for his heinous acts in the past. The guy is trying to come up with plausible answers to the question posed by the old man. Lin Fan seems to have a smart thought in his head. He is going to answer Elder Zhao. The guy tells Elder Zhao that he had no vulgar thoughts. Elder Zhao stands thoughtfully in front of the guy. Lin Fan is very excited. The system counts points for him. The guy comes to the conclusion that the old man is angry with him because the system counted points. Elder Zhao does not believe in the guy's sincerity. He tries to persuade him to his answer. Lin Fan thinks that his answer should not be a template. He hopes to receive more points from the system for such an approach. The guy has decided on the answer. He is full of determination and confident in the correctness of his choice. Lin Fan begins a long story based on historical events. He says that legs were the only way of transportation for humanity in ancient times. Ancient cave people are walking along a snowy plain. An icy wind is blowing. They are tired and exhausted. The girl carries the child, holding him behind her back. It is difficult for her to walk in the snow. The cold and icy wind takes away her strength. The caveman returns to his lair with the prey. He drags the defeated beast by the tail. Lin Fan talks about how in ancient times, due to the lack of pillows, the only way to rest and recuperate was on a woman's lap. The ancestors of people head into the forest on all fours. They move in a row, examining their legs. The guy talks about how, a thousand years ago, legs became the reason for the development of human civilization. Elder Zhao is amazed by the fact that legs are the reason for the development of human civilization. In a fit of emotion, he approaches Lin Fan, hugs him tightly, and begins to cry. The system counts points for the guy. Elder Zhao talks about finally finding a like-minded person after being lonely for a long time. The battle between the Master Poison and the Manager Lu continues. The opponents inflict a series of powerful blows on each other. Despite his skill and ability to use poisons, Master Poison is unable to defeat the controlling Lu. He thinks that he may be starting to guess the reason for Manager Lu's high combat level. Master Poison is confident that the reason for his rival's invulnerability is the fan that creates magical air currents. Master Poison understands that the Manager Lu uses her legs covered in black stockings, high-heeled shoes to repel attacks, and a fan to deflect poisonous blows. He plans to remove the protection seal from his other hand in order to release even more poison. Removing the seal of protection allows the poison to poison the body of the poison master. When the protection seal is removed, all living things within a radius of hundreds of meters will die, including the master poison himself. Suddenly, the granddaughter of Elder Zhao enters the fray and deals a crushing blow to master poison in the back. Master poison is struck by the blow of the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. He falls to the ground with a roar and does not understand what happened to him. Voices are heard from the house. People are discussing further plans to free the hostage. Lin Fan offers his help to Elder Zhao. He believes that the granddaughter of the Elder and Master Poison does not have enough strength to defeat the KTG Corporation. These remarks amuse Elder Zhao and he laughs loudly while holding a mug of hot tea. The Elder tells the guy stories about the victories of Master Poison in unequal battles in the past. Elder Zhao's granddaughter uses her design talent to make steel combat gloves. Elder Zhao is going to call Master Poison and his granddaughter to find out if the task is completed. 
The phone does not answer. The elder tries again and again to call his granddaughter and the master poison. Those present do not understand what the problem could be. They discuss various options. The maid says that the phone may be broken. The maid believes that the group controlling KTG is very powerful and perhaps the friends are in trouble. Elder Zhao is indignant at her statements and demands that she shut up immediately. Swan is the most mysterious representative of the group that controls KTG. Many of his opponents have been destroyed or gone crazy. Elder Zhao shares information that even the police do not know about Swan. Elder Zhao is unable to reach his people and assumes they are in danger. Elder Zhao is in deep thought. A brilliant plan is ripening in his head to get out of this difficult situation. He gives Lin Fan a map of the dragon's territory and hopes that the guy will help his friends. Elder Zhao forbids Lin Fan to get involved in a fight. The guy should only reconnoiter the situation and return back. Master Poison is perplexed and asks the elder's granddaughter the reason for her action. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao does not answer his questions. Her eyes are crazy. She raises her metal glove to strike. Master Poison is at a loss and is forced to start a duel with the elder's granddaughter. The house manager, KTG, watches what is happening with a joyful smile on her face, and Master Poison begins to think about her telepathic abilities. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao attacks Master Poison while in an altered state. The master with great difficulty manages to repel her blows. Master Poison thinks that removing the seal from the poisonous glove could harm the elder's granddaughter. Master Poison decides to deal with Manager Lu first, deciding that she is the reason for the insane behavior of the elder's granddaughter. Master Poison loses the fight. He lies defeated on the floor. The girls watch him. At this time, Lin Fan is driving a huge black limousine to KTG headquarters. He is delighted and enjoys amazing comfort in the world of rich people. Lin Fan thinks about how strong his opponents will be. He suspects that they defeated the granddaughter of Elder Zhao and Master Poison. The guy reminds the system that he completed the quest and is entitled to three lucky prizes. Lin Fan spent two prizes, and for the third, the system gave him two portions of magic dumplings. This is not enough for Lin Fan. He demands more bonuses from the system. The system agrees and gives him a five-star talent. The guy is trying to decide how to use the new talent received from the system. The system informs Lin Fan that the balance of his points is enough to purchase a package of golden rod. The guy does not understand what it is. The driver tells Lin Fan that they have arrived at the place. Lin Fan is sitting at the table eating dumplings. The guy thanks the limousine driver for the trip. He gives him the remaining portions of dumplings. Lin Fan stands in front of the KTG headquarters and gathers his strength to go inside. The system informs the guy that this mission is of increased difficulty. Lin Fan answers it that he has made a decision. The guy opens the heavy, huge doors and goes inside the room. Cheers and shouts of joy can be heard. Lin Fan is greeted by a large number of girls at the entrance. Lin Fan is amazed by the luxury of the interiors of the KTG headquarters. He likes the festive atmosphere reigning here. He compares his feelings to a dangerous sea voyage to the shores of unknown continents. Lin Fan continues the comparison. He thinks that it is similar to the movement of the earth around the sun. Being very excited, the guy demands to bring him ten of the most beautiful girls. Master Poison hangs upside down, his legs tightly bound, as a corrupt policeman interrogates him with passion. The guards at the entrance discuss the corrupt policeman and the events taking place outside the door. A corrupt cop demands more poison from Master Poison for his huge bald spot on his head. He shares his plans for Master Poison's poison with Manager Lu, and she tells him that selling poison for treatment is a good business plan. A corrupt police officer believes that today has brought him great prospects. Elder Zhao's granddaughter performs an explicit pole dance for those present. The corrupt policeman cannot take his eyes off the girl. He stands opposite her. A stream of chaotic thoughts fills him. He ponders the reasons for the uninvited guest's visit to the KTG headquarters, contemplating a plan to make everything look better. A corrupt policeman enjoys his power and impunity. His thoughts are interrupted by the message that another unfamiliar guest has arrived at KTG headquarters. The girl tells Manager Lu about the big troubles that happened to them. She continues to talk about a new client who just arrived. The guy is dissatisfied with the number of girls serving him. She turns on the CCTV to show Manager Lu the disgruntled stranger. Master Poison is tied up hanging upside down. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is performing a pole dance, and Lin Fan's secret massage technique is demonstrated on the big screen. Lin Fan uses secret acupuncture techniques to give girls unforgettable pleasure. 
He talks about the importance of certain nuances when using massage. The girls are fascinated by his skill and knowledge. Lin Fan criticizes the professional skills of the girls. He says that the level of customer service at KTG Corporation is very low. A corrupt policeman is excited about the big profits he can make by using prisoners. The woman's voice stops Lin Fan. He turns to see who is speaking to him. He is very surprised by the presence of the girl who called out to him. With a calm, unhurried step, the unfamiliar girl approaches Lin Fan. The guy stands motionless in place and watches the girl. The beautiful girl looks young, has a pleasant smile on her face, and does not pose a threat to the guy. Lin Fan tries to remember if he has seen this girl before. The girl interrupts the guy's thoughts. The girl suggests closing your eyes and guessing about each other's character type and interest. Lin Fan agrees with the girl's proposal. He obediently closes his eyes and tries to focus on the memories. The girl's facial expression changes dramatically. Her eyes are filled with anger and aggression. The girl is about to attack Lin Fan while he stands with his eyes closed and reflects. The guy quickly comes to his senses. He grabs the girl's hand, blocking her grip. Lin Fan seems to have found out who this girl is, but he is not 100% sure of this. The guy decides to use a secret acupuncture technique. He presses on a large number of secret points. Something incomprehensible and inexplicable begins to happen to Lin Fan. He has no way to control his condition. The girl is very indignant. She sensed Lin Fan's secret acupuncture attack. The young stranger falls into a state of euphoria. She reaches the highest level of pleasure. Suddenly, an energy release occurs. The girl and Lin Fan fly away in different directions. The system gives the guy a large number of points. Lin Fan regroups and performs a stunning somersault. He no longer considers the girl harmless. The technique of simultaneously pressing many acupuncture points is developed over decades of training, but thanks to the system, Lin Fan can immediately master this skill. The girl admires Lin Fan's fighting skills. She considers his level to be higher than hers. The girl and Lin Fan stand opposite each other on the roof. The stranger rejoices in the duel with an opponent with a high level of combat skill. The system offers the guy, as a reward for opening the first level, the opportunity to improve a skill of his choice. The stranger decides to resort to her secret technique of the multi-armed deity. Her technique was perfected through years of hard training, and many opponents were defeated using this technique. Lin Fan attacks the stranger using the improved skills granted by the system. The guy uses a series of long acupuncture massages in hopes of defeating his opponent. The unfamiliar girl freezes, a wave of strong vibration passes through her body, causing boundless euphoria. The girl cannot contain her emotions. She screams loudly, plunging into an unreal state of pleasure. The girl asks Lin Fan about where he learned the high level of mastery of secret acupuncture techniques. Lin Fan extends his hand to the mysterious stranger. He offers to stop the fight and follow him. The girl reacts emotionally to the guy's proposal. She performs the jump of a multi-armed deity. An unfamiliar girl realizes that it is impossible to defeat Lin Fan in battle and invites him to fight her using a game. The guy is very interested in the girl's proposal. He wants to find out what kind of game it is. On the table are six bottles of expensive elite alcohol worth tens of thousands of yuan. The waiter asks how the order will be paid for. He offers a choice of card, bank transfer, or cash payment. Lin Fan sits at a table with wads of money scattered on it. He chooses to pay in cash, the waiter is delighted with the new generous client. The guy comes to the idea that he needs to win the game. He needs to pick up the girl who is in captivity. The system tells Lin Fan that the cash will turn into paper in 30 minutes. The girl throws dice on the table. She is confident of her victory as she has the skills of gaming fraud. She invites Lin Fan to drink a glass of alcohol for each unguessed combination of the game dice. The guy couldn't guess the correct combination of the dice. He lost, and he'll have to drink alcohol. Lin Fan drinks a glass of alcohol in one gulp. The girls sitting next to him encourage him. The girl assumes that Lin Fan is a representative of the golden youth, wasting his parents' money in sleazy establishments. The guy loses again. According to the terms of the game, he needs to drink alcohol again. Lin Fan is holding an empty glass in his hands. His appearance tells others that he is very drunk. The guy loses ten times in a row. The girl looks at him in surprise. The system awards Lin Fan points. Lin Fan, using the skill received from the system, does not get drunk. The waiter decides to bring stronger alcohol. Lin Fan begins to guess that the girl is the daughter of a maid in Wei. 
The waiter and maid Wei's daughter are surprised by Lin Fan's colossal resistance to alcohol. The girl demands the waiter to immediately bring the strongest alcohol they have in stock. The corrupt policeman and manager Lu watch Lin Fan play with Wei's daughter on the big screen. The corrupt policeman is surprised by the fact that Lin Fan does not get drunk from the huge amount of alcohol he drinks. On the table are 10 bottles of selected Polish vodka with a strength of 96 degrees. The girl says that only medical alcohol in a hospital can be stronger than this drink. Lin Fan is very surprised by the strength of the drinks brought by the waiter. The guy realizes the benefits of the ability that the system has introduced to him. Lin Fan wants to gain the ability to see through objects, so he decides to turn to the system for help. Lin Fan imagines how useful this skill will be. The gambling with Wei's daughter continues. The guy concentrates all his thoughts on improving his vision. He is completely immersed in himself. Lin Fan uses secret acupuncture points located on the bridge of his nose to gain superpowers. He presses on six acupuncture points simultaneously, hoping to achieve quick results. The girl watches Lin Fan with great curiosity. The guy's manipulations with his face seem strange to her. Wise daughter offers to continue the game. She picks up the glasses with dice in order to make another throw. With a crash, the girl lowers the glasses onto the gaming table, inviting the guy to guess the combination of the rolled dice. Thanks to Lin Fan's use of secret acupuncture points, he has refined his massage skills to the second level and now has the ability to see through objects. The guy sees the dice combination through the glass and notices the magnet attached to Wei's daughter's finger. The dice react to a magnet to create a winning combination. Lin Fan, using his newly acquired ability to see through objects, strives for victory. Taking a break from the game, he carefully examines the girl, while Wei's daughter thinks that Lin Fan is drunk enough. The girl carefully examines the guy sitting opposite her. Lin Fan is pleased with his new ability to see through objects. Wise daughter believes that drinking stronger alcohol will lead to her quick victory. The guy is worried about the possibility of losing consciousness when using his new skill. He intends to finish the game as quickly as possible while he can control the situation. Lin Fan brings the girl into the open saying that he knows the deceptive methods that she used. The combination of the game dice is not enough for Wei's daughter to win. The girl using her secret tricks does not achieve the desired result. According to the rules of the game, she is forced to drink alcohol. The guy hands her a glass. The high strength of alcohol greatly annoys Wei's daughter. The girl slowly brings the glass to her mouth. She, wincing, drinks the portion of alcohol offered by the guy. Wei's daughter loses control. She resolutely demands to continue the game, her eyes filled with anger. The girl has a lot of experience in the game. She believes that she can beat Lin Fan even without using cunning tricks. The girl gets a losing combination of dice. She is forced to accept losing and fulfills the conditions of the game, throwing another glass into herself. Winning combinations for Lin Fan appear again and again. The maid's daughter Wei clearly did not expect such an outcome of the game. She becomes very drunk. The waiter and the girls present were a little shocked by what was happening. They expected a quick reprisal against Lin Fan. The daughter of the maid Wei loses consciousness and falls unconscious on the floor. Those present try to bring her back to normal. The people around are surprised by the amount of alcohol the girl drank. They had never seen her in such a state. Lin Fan won the match. The system gives him a huge number of points. The guy carries the unconscious body of the girl in his arms. He is fascinated by her beauty. Employees of the entertainment establishment of the KTG Corporation are happy with the large amount of money they earned. A pop is heard, and suddenly all the cash turns into plain paper. The employees of the establishment are perplexed. Their joy gives way to indignation. Lin Fan holds the girl in his arms and tries to leave the room as quickly as possible. Manager Lu opens her magic fan. She intends to stop the guy. Lin Fan feels a powerful current of wind, the origin of which is unknown to him. Manager Lu suddenly attacks the guy. His hands are full. He cannot parry the blow. Lin Fan is defeated and the manager accuses him of using his superpower to win the game. She guesses that the guy is involved in Elder Zhao's group. Lin Fan withdraws into himself. He tries to activate his skills granted by the system. Manager Lu, in a sarcastic manner, tells the guy that she knows the real reason for his presence in the establishment. Lin Fan forces himself to open his eyes with great effort. He sees Master Poison and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Manager Lu notices that the guy is regaining consciousness. She tries to talk to him. 
Lin Fan does not understand where he is and what is happening to him at the moment. The system informs the guy that the consciousness of the Poison Master and the Elder's granddaughter has been magically affected by enemies. The system, based on data analysis, comes to the conclusion that Elder Zhao's team lost. Manager Liu demands double payment from the guy for the services provided. The system does not have the ability to determine the combat level of the controlling Liu. The guy does not have a plan for getting out of this situation. He chaotically goes through all the options. Lin Fan is trying to talk with Manager Liu about abstract topics. His task is to stall for time. A corrupt cop shows up and has a lot of questions to ask the guy. The corrupt policeman admitted to Lin Fan that he was the one covering up the activities of the KTG establishment. The guy can't wrap his head around the fact that a law enforcement officer can be a criminal. A corrupt policeman named Chen sarcastically explains to the guy his position on what is happening. Chen justifies his actions by the fact that corruption has always been present in society. Lin Fan falls into an altered state of consciousness, his head filled with disturbing thoughts. Chen tells the guy that he has no chance of salvation and no one will help him. The corrupt policeman laughs loudly. The guy's impotence makes him happy. Lin Fan hopes for help from the police. Chen continues to laugh at the guy. Lin Fan has calmed down and is trying to activate his combat skills granted by the system. Policeman Chen wants to get rid of the guy and make it look like an accident. Chen boasts that he was the current d rank martial arts champion three years ago. A guy gets hit by a corrupt cop called the Dragon comes out of the mountain. He continues the attack with a double shot through the ears, making it impossible for the guy to navigate in space. Chen threatens Lin Fan with a blow called Black Tiger tearing out the heart. The policeman hopes that the last blow will send the guy to the next world. Lin Fan has no way to resist. Suddenly, Lin Fan counterattacks the corrupt policeman. Chen is greatly surprised, and the brass knuckles fly off his hand. Chen screams loudly, flies to the far corner of the room, and hits the wall hard. Manager Liu is very surprised by the guy's actions. What is happening comes as a surprise to her. She wonders how Lin Fan was able to free himself from the complex knot that bound his hands. Policeman Chen lies helplessly near the wall. His right arm is broken. He screams loudly. Chen sends a curse at the guy and threatens him with serious consequences for his action. Lin Fan invites a corrupt policeman to treat his injured arm with the same skill of massage. The guy grabs Policeman Chen by the broken arm and he screams loudly in pain. Lin Fan jokingly suggests that the corrupt policeman break his other arm. Chen looks at the guy in horror. The system counts Lin Fan a large number of points. The guy offers the policeman to set his hand again. The policeman asks Lin Fan to leave him alone. Lin Fan grabs Chen's broken arm as he mocks the downed policeman. The system stimulates the guy. The balance of his virtual account is continuously replenished with a large number of points. Lin Fan realizes that the scoring has been stopped. The corrupt policeman has lost consciousness. The guy is going to bring Chen back to his senses with the help of his acupuncture massage skills. The manager asks the guy to stop with an authoritative voice. Lin Fan looks back and looks at her. Manager Liu tells the guy that he has no evidence of Chen's criminal activities and he faces severe punishment for the harm caused. Lin Fan decides to extract evidence from the corrupt police officer by force, but Manager Liu is alarmed by the guy's intention. Policeman Chen mutters something incomprehensible in the corner. Manager Liu and Lin Fan turn in his direction. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao enters the room. She demonstrates the voice recorder built into her steel fists. Elder Zhao's granddaughter says that they now have irrefutable evidence of Policeman Chen's guilt. Elder Zhao's granddaughter feels deeply satisfied with her actions, as the evidence of corruption provided will be useful in the investigation. The actions of neurotoxins allowed Manager Liu to control the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Lin Fan is surprised by this information. In combat, the Liu controller could not use neurotoxins against the Poison Master. The neurotoxins affected Elder Zhao's granddaughter, causing her to lose control of herself. Hitting Master Poison with the steel glove was a serious mistake for Controller Liu. The girl built into the metal combat gloves the functions of awakening the wearer in the absence of feedback. Manager Liu is delighted with the cunning plan of Elder Zhao's granddaughter. She did not expect such a development. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao deliberately missed the mark in the duel with Master Poison. She avoided using the full combat power of the metal gloves. Her blows did not cause much harm to the Master. Lin Fan is delighted with the implementation of the granddaughter of the elder's granddaughter. The girl demands the immediate release of the captives. 
A man approaches those present from a dark corridor, and incomprehensible speech is heard. Breathing heavily, Policeman Chen enters the room, threatening his opponents with violence. Chen has a mysterious capsule in his hand and continues to utter threats and curses against those present. Policeman Chen puts the capsule into his mouth while those present closely watch what is happening. The policeman's body begins to quickly transform. The muscles become huge, tearing his clothes. Policeman Chen turns into a huge, pumped-up two-meter giant, intending to deal with his offenders. Chen demands those present to enjoy his demonic appearance. In his eyes, there is rage and determination. Lin Fan takes a fighting stance, intending to test how effective his combat level is. Policeman Chen is convinced that the guy has no chance of winning in a fight with him. He raises his huge hands. Manager Lu's magic fan flies across the room, hitting Chen in the head and killing him outright. Policeman Chen lies motionless on the floor, with Manager Lu's magic fan stuck into his head, foam coming out of his mouth. Lin Fan thinks that Chen is dead, while Manager Lu claims that he only fainted. Elder Zhao's granddaughter reflects on how much harm Officer Chen might have caused if Manager Lu had not knocked him out. The girl is perplexed by the actions of Manager Lu. She assumed that they were acting together with Chen. She cannot understand the reason for such a decision. Manager Lu, looking up questioningly, decisively asks Elder Zhao's granddaughter who she is. Policeman Chen lies on the floor. Those present closely watch as Manager Lu films him with her phone camera. Manager Lu throws Elder Zhao's granddaughter a flashcard containing compelling evidence of KTG's illegal actions. She has just one request for the girl and Lin Fan. She asks her to take care of the local girls. With a mysterious smile on her face, Manager Lu asks Lin Fan to say hello to the system. Hearing that the manager has information about the system, Lin Fan falls into a state of deep confusion. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao flares up with rage and indignation, listening to the conversation between the guy and the manager. She does not understand the meaning of their conversation. The manager of Lu is a mysterious woman who masters the art of magic fans. Manager Lu performs a dance with a burning magic fan, which falls to the floor in the middle of the room. Suddenly, she disappears. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao and Lin Fan are in a state of great surprise at what is happening. Manager Lu leaves her stocking as a gift and hopes to meet Zhao's people soon. Lin Fan decides to accept her gift and keep the stocking as evidence for a future investigation. Elder Zhao's granddaughter believes that Lin Fan has mental problems and in a fit of rage, hits the floor with metal gloves. The girl is about to take the stocking for herself, but Lin Fan asks her not to do this and give Manager Lu's gift to him. Elder Zhao's granddaughter approaches Policeman Chen and wonders what to do with him. Lin Fan sits next to them and doesn't know how to answer the elder's granddaughter's question. He doesn't have any suggestions. The guy thinks that he doesn't have enough points from the system to acquire new skills and items. He remembers the map of the dragon's territory that the old man gave him at the beginning of the operation. The multi-million dollar metropolis is magnificent at night. Huge skyscrapers sparkle with lights. Thousands of cars drive along the highways. Fireworks suddenly burst into flames in the sky and take on a strange shape. This is a sign of Elder Zhao's piercing arrow to his people. They see it and are ready to rush to the rescue. Talk of an emergency and mobilization is heard. Zhao's people rush to the cars. The police office received information about KTG's illegal activities. The police quickly gather, urging each other on. They intend to go to the KTG headquarters for arrest. Police patrol cars are racing along the streets of the night city at full speed. The howl of sirens can be heard for several blocks. Suddenly, the police come up against the cars of the Zhao people moving towards them. The police do not understand what Elder Zhao's people are doing here. Zhao's associates are wondering who could have called the police. Their attention is drawn to a noise on the roof. They raise their heads in the hope of seeing the cause of the noise. An unknown man stands on the roof, illuminated by the light of the moon. No one understands how he got there and what he is going to do. The police and Zhao men point their guns at the stranger, asking him to surrender. One of the policemen recognizes the identity of the unknown man standing on the roof. The golden rod purchased with system points was used by Lin Fan on Policeman Chen using magic. The golden rod set contains a big sister talisman. Lin Fan uses it to make Policeman Chen behave like a woman with low social responsibility. Corrupt police officer Chen performs a charming dance, shocking those present and making the people below numb with what is happening. 
Everyone watching this performance becomes very uncomfortable. They are overcome by a gag reflex. Lin Fan feels great joy from what is happening. The system gives him a significant number of points. Suddenly, Lin Fan hears a voice asking him a question about why he is smiling, which takes him away from his fantasies and cheerful thoughts. Elder Zhao commends Lin Fan for his excellent behavior during the operation and declares him his chosen kin. Elder Zhao is pleased with Lin Fan's actions, especially taking Policeman Chen out of the game. Master Poison is in a coma in a special medical capsule. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao is healing him. Elder Zhao ordered an investigation into Lu's managers. Elder Zhao demands that Lin Fan immediately answer his question. He wonders why the guy brought all the girls from the KTG Entertainment Establishment to him. The guy replies that he must help everyone who finds themselves in a difficult life situation. He offers Elder Zhao to place the girls somewhere. Elder Zhao tells the guy that he does not have enough strength to save such a huge number of girls. Lin Fan laughs loudly at him. Maid Wei thanks Elder Zhao and Lin Fan for saving her daughter. Maid Wei says she doesn't have enough money to pay for such kindness, but suggests they consider an alternative payment option. Lin Fan has vulgar thoughts and tries to push them away. Elder Zhao is outraged by the topic of this conversation, and the thoughts of the guy, he attacks Lin Fan to teach him a lesson. Lin Fan asks to free him from the secret capture of Elder Zhao. The old man is thinking about where he can place a large number of girls freed from captivity by KTG. Elder Zhao invites the girls to discuss their future fate in his office, while Lin Fan leaves the room. The system gives the guy only two hours of time to solve the next quest. He needs to free the girls from drug addiction. There is a loud knock on the front door. Someone is very insistent. He needs an audience with Elder Zhao. The door is opened by Elder Zhao's bodyguard, who reports that Lin Fan's uncle has been found. The guy is very happy to meet his uncle since he has not seen him for a very long time and is worried about him. The police station is discussing the operation that took place last night at the headquarters in the KTG apartment. Police officers propose to urgently bring justice and continue operational actions. The police tell their boss about how many losses they suffered in one of the clashes with an unknown criminal with a high level of combat skill. One of the police officers shares the story of how his boss saved him at the cost of his life. Using the business card that the criminal dropped at the scene of the battle, the officers determine the girl's connection with the KTG Corporation. The head of the police department orders everyone to immediately equip themselves and prepare to leave. She intends to put an end to the crime syndicate once and for all. The head of the Rapid Reaction Force is called Tenlin, and she is informed that the KTG headquarters has just been closed. Uncle Lin Fan thanks Elder Zhao for the financial assistance provided. He says that this did not solve all the problems, and his dumpling shop was forcibly demolished. Elder Zhao says that his uncle should thank Lin Fan as he played an important role in solving problems. Lin Fan's uncle is touched by the fact that the guy had to risk his life to help him. Lin Fan asks his uncle why he always wears a mask on his face. His uncle intends to go into detail about the reason for this. Lin Fan's uncle's name is Lai. He carefully takes off his mask. The guy is very surprised and asks what happened to his uncle's mouth. Lai begins his story with a bowl of mysterious dumplings he discovered in his kitchen. After Lin Fan left for university, Lai found a large amount of prepared dumplings in the kitchen. Lai hears plaintive cries coming from the restaurant's dining room and decides to go and check what's going on. A visitor is sitting at a table in a restaurant. He has obvious signs of discomfort. Lai cannot understand the reasons for what is happening. The visitor is severely burned by the hot dumplings, but cannot stop eating them. Lai, noticing the unusual behavior of the visitor, decides to try one dumpling to understand how tasty they are and reveal the secret. To his surprise, Lai discovers that these are the most delicious dumplings he has ever eaten in his life. The dumplings have a piping hot temperature and no way to cool down. Despite this, Lai continues to eat them as they are very tasty. Lai and the diner persistently experiment with different methods of cooling the dumplings, but they fail to achieve the desired result. The dumplings are left in the refrigerator for a long time in the hope of cooling them down. Lai and the visitor cannot resist the magical taste of dumplings. They, suffering from burns, eat ten servings each. As a result, Lai ends up in the hospital where he observes other restaurant patrons next to him. Elder Zhao is amazed by the magical properties of dumplings. Lai asks Lin Fan how he was able to prepare such a dish. 
The guy decides to tell a fictitious story about a recipe that has been passed down from generation to generation. He wants to keep information about the system secret. Uncle Lin Fan doubts the veracity of the story told by the guy. He believes that dumplings can be dangerous for people. Lin Fan recalls that he gave two portions of dumplings to the limousine driver as a token of gratitude for a great trip. The guy begins to worry a lot about the possible danger to others. Lin Fan abruptly jumps up from the table, runs headlong towards the exit. He needs to find the limousine driver as quickly as possible. Elder Zhao and Lai are surprised by the guy's unusual behavior. The limousine driver sits on the ground, leaning his back against the car with an empty cup next to him. Lai talks about how he sees only one empty cup in front of him and wonders where the other cup is. The limousine driver, in an altered state of consciousness, says that he gave the second cup of dumplings to the girl on the floor above. A girl on the second floor smells the magical aroma of dumplings and asks the driver to share it with her. Elder Zhao and Lin Fan guess that the girl on the second floor may be Lai's daughter. The guy and Elder Zhao intend to find the girl as soon as possible. They tell Lai that this could be his daughter. The guy, Elder Zhao, and Lai are in a hurry. Full of determination, they run up to the door of the apartment. They try to open the door. Lin Fan asks the girl not to eat dumplings under any circumstances. The guy frantically pulls the handle, trying to open the door and get inside as quickly as possible. Finally, the castle gives way. Elder Zhao, Lin Fan, and Lai rush inside the room, their eyes filled with surprise at what they saw inside. The police are trying to detain Captain Chen, who continues to be under the influence of the Golden Rod. Tenlin asks those present about what is happening here. Those around her cannot give her clear explanations about what is happening. The police appeal to Captain Chen to calm down and stop the terrible carnival. The head of the rapid response team, Tenlin, decides to solve the problem on her own, while those around her urge her to be careful. Tenlin accuses Captain Chen of criminal connections and patronage of KTG entertainment establishments. Captain Chen responds with a stream of incoherent speech, his emotional state extremely unstable. The police order him to move away from Tenlin, preparing to use their weapons. Captain Chen spins around on his pole and charges at the police. The police officers feel very bad about Captain Chen's behavior. Tenlin takes out two revolver drums from the unloader. She holds them gracefully in her hand. A metallic click is heard, and with a deft movement, Tenlin reloads the weapon. The first responder fires a superfast burst of 12 bullets. All opponents hit by Tenlin's well-aimed hits fall to the ground. Captain Chen and the police officers who were on his side are neutralized and no longer pose a threat to Tenlin. Tenlin's subordinate is outraged by her action. She calms him down, saying that the bullets were rubber. Tenlin doesn't understand the reason why she dealt with Captain Chen so easily. A subordinate tells her about Captain Chen's fight with Lin Fan. The head of the rapid response team cannot believe that Captain Chen lost the fight with a simple guy. The thought arises in her head that Lin Fan had no noble aspirations, and all his actions were the result of showdowns with competitors. Tenlin intends to find Lin Fan at all costs. She wants to find out the truth. Lin Fan cannot understand why the system awarded him a huge number of points. Elders Zhao, Lin Fan, and Lai look at the girl who ate a portion of magic dumplings. The girl does not understand the reason for their agitated behavior. Those present ask why the dumplings did not burn her. The system tells Lin Fan that the magic dumplings are prepared according to a special recipe and have no analogs in the universe. Lin Fan asks the system why a girl can calmly eat these dumplings without harm to herself. Lai looks closely at Lin Fan and asks him why he is talking to himself. He asks Lin Fan to share the secret of making magic dumplings and tells him that there will be no end to customers. Lin Fan tells him that he cannot give away the secret of making magic dumplings and he needs to solve the problem with refrigeration. Lin Fan remembers that he only has two hours left to complete the secret quest. Lai continues to persistently ask Lin Fan for the secret of producing magic dumplings. Lin Fan tells him that in the future he will definitely reveal the secret of production, encouraging his uncle. The guy is visited by strange, fantastic visions. He cannot understand their meaning. The head of the Xiao family angrily scolds the waiter, not believing the problems that have arisen in his business. The waiter makes excuses. He says that he did everything possible and even Captain Chen could not resolve the situation. Xiao Hun, the current chairman of the board of the Xiao family, is indignant at the actions of the Zhao people. A guy appears in the room and tells Xiao Hun not to get excited and calm down. 
The guy, noticing that the waiter is injured, invites him to sit down. The guy's name is Tsun. He is the third heir of the Xiao family. The waiter is grateful for the guy's offer. He extends a trembling hand to him. Tsun notices that the waiter looks bad and his hands have wounds. The guy thanks the waiter for his overwhelming contribution to the family business and offers him help in treatment. The waiter is pleasantly surprised by the nobility of Tsun's character and the kindness of his look. Tsun smiles mysteriously, not believing the waiter's naivety. His face takes on a sinister look. The guy takes the waiter by the hands and suddenly performs a painful hold. Soon attacks the waiter. He hits him with a series of furious jumping strikes. His opponent is defeated. The waiter falls to the ground. Sun tries to destroy him with a deadly attack. The guy tells Xiao Hun that now the waiter won't be able to say anything, since he's been out of the game for a long time. Soon takes out his phone from his pocket and dials the emergency number on it. He informs the operator on duty that a dangerous wanted criminal is in their house. Xiao Hun is angry that his son himself called the police and told a made-up story. Tsun informs Xiao Hun that it is time to end the criminal business. He suggests that he continue to engage only in honest and legal matters. The guy is going to steal the secret technologies of the Zhao family and, with their help, seize leadership in the market. He holds a flashcard in his hands. Lin Fan, using the system, has made 33 plates of dumplings and is thinking about how to cool them. The guy receives from the system a new ability called Technogenius. Lin Fan imagines himself as a brilliant innovator and inventor, thinking about the possibility of earning big money and achieving high social status. Lin Fan makes a cooling system. A virtual screen tells him that the new ability can be taken to the next level. The guy continues to work hard on the dumpling cooling system. He works day and night tirelessly. The system constantly encourages him. Elder Zhao and Lai are standing outside the dumpling shop, wondering what Lin Fan is doing. A little girl smells the magic dumplings. Lai thinks it's too early for her to eat them. Lin Fan stands in front of a giant fan and carefully examines it. Those around him do not understand the guy's plan. Lin Fan explains to others the operating principle of the new generation cooling system. The guy says that he has found a limitless source of cheap energy. Lin Fan realizes the stupidity of the idea he implemented with the system. He throws the fan to the floor. Lin Fan demands ingenious solutions from the system. The system tells him that he is at the first level of techno-genius, which does not allow him to implement complex ideas. The guy considers this skill useless and regrets the large number of points spent on it. The girl does not understand the nature of Lai and Elder Zhao's strong excitement. Lin Fan thinks about why some people are not burned by the magic dumplings. A brilliant idea comes to his mind. He believes that he has finally found a solution to this problem. Lin Fan suggests that Elder Zhao invite everyone to the restaurant as soon as possible. The Elder agrees. Lin Fan invites all girls released from captivity to visit Lai Restaurant. Maidway's daughter is unhappy with the guy's invitation and is upset about losing her previous job at KTG Corporation. She offers Lin Fan to provide for her financially and says that because of him she lost her job. Lin Fan agrees to fully provide for Wei's maid's daughter if certain conditions are met. The girl is amazed at how easily Lin Fan agreed to her proposal. She is interested in the question of where the guy will get the funds to fulfill his obligations. Lin Fan hands her a portion of dumplings. The girls are very hungry, they ask the guy for permission to try the magic dumplings. The dumplings are very hot, however. This does not stop the girls, they are very hungry. Lin Fan is very anxiously awaiting the girls' further reaction to the magic dumplings. The girls realize strange changes in their bodies after eating magic dumplings. Their bodies are filled with incredible heat followed by a state of incredible pleasure. The maid's daughter Wei watches with surprise what is happening. She is interested in the girls' reaction to the food. Lin Fan tells the system that the heat of the dumplings is compensated by the breath of the girls using yin energy. The guy turns to the maid's daughter Wei and says that he knows a way to solve the financial problems of all the freed girls. The police are listening with great interest to what is happening at the Lai restaurant. One of the police officers tells Tenlin that Elder Zhao took all the girls from KTG and brought them to the Lai restaurant. The head of the rapid response squad is provided with information that the identity of the unknown guy who took part in the battle with Captain Chen has been established. Tenlin, having read Lin Fan's personal information, is filled with great irritation. Her colleagues express their point of view, arguing that modern youth have become corrupted. Tenlin orders her subordinates not to relax. She considers Lin Fan a strong opponent. 
The girls, dressed in beautiful evening dresses, are in a wonderful, joyful mood. Elder Zhao is pleased that he has enough evening dresses for all the girls. The maid's daughter Wei thinks that glamorous service and dumplings are in terrible bad taste. Lai cannot understand what Lin Fan's plan is. The guy tells him that he will find out everything soon. Lin Fan says that if cooling devices do not help, then you need to turn to the use of the yin energy that the girls provide. She realizes how Lin Fan's genius and innovation can bring new and exciting opportunities. Lin Fan intends to hire girls as workers who will be in charge of cooling the dumplings. The guy believes he can solve two problems at the same time, keep the magic dumplings refrigerated and provide new jobs for disadvantaged girls. Lai believes that this option is not hygienic and could damage the establishment's reputation. Lin Fan and Elder Zhao claim that Lai has not developed a sense of refined taste in his life. Lin Fan throws the doors wide open and announces that the restaurant is open to all visitors. Two guys are walking down the street, discussing the incident with the teacher William, who was expelled from the university. They argue about whether Lin Fan is to blame for the incident becoming known to many people. One of the guys suggests visiting the Lai Dumpling Shop. His friend declares that only hillbillies eat dumplings. Something unusual attracts the attention of one of the guys. He looks at it without taking his eyes off. Beautiful girls cool magical dumplings with their breath. Lai invites young people to visit his establishment. The guys show indecisiveness. Lai tells the young people that his restaurant has a new chef who can cook delicious dumplings. The guys agree to have breakfast at the Lai restaurant and try an unusual dish. The girls, with smiles on their faces, place plates of delicious food in front of the guys, showing care and attention. Magic dumplings are cooled by the breath of beautiful girls. Guys are fascinated by this action. With every minute of watching what is happening, they are increasingly immersed in a state of surprise and delight. One of the guys comes to the conclusion that he was wrong to initially refuse to visit the restaurant. His friend is delighted with what is happening. He wants to become a regular customer of the restaurant. The girls feed visitors, providing service and service at the highest level. The guys realize that these dumplings are incredibly tasty, the best they have ever tried. One of the guys thinks that the filling of corn and mushroom dumplings is like art. It is so magnificent. His friend is convinced that in every spoonful of dumpling broth there sounds a real symphony of great musical geniuses. Both agree that the incredible taste of the dumplings is simply irresistible. The guys can't get enough of the excellent dumplings at the Lai restaurant, they demand new portions. They are amazed by their unique taste. Uncle Lin Fan is surprised. He is delighted with the unexpected success of the new dish. The dumplings have won the hearts of customers with their magical taste. Ten minutes later, the restaurant is filled with many customers. Everyone is eager to try this new product. The girls in the restaurant work tirelessly to serve customers. All visitors are delighted with the high level of service. There is a real excitement in the restaurant. The magic dumplings are in great demand. Every visitor wants to experience this amazing taste. The owner of the Lai restaurant is delighted by the unexpected interest in the magic dumplings. He sees this as an excellent opportunity to develop his business. With great excitement, Lai rushes into the kitchen, showing a strong desire to participate in the process. Lai informs Lin Fan that all 30 plates of dumplings were sold out in just 10 minutes. With joy, the guy realizes that his efforts have borne fruit. Elder Zhao expresses respect and admiration. Maid Wei's daughter expresses her bewilderment at the success of such a simple idea. She does not understand the reason for the success. Lai asks the guy to prepare another batch of dumplings. Lin Fan agrees and asks everyone to turn away as it is a family secret. The dumplings quickly sold out. Lai asks the guy to prepare more portions, realizing the demand for the dish. Lin Fan carefully calculates how many points it takes to make one plate of dumplings and how much profit it will bring. He realizes the huge commercial benefit of the project, thinking about how much money it will bring in per year. Lin Fan demands a reward from the system for completing the mission. The system informs the guy that the mission has not yet been completed. To complete Lin Fan's quest, you need to convince Maidway's daughter to accept a job offer at the restaurant. The guy recalls that she did not accept the offer to work in the restaurant, expressing his skepticism and negative attitude towards this idea. Lin Fan only has ten minutes left to complete the quest. The police are watching the events taking place in the Lai restaurant. They are alarmed by the excitement around the new dish. They fly a quadcopter to listen in detail to the conversations of visitors.
A lot of people gathered at the Lai restaurant. They had to wait in a long line to enter. The girl tells visitors about the cost of dishes and about discounts for regular customers. The police listen to conversations with caution. It seems to them that the restaurant's activities are illegal. They are considering the possibility that the food trade is just a cover for criminal schemes. Clients speak Chinese in which the words plate and night are consonant. Tenlin thinks that an underground club is operating under the guise of a restaurant to provide intimate services. The rapid response team is preparing to storm the Lai restaurant. Tenlin and her team attack the crime syndicate, suggesting that the action is justified and necessary. The head of the rapid reaction force makes his way through the crowd of people and asks them to disperse. Unsuspecting Lin Fan and his friends continue to serve customers. Special forces burst into the room. The guy turns around and looks at them. The police consider him the main suspect. Tenlin informs the guy that he is under arrest and reminds him of his right to remain silent. Visitors, surprised by what is happening, look up from eating their food. They do not understand the meaning of what is happening. The head of the rapid reaction force continues to stand at the entrance to the restaurant, holding a deadly weapon in his hands. The fighters order the visitors to raise their hands up and not resist. The police have doubts about the correctness of their actions, since they do not notice anything illegal in the actions of the clients. Tenlin begins interrogating Lin Fan. The guy does not understand what he is accused of. Lin Fan expresses his bewilderment. He asks why such drastic measures were used, because he did not commit any illegal actions. Tenlin believes the guy is involved in the latest incidents at KTG headquarters. The police succumb to the temptation to try the magic dumplings. The head of the rapid response team is furious with their action. Lai tells his employees that the restaurant has been suspended due to a health inspection. The girls believe that all problems will be solved. They are satisfied with the wages they receive in the restaurant, and they want to return to work. Maid Wei's daughter learns that the girls' salaries in the restaurant are higher than those in KTG. She intends to discuss the matter with Lin Fan. The guy convinces her of the necessity and usefulness of working in his uncle's restaurant. The girls tell Elder Zhao that the daughter of Maid Wei is one of the most beautiful girls. The girl says that the daughter of the Maid Wei is not indifferent to representatives of her sex. Maid Wei's daughter offers to taste the magic dumplings to the head of the rapid response team. She feels joy from her new job, which gives her the opportunity to earn an honest living and help her mother. Tenlin looks at Maid Wei's daughter with wariness. The girl persuades Tenlin to try the magic dumplings. She uses her witchcraft spells. Tenlin gives in to persuasion with reluctance and wariness. She nevertheless decides to try an unknown dish. The girl appreciates the wonderful taste of dumplings, which are impossible to tear yourself away from. Strange fantasies and visions begin to visit her, and she experiences indescribable pleasure. Tenlin continues to devour portion after portion of magical dumplings, unable to stop in front of their great taste. A delicious dinner after a hard day at work brings satisfaction to the head of the rapid response team. Maid Wei's daughter notices something on Tenlin's face and approaches her to take a closer look. She notices crumbs on Tenlin's face and tells her to clean them up. Maid Wei's daughter uses an unusual way to cleanse Tenlin's face. The girl feels satisfaction when she notices that her cunning strategy worked successfully. Lin Fan has successfully completed the mission. He is in a hurry as he is late for classes at the university. The sun slowly moves towards the zenith, brightly illuminating the beautiful university building. The teacher explains to students how important knowledge of English is for their future career and work. Lin Fan, taking a break from his studies, reflects on how successfully he completed the mission. Self-confidence is present in his thoughts. Suddenly, the system informs Lin Fan that he has acquired new skills and abilities during the mission. The system provides Lin Fan with an excessive amount of confusing information about improving existing abilities. He feels that it is too difficult for him. The system continues to instruct the guy on how to improve his abilities. Lin Fan does not understand anything. Lin Fan learns that he has 10,000 points in his virtual account. In a fit of strong emotion, he slams the desk, not realizing the force of his blow. Lin Fan thinks that he just lightly touched the desk, but in reality it was a powerful blow. The teacher, dissatisfied with the boy's behavior, makes his comments in an angry manner. The guy apologizes to the teacher, but this does not diffuse the situation. The teacher demands that Lin Fan immediately retell the lesson material. Lin Fan is surprised to note that every detail of the lesson is retained in his memory with vividness and clarity. 
The guy begins to retell the lesson material in fine detail, demonstrating an amazing ability. People around them sit at their desks with their mouths open, surprised by how Lin Fan reproduces the lesson material in small details. Continuing to amaze his classmates, the guy retells the lesson in detail. Those around him are shocked by Lin Fan's capabilities. They admire the accuracy of his retelling and pronunciation of the English language. Lin Fan realizes the ability to memorize ten pages of a book at once with just one glance. Xiao walks along the university corridor with his sister. She does not want to talk to him. He is very worried about his sister's condition and wonders if she is okay. Xiao opines that Lin Fan does not have good martial arts skills, adding that he comes from a poor family. In addition, Xiao seeks to prove to his sister that Lin Fan is a bad student. He takes her to the English department. Together they enter the classroom where Lin Fan is teaching. Lin Fan stands at the blackboard in front of the class. He teaches the lesson in excellent English. The teacher is surprised by the guy's knowledge. Mei is amazed by the guy's knowledge. Xiao can't believe that Lin Fan is teaching the teacher. Lin Fan transforms into a scientist. The system awards him a large number of points. Lin Fan believes that the new abilities that the system gave him have limitless prospects. Mei continues to admire Lin Fan's abilities while her brother becomes wildly annoyed. Fellow students and the teacher are interested in how Lin Fan improved his knowledge. The teacher admits that his knowledge is much less than that of the guy. He sees Lin Fan as a hidden genius who has no equal in the university. The teacher sincerely admires Lin Fan and offers him further education on attractive terms. Lin Fan tells the system that he did not experience any difficulties in memorizing the educational material. The thought occurs to him that if he goes to the library, he will become the wisest person in the universe. Lin Fan asks those around him to make way. He intends to go to the library. Leaving the classroom into the corridor, his attention is attracted by an unusual incident. In the corridor, Lin Fan sees Mei, who taught her brother a lesson. They meet their eyes and look at each other for a long time. The guy standing next to him makes a sarcastic joke about this, for which he immediately pays. Mei tells Lin Fan that there will be an international final match today, and her brother is not feeling well. She suggests that he participate in the competition instead of Xiao. The guy agrees to the proposal, but expresses doubts about whether he will be allowed to participate in the competition. Lin Fan remembers that matches like this are broadcast on television. He thinks about the opportunity to use the new skills gained from the system and earn a lot of points. He always dreamed of becoming a famous and popular star in international sports. The university's physical education hall is ready to host an international volleyball tournament. Lin Fan is aware of the fact that he did not clarify with Mei what discipline the competition would be held in. Participation in the university volleyball team comes as a surprise to him. He does not know how to play volleyball. Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend expresses her dissatisfaction with Mei due to her ex-boyfriend's presence on the team. Mei explains to her that she had no choice since her brother was not feeling well and could not participate in the game. Opponents of Team Mei appear in the arena and try to provoke a scandal with their statements. The opposing team's center forward claims that Mei has no chance of winning. With the competing teams facing each other, Mei needs to win the game as she dreams of the championship cup this year. The final volleyball match between the Chinese and American teams begins. Lin Fan has no experience in playing volleyball. The guy does not know the rules. He only watched this sport on TV. The spectators are surprised by Lin Fan's presence in the game as they have never seen him play volleyball. The girl casts an angry glance at the guy. She doubts his usefulness for the team. May hopes that Lin Fan, in addition to martial arts and studies, can surpass her in volleyball skill. Journalists and professional commentators are actively discussing the final match. The American team has become world champions three years in a row, but this time it intends not to break tradition. The American team has a secret trump card that has not yet been used. Immediately after serving, the American team scores the first goal. The fans are taking this to heart, and the final match promises to be exciting. The strongest receiver in the Chinese team, unfortunately, was unable to return the ball. The American has the most difficult serves and intends to use the giant whale technique. Lin Fan runs to his ex-girlfriend, whose name is Bei. He wants to know if she is okay. Mei demands Lin Fan to immediately return to his position. She is indignant at his antics. Taking advantage of the confusion in the ranks of the Chinese team, the Americans continue to attack. There is a roar in the spectator stands. 
The fans are unhappy with two goals conceded at the beginning of the game. The Americans execute their next serve, and the ball hits the Chinese defender with tremendous speed. May is shocked by the strength and speed of the American team's serve, and she begins to have doubts about victory. Lin Fan is trying to repel the powerful attack of the attacking American team. His concentration is at its limit. Instead of hitting the ball, the guy catches it with his hands, which shows his lack of volleyball skills. The Chinese team members and spectators shout loudly and are indignant at Lin Fan's actions. The referee stops the game, the system awards extra points to Lin Fan, and the American team looks at the guy in surprise. Viewers agree that it was a big mistake for the Chinese team to use Lin Fan in the game. The guy's classmates are discussing Lin Fan's strange game and predicting his team's loss. Viewers express doubts about the guy's professionalism in volleyball. May gives the guy a second chance. She hopes that Li Fan will pull himself together and correct the situation. The players of the American team are closely watching Lin Fan. They consider him a dark horse. May tells the guy that in volleyball you can't catch the ball with your hands, as it's a violation of the rules. The skills Lin Fan received from the system are enough to reflect the ball, but the system did not teach the guy the rules of playing volleyball. The American hitter intends to put all her strength into her next serve. The Chinese team decides that changing the players' positions will improve their situation on the field. Lin Fan begins to return the American team's serves, and the Chinese team has a chance. The American woman is perplexed that the guy was able to repulse her signature blow. The pendulum of the game has swung, the Chinese team goes on a counterattack, May is preparing to hit the ball. May, being the main attacker, jumps high in the air, preparing to use her signature move. Sending angry curses at the American team, she hits the ball hard. None of the members of the university team can resist her powerful and twisting serve. Lin Fan notices something that makes him pale in surprise and speechless, his gaze directed towards the American women. The tall, blonde American jumps up and easily deflects May's spinning kick. The main striker of the Chinese team was very upset, she hoped that no one would be able to reflect her blow. To everyone's surprise, the Chinese team's striker's shot was easily blocked by the American. Lin Fan is very worried about the progress of the game. He still does not have a clear plan. He does not know how to effectively defeat his opponents. Evil laughter comes from the American half of the playground. The differences in physical fitness and height are all too obvious. The main defender of the American team tells May that her serve will not hurt even a fly. May is in a very irritated state. The players ask her how they can resist the Americans. Lin Fan compares the physical characteristics and playing skills of both teams. He intends to find a way out of this situation. The guy decides not to resort to the help of the system and win on his own, relying only on his skills and mastery. Lin Fan repels the opponent's shots too much, which allows the American team to earn another point. The American team's forward is preparing to use her signature move called the American Angel Kick. May orders his team to immediately securely cover the net and parry the American shot. Lin Fan rushes towards the net. He decided to take this serious blow upon himself. The American defender rises up to intercept a dangerous serve from Lin Fan. The guy decides to use an air vortex power jump aimed at crushing the powerful defense of the American team. Thanks to his unique skills, Lin Fan is able to work at incredible heights, soaring above the net. The American team begins to retreat. For the first time in the entire game, the Americans have doubts about their victory. Spectators and professional journalists admire the playing technique and pressure of the Chinese team. Lin Fan, having violated the boundary of the playing court and hit the net, collides with the American defender. For such gross violations, the judge issues him a warning yellow card. The captain of the American team can barely restrain his defender, who is furious with the guy's prank. The American team requires a timeout in order to discuss the current situation and reconsider the tactics of the game. Spectators actively share their opinions about the final game, focusing on Lin Fan. Classmates come to the conclusion that they had previously underestimated the guy. Journalists and professional commentators closely monitor every moment of the game in which Lin Fan participates. The tablet demonstrates the guy's unimaginable jumping capabilities, and those around him express their admiration with loud exclamations. The height of the volleyball net is two and a half meters. Lin Fan can easily jump to such a height. Spectators are confident that they have witnessed the birth of a new volleyball star. Lin Fan is very unwell. He is experiencing physical ailments. 
The system awards a large number of points to the guy. May thinks that it was not in vain that she bet on Lin Fan. She admires his physical capabilities and finds him very attractive. May introduces Lin Fan as a powerful warrior capable of defeating the Americans with his black dragon technique. Lin Fan is deeply worried about breaking the rules of the game and being clumsy. He is afraid that because of his stupid act, others will turn away from him, and even the school cook will be angry with him. Lin Fan asks the girls for a phone number in order to learn the rules of volleyball during a break in the game. May wants to stand out from her competitors and offers her phone to the guy in an original way. Lin Fan reports that he has thoroughly studied all the rules of volleyball. The girl is surprised at the guy's learning speed. May has the impression that Lin Fan has not learned all the rules of volleyball. The girl is thinking about how to use Lin Fan's colossal physical capabilities in the game. May, after assessing the situation, decides to appoint Lin Fan as the central defender, while she herself takes the forward position. May and Lin Fan continue to reminisce and analyze the game with the American team together. They discuss the question of who is best suited to receive the ball on the flanks of the playing court. One of the team members overhears their conversation and decides to nominate herself as a suitable player for this role. Bay dislikes Lin Fan, but for her, the team's victory in the international tournament is higher than personal feelings and relationships. The break is over. The match continues. A Bay student from the Chinese team has difficulty accepting a serve from the American team. The Americans have significantly changed their tactics, making it difficult for the Chinese team to counter their attacks. May jumps high in the air, demanding that the ball be passed to her in order to strike. Lin Fan doubts his ability to return the American power hitter's serve. The guy activates his supernatural abilities. He brilliantly hits the ball and deftly passes it to May. Lin Fan, overdoing the force of the blow, knocks the girl down. She falls to the ground with a roar. The Chinese team is very dissatisfied with Lin Fan's play. Discord begins within its ranks, and the system gives the guy new points. In the rest of the match, the May team is under severe pressure from the Americans. They have practically no chance to strike back. The defenders of the Chinese team, at the limit of their strength, can barely hold back the most difficult serves. The end of the first half comes, the Chinese team loses with a score of 25 to 0. During the break, there is an oppressive defeatist atmosphere in the dressing room. The May team is demoralized. Lin Fan asks the system why he can't control his jumping ability and throwing power. The American women mock Lin Fan and his team, saying that they will lose the match in the second half. The guy believes that he needs to improve his level of play in volleyball. For this, he requires the system to write off additional points. Lin Fan tells May that he will be the main striker in the next half, the girl doubts the correctness of his decision. The guy does not accept objections and tells the girl to do as he says. May is dissatisfied with Lin Fan's plans. She strongly doubts the correctness of his conclusions and the outcome of the game. The break is over. The Chinese team entered the playing field. Lin Fan is focused on the upcoming fight. In the stands, among the spectators, sits a mysterious man in a red cloak. He watches what is happening with great interest. The second half begins, the Chinese team prepares to serve the ball with excitement. The fans encourage the May team with shouts and speeches, demanding that they quickly correct the mistakes made in the previous half. Without the slightest hint of excitement, the American team easily hits the ball. The Americans make a fantastic long pass to their forward Brittany, who manages to take an advantageous position to shoot. Brittany sets out to destroy the Chinese team using her moon power technique. The muscles of her legs are extremely tense. She is preparing to perform a giant, powerful leap in order to bring down all her strength on the enemy. Lin Fan gritted his teeth, under enormous stress, trying with incredible effort to repel the attack of the American team. Brittany's most powerful serve knocks the guy off his feet, completely disorienting him with a blow of superhuman strength. The American team demonstrates a high level of physical fitness and excellent playing skills demonstrating a professional approach to the game. The system gives Lin Fan extra points. He is completely focused on the game. The guy understands the importance of defeating the enemy at any cost. The guy doesn't understand why the system gives him extra points, since nothing unusual happens to him. The stands are roaring with delight. The guy was able to parry the shot of the Americans. The score in the game has moved. The audience is waiting for the victory of the Chinese team. Journalists and professional commentators are surprised by Lin Fan's ability to deflect enemy attacks. 
The girls ask Lin Fan with delight and surprise how he managed to repel an incredible blow. The American women cannot believe that the guy was able to fend off the lunar force of their attacker. The captain of the American team interrupts their conversation, declaring that the next serve will be hers. The American captain's name is Anna, and she claims that she is just the right person to counter the likes of Lin Fan. The game continues dynamically. The Chinese defender confidently repels the whirlwind strike, demonstrating her excellent technique. The American defender is not as simple as it seems at first glance. She skillfully kicks the ball. The ball is redirected to the Chinese team's sector. Mei is about to use the power of the energy cocoon. The girl easily takes the strongest blow from the Americans. Her defensive magic is a good trump card in the game. Spectators were interested in the new combination of players used in the game. Lin Fan is the center forward. Mei is the setter. The players of the American team are wary of the enemy's tactical changes, but they have a sufficient number of tricks in stock. Mei takes the American serve, and suddenly the ball begins to spin wildly in the air. The girl was unable to return such a serve. The ball flies out of the setter's hands at great speed. Mei is very dissatisfied with herself because of the failure. She sends angry curses towards the American women. Lin Fan notices that there is not a single defender at the place where the ball fell. He thinks that luck has turned against their team again. Brittany has no doubt that anyone on the opposing team will be able to fend off Anna's whirlwind strike. Lin Fan runs up, jumps high, and hits the ball with a powerful blow, sending it towards the American women. Brittany is in a state of great bewilderment, not understanding how the guy can return such difficult serves. Lin Fan uses the super skills obtained from the system to deflect the attack. A powerful serve is reflected by the guy. The ball flies towards the American team. Now it's their turn to show what they are capable of. The Americans don't have the slightest chance to reflect the guy's shot and miss the ball. Brittany is very upset by this development of events. She was hoping for an easy victory over the Chinese team. The reactions of the American women are similar to Brittany's. They are perplexed by how a guy who played very poorly in the first half is now showing such results. There is an atmosphere of uncontrollable joy in the ranks of the Chinese team. They rejoice at the goal scored. Team May earns two points, giving them a real chance of winning. Lin Fan's demonstration of his lightning speed and amazing jumping ability terrifies Brittany. The American team realizes that their main trump card, the whirlwind kick, is no longer an invincible move in the game. May is delighted with the implementation of the new abilities the guy received from the system. She praises him. Lin Fan and May think that they should not relax. They need to make every effort to finish what they started and defeat the American team. One of the members of the Chinese team tries to interfere in the dialogue between Lin Fan and Mei. They do not pay attention to her. The Chinese team is actively using new tactics and devastating blows from Lin Fan against their opponents. Even with the help of three defenders, the American team is unable to contain Lin Fan's attacks. Nothing can stop the guy. Those around him are surprised by his incredible superhuman strength. The next goal is scored in favor of the Mei team, its players are delighted, they are on an emotional high. The system awards points to the guy. A professional video surveillance system is installed at the highest point of the arena, capable of recording the entire playing area. The video system secretly recorded every second of the international tournament game. There are strange men in the room who are discussing the likelihood of the American team winning and the possible consequences of its defeat. The masked man orders his subordinates to find out everything about Lin Fan and capture him after the game. He thinks that he's already heard the guy's name somewhere, but he can't remember where or under what circumstances. While among the fans, a mysterious man in a red cloak continues to watch the game. A mysterious player from the American team enters the court. No one knows who he is or how good his technique is. The Chinese team managed to bounce back and go into the break with an equal score, with the final decisive half ahead. Journalists and photographers are delighted with the competition. They believe that it is not every day that they can see how an ordinary student competes with the American team. Press and television representatives prepare to interview Lin Fan and his classmates after the match. Students studying with a guy argue about which of them is his best friend. It is a mystery to the American team how their opponents got such a serious player. A mysterious reserve player approaches the American captain, inviting her to make a change in the lineup. He is not too worried about the success of the Chinese team, but he believes that they have encountered an interesting opponent. 
The American team's secret defender is named Charles, and he decides he could use some exercise. The presenter with pathos announces Charles' entry onto the playground. The May team is wary of the new American player. They hear the caustic jokes of their opponents. The girls discuss the athletic appearance of the American women's secret defender and argue about his supposed height. Charles tells Lin Fan that the Chinese team will not concede another goal. The American offers the guy a bet. If he manages to score at least one goal, he will win. Lin Fan does not understand the meaning of the dispute and the proposed conditions. He tries to ask Charles, who is leaving him, about this. The final half of the match begins. The American team serves the ball using the giant whale technique. The Chinese team defender takes the ball with difficulty and passes it to Lin Fan to shoot. The guy sends the ball towards the American team with a strong cutting blow. Charles appreciates the guy's serving technique and prepares to parry the blow. Having made a large circle around the field, the ball approaches the American team defender with incredible force. A subconscious feeling of uncertainty takes over Lin Fan. He is afraid that his pitch will not bring the desired result. The ball, flying towards Charles at great speed, is hit by him with such force that lightning flashes around him. The counterattack of the American team was so fast that Lin Fan did not even have time to understand what had happened. The girls, stunned by the speed of the ball, did not have time to notice it. They asked the guy what happened. Lin Fan says that the American team striker was able to change the trajectory of the ball while moving. Charles has a rare supernatural ability that allows him to control objects. This ability gives him the ability to counter even the most difficult of his opponent's serves with a supertake orb. Lin Fan is very alarmed by the discovered superpowers of the American defender, which he previously had no idea about. The trajectory of the ball magically changes again after Lin Fan hits. Charles returns his serve. Brittany hopes that with the help of Charles, they can win this match against the Chinese team. She performs her signature moonsault. Lin Fan is confident that Brittany will not be able to break through his defense. Lin Fan tries to activate the grid's magical protection using his superpowers. He fails to block the shot and the Chinese team misses the ball. Lin Fan is worried that he can't move his hands. He doesn't understand why this happened. The guy turns his gaze to the stands. He notices an unfamiliar man in a red cloak. The stranger in the red cloak uses Taoist magic to control people. Lin Fan recognizes Master Tian in the stranger, and he begins to understand the reasons for the abnormal behavior of the ball on the playing field. Lin Fan carefully peers into the faces of the players of the American team. A complete picture of what is happening begins to emerge in front of him. The guy comes to the conclusion that there is an insidious conspiracy in the game. The American team planned everything in advance. May suffered a serious injury when a moonsault hit her leg, and her continued participation in the game is in doubt. Lin Fan is going to help the girl with his secret acupuncture technique. He carefully removes the shoe from May's injured foot and asks her not to worry. Lin Fan performs a healing massage to relax tendons and muscles. Having knowledge of secret acupuncture points, the guy intends to quickly get the girl's leg in order. May reacts strongly to the magical influence of Lin Fan. She experiences a change in consciousness, accompanied by visions. The girl is punished by her father because she treated her brother roughly and even scratched him. She is forbidden to take toys away from her brother, otherwise she will face severe punishment. The head of the Xiao family wanted a boy to be born as his second child, but a girl was born and he blames his wife for this. Mr. Xiao is going to transfer his business empire to his son. He considers his daughter a useless burden. Brother May, taking advantage of the situation, mocks and mocks her in every possible way. The trauma May experienced in the past continues to affect her and accompanies her to this day. May's parents go into the room. May begins to realize the role of women in their family. The girl thinks that, having been born into the family of a successful entrepreneur, she has no prospects for an independent future. All the care and attention in the family is given to her brother. She feels left out. May realizes that if she leaves home, she will not get any property, so she decides to become more successful than her brother. She decides to become the best in sports, exams, and training, even though it won't be easy. May intends to always win, even if her opponents are stronger. She strives to prove to herself and the whole world her exclusivity. May is overcome by a strong wave of nostalgia, tears streaming down her face. When May comes to, she doesn't understand what happened or where she is. Lin Fan treats her injured leg. 
He believes that he did his job at the highest level, using the skill of a healer. The guy supports the girl and tells her that as long as she is next to him, they will definitely win. May became very emotional and could hardly contain her emotions. With the help of willpower, the girl tries to take control of her feelings and prevent hysteria. May imagines Lin Fan as a great master, attacking the enemy as if he were a fierce dragon. Charles appears in her eyes as a representative of the evil clan of Ice Turtles. May's leg is completely fine. She can continue to participate in the game. The guy looks at May carefully. The girl is in a great mood. She is in good physical shape, and the pain in her leg does not bother her. Lin Fan and May return to the playing field. They are about to launch a counterattack. Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend reacts strongly to his concern for May, her mind filled with envy. Bay informs Lin Fan that she allegedly has an injured hand, which prevents her from taking hits from the American team. Lin Fan tells her that there is nothing to worry about, since he will reflect all the blows himself. The American team attacks again using the giant whale technique. Bay successfully reflects the opponent's ball, but looks extremely tired. The Americans are hoping for a quick victory. It seems to them that the strength of the Chinese team is running out. If May's team fails to win the right to serve, then they will not be able to withstand the next blow. Lin Fan strives to take an advantageous position. Charles can control the trajectory of the ball and the force of the shot, but he thinks that this is not enough to win. May is bothered by the fact that opponents use magical abilities in the game, and she asks Lin Fan what to do next. The guy considers himself the strongest attacker. He is ready to lead the team to victory. Lin Fan and May approach the ball in order to repel the opponent's attack. The fans are very emotionally supporting the Chinese team in this important match. They are shouting loudly from the stands. The commentators lose their calm and demand an effective counterattack from the guy. May uses the Flying Hermit's defensive maneuver, honed over the years, and the enemy's serve is reflected. May demonstrates his superb skill as a defender, spinning the ball at incredible speed. Lin Fan watches with delight the complex trajectory of his flight. Master Tian is not confident in Charles' ability to fend off such a blow, so he uses his magic to help the American team. Energy discharges run through Lin Fan's body. He realizes that he is again unable to move. The guy uses his superpowers received from the system to break the energy shackles. Master Tian is surprised by the guy's ability to resist his powerful magic. The players of the American team are in despair. They understand that even magic cannot help them achieve victory. Lin Fan uses the points obtained from the system to enhance his supernatural power. Jumping very high, the guy hits the ball with colossal force. The American team uses a double defense method to counter the guy's serve. This does not help the Americans. The ball penetrates through their double defense at great speed. May feels great joy knowing that the Chinese team is close to victory. Master Tian does not lose hope. He concentrates all his magical energy to suppress the will of the Chinese players. Charles receives an energy boost that greatly increases the level of his superpowers. He hits the ball, but the ball suddenly begins to be pulled towards him instead of flying away. The ball hits Charles again and again. The player tries to block it, but this does not bring success. The players are very surprised and carefully watch the unusual trajectory of the ball. Charles is attacked with magic. He cannot stay on his feet and flies out of the playing field. The main defender of the American team lies defeated on the ground. He is trying to come to his senses and gather his strength. May tells Lin Fan that he cannot believe his fantastic strike, which Charles could not resist. Charles is a little puzzled by Lin Fan's use of magical superpowers in the game. The guy's capabilities make Master Tian tense. He thinks that the guy poses a serious problem for him. Charles accepts the challenge posed by Lin Fan and is ready to fight with his full strength. Charles decides to use all his experience and skills to defeat Lin Fan. Once again, the main defender of the American team is unable to counter Lin Fan's serve. Charles tries to dodge the ball, which is constantly chasing him. Again and again, the ball hits Charles, his superpowers of the sphere of acceptance playing a cruel joke on him. Master Tian tries to stop Lin Fan's magic, but it proves much more difficult than ever before. Lin Fan sends passes to Charles again and again. The ball is magnetic to the main defender of the American team. Charles is doomed. Losing consciousness, Charles falls to the ground. He no longer has the strength to resist powerful attacks. The American team players do not intend to miss goals from the May team. They will use Charles for this purpose. The Americans return Lin Fan's serve with the help of Charles's lifeless body. 
A strategic bomber drops ammunition on an enemy target. Two soldiers contact headquarters by radio and are given the order to hold their positions and withstand the brutal bombardment. The Americans fend off the most powerful blows of the Chinese team with Charles's body. The ball breaks through the roof of the sports arena and rushes into the sky at incredible speed. May runs up to Lin Fan, she hugs him and thanks him for the victory over the American team. Master Tian stands in the center of the joyful crowd. He is dissatisfied with himself and the result of the game. Master Tian is not going to fulfill the 10-day agreement. He intends to get down to business immediately. May decides to invite Lin Fan to her house for a family dinner to celebrate her team's victory. The fans leave their stands and run onto the playing field to thank Lin Fan for the victory. The guy's classmates shower him with compliments and words of gratitude. Suddenly, May runs up to Lin Fan. She, experiencing uncontrollable joy, hugs him. The victory in this international tournament was extremely important for the girl. She is happier than ever in her life. Lin Fan's classmates are indignant and jealous that May invited the guy to dinner and shows him all sorts of attentions. The girl calls them all losers and demands that they shut up immediately. Lin Fan thinks that it was not in vain that he participated in the game, since the system awarded him a huge number of points. The emotions of others only increase the number of points awarded by the system. Lin Fan's ex-girlfriend watches with envy and irritation. Bei decides under no circumstances to allow the relationship between Lin Fan and Mei to develop into high feelings. She takes a decisive step towards Lin Fan and Mei with the intention of destroying their relationship. Lin Fan and Mei are approached by a huge group of enthusiastic fans and journalists. The TV correspondent asks Lin Fan to talk about his feelings after he snatched victory from the American team. The guy does not have good speaking skills. His speech is incoherent and illogical. May asks Lin Fan to pull himself together and still say something intelligible to the reporter. The guy has never experienced such enormous attention to his person, dozens of journalists vying with each other to ask him for an interview. The main defender of the American team, Charles, is in the hospital recovering from the final game. The system gives Lin Fan a huge amount of points. He does not understand the reason for this. The guy asks the journalist if his interview is really being shown all over the world. Reporters ask Lin Fan to talk about his training methods that he uses to stay in such great shape. He tells the journalist that he is not going to answer this question. The reporter is very surprised by his answer. The reporters continue to pester the guy. One of them asks him about his plans for the future. Lin Fan admits that it was the first time in his life that he played volleyball, but he has ambitious plans to become a world champion in this and many other disciplines. Journalists come to the conclusion that they came across a guy with a slightly strange outlook on life. Lin Fan is asked if he wants to convey something or thank someone on the air. Lin Fan wants to thank his uncle and all the employees at his dumpling shop. He talks about where his uncle's dumpling shop is located, about the high level of service and the magical taste of the dishes. Lin Fan watches as the system awards him a large number of points. One of the journalists makes a remark to Lin Fan. May attacks him, demanding an apology. A man is trying to push through a dense crowd of journalists and fans. This is an English teacher from the university where Lin Fan studies. He informs Lin Fan that the rector of the university invites him to a conversation. The rector of the university congratulates Lin Fan and his team on their victory in the international volleyball match. Those present ask Lin Fan where the rest of the team is and why there are only two of them. The rector of the university suggests not to waste time and get down to business as soon as possible. Those present admire Lin Fan's level of English, as well as his athletic achievements. The rector of the university offers the guy to transfer to an elite military faculty. Lin Fan considers his offer. The guy is offered to pass a simple exam for admission to the military department. The teachers look at Lin Fan very carefully. They are waiting for his answer. The English teacher tells those present that the guy's knowledge allows him to teach this subject. The head of the university's veterinary department gives the guy very good recommendations. The third teacher in the office expresses her doubts. She believes that Lin Fan's level of knowledge and skill is greatly exaggerated. The head of the Faculty of Military Education, Muir, thoroughly studied Lin Fan's personal file. The guy tells Muir that the teacher's conclusions are objective. He has had a great desire for learning since childhood. The English teacher asks that you be polite and respectful when interacting with Muir. The head of the military education department considers Lin Fan an uneducated upstart. Lin Fan tries to contain his rage. The English teacher calms him down. 
Li Fan says that he does not intend to listen to criticism addressed to him, which is not supported by anything. The guy is outraged that Muir does not value the opinions of his favorite teachers. Muir says that her faculty has nothing to do with people with bad character and lack of respect for elders. The guy declares that he does not have the slightest desire to study at the military faculty of the university. Muir says that the reason is that the guy simply will not be able to pass the entrance exam to her faculty. May asks Muir not to get excited and give the guy the opportunity to enter the military department. May tells Muir that her father is a member of the university board, and two teachers are not against the guy entering the military department. Muir tells those present that as long as she is the head of the department, it does not matter how many votes anyone has. Lin Fan appreciates the violent temper and complex character of the military faculty teacher. Muir allows the guy to try to pass the entrance exam, but she is sure that he will not be able to pass it. Muir tells those around him that he will be happy to see Lin Fan fail the exam and leaves the office. The university president believes that Lin Fan has an innate ability to create conflict situations. Lin Fan and May slowly stroll through a beautiful garden filled with the scent of cherry blossoms. Somewhere in the distance, Brittany is crying because of the lost final. Classmate Lin Fan is trying to console the defender of the American team. The sun slowly sets behind the horizon. The wind plays with the leaves of the trees. May and Lin Fan go into the sunset. Lin Fan's classmate and his friend are watching May and Lin Fan, wondering how serious their relationship is. The guy feels embarrassed because of the attention that May pays to him. He does not understand why she follows him everywhere. Lin Fan thinks that May is the second most beautiful girl in his university, and her charm affects him. May thinks Lin Fan is a good guy. She likes him very much. She hopes for mutual feelings. May apologizes to the guy for dragging him into a difficult situation. Lin Fan does not understand what he is talking about. May says that now the guy will have to confront the teacher of the military department. Lin Fan, a classmate who is partial to May, becomes extremely furious when he overhears their conversation. Lin Fan's classmate suffers greatly due to his unrequited love. His friend is unable to console him. May is interested in Lin Fan's opinion about his further studies at the military faculty. The guy pays attention to someone's loud crying. May invites the guy to her home for dinner as a sign of gratitude for his noble deed. The guy refuses. He tells the girl that he feels bad today and offers to have dinner sometime next time. Lin Fan thinks that going to visit May after he destroyed her family's underground fights and KTG office might be a rash thing to do. Master Tian appeared at the competition before the 10-day deadline. Li Fan cannot understand the reason for such an early visit. The guy remembers the incident with Master Tian. He doesn't understand why he needs a map of the dragon's territory. Lin Fan believes that Elder Zhao's support is very important to him in the current situation. May reminds the guy that she will not forget his promise to visit her one day. Their conversation is interrupted by a huge black limousine approaching, which worries the girl a little. The window of the limousine opens. The driver looks out, and he informs Lin Fan that the chairman wants to see him immediately. The guy agrees. He sits in the back seat of a luxury car and says goodbye to May. May waves goodbye to him. The limo slowly drives away. The crimson sunset floods the street. The girl raises the alarm. She does not understand what organization the chairman who called Lin Fan to himself belongs to. A black limousine rushes along the night highway at great speed. Looking out the window, Lin Fan is absorbed in his thoughts, watching the scenery fly past him. Suddenly a system appears that tells the guy that May looks young and attractive. The guy is perplexed that the system started a conversation on such topics, interrupting his thoughts about the fate of his missing father. The guy remembers that during the battle with policeman Chen, he told him mysterious stories that could reveal the mystery of his father's disappearance. Lin Fan asks the system to answer the question of where the Dragon Territory map is now. Searching for information in the system database does not give the desired result. The guy is upset by the fact that the location of the map of the Dragon's Territory is highly classified. Lin Fan believes that his father's disappearance is somehow related to this card. The guy remembers that before disappearing, Manager Liu asked him to say hello to the system. The system informs the guy that the Manager Liu cannot know about her existence. All attempts by the system to find information about the Manager Liu and scan her combat skills end in failure. The guy comes to the clear conclusion that everything is connected with the map of the dragon's territory. He wants to quickly contact Elder Zhao to get answers to his questions.
Lin Fan has 300,000 points on his system balance, and he is thinking about how to manage them. His thoughts are interrupted by Master Tian, who has caught up with their car. He is riding a bicycle at great speed and says hello to the guy with a grin. Master Tian is trying to stop a limousine that is speeding. Curses from Lin Fan and the system fly towards Master Tian. They are full of rage. Lin Fan begins to throw violently around the cabin in a state of shock. He does not understand what is happening. Master Tian, using the magic of energy lines, turns over a moving limousine. The limousine flies through the air and crashes to the ground, breaking through the road surface. Master Tian rejoices in the fact that he can deal with the guy while he is left alone without the protection of Elder Zhao or the walls of the university. Master Tian invites the guy to immediately tell him where the map of the dragon's territory is kept. Otherwise, he promises to destroy it. Suddenly, Lin Fan, using his superpowers, appears behind Master Tian and prepares to strike him. For Master Tian, the guy's use of new combat skills comes as a surprise. He is very surprised. As a matter of urgency, the system adds Lin Fan a new boxing skill to his supernatural strength. Master Tian, using Taoist magic, activates an energy shield to protect against the guy's attack. Few people dare to challenge Master Tian like this, and a battle to the death begins. Master Tian realizes the real threat posed by the guy, realizing that defeating him will not be an easy walk. Lin Fan was severely injured after the accident and found it difficult to stand on his feet and continue fighting. The guy, looking at the broken limousine, decides to use the system points to buy healing. Lin Fan cannot remain indifferent to the driver. He also buys healing for him from the system. The system deducts 200,000 points for healing Lin Fan and his driver. Realizing that there is no way to deal with the guy in a fair fight, Master Tian resorts to his true strength. A mysterious stranger appears in the night sky, using jet boots, knives levitating around her and emitting the breath of death. The teacher of the Muir military faculty severely punishes the offending student. Xiao deeply regrets that he was absent from the volleyball match without a valid reason. Lin Fan provokes Master Tian, telling him that he has the map of the dragon's territory and he is not going to part with it. Master Tian demands to immediately give him the card. He concentrates the energy ball in his hands. Lin Fan is confident that it is time to put an end to attempts to use Taoist magic to manipulate him, and he charges into the attack with furious fury. Master Tian looks at the guy arrogantly, preparing to use his secret trump card. The night is illuminated by a bright flash of light. Strong thunder breaks the night's silence. A huge three-meter combat robot appears from the darkness of the night and claims to know the guy. The robot tries to grab Lin Fan with its huge metal hands. The guy, realizing the impossibility of blocking the grab, tries to run away. Lin Fan realizes that he must under no circumstances miss the robot's blow, as its enormous physical strength can lead to a quick end to the fight. The guy knows the robot's weaknesses and decides to hit him on the head. Thanks to the upgraded skills received from the system, the guy manages to successfully resist the metal giant. Lin Fan breaks the robot's protective helmet and sees a familiar face behind it. He recognizes who is hiding behind a huge metal cybernetic organism. The William University martial arts teacher says hello to the guy with a smile on his face, his face taking on a demonic look. The opponents meet their gazes. Lin Fan wonders why the teacher took such a step. The guy thinks that hiring Professor William for such a job is very mean of Master Tian. Professor William tells Lin Fan that he hates him for his public humiliation in the ring and subsequent dismissal from the university. The high-tech armor not only protects Professor William and makes him stronger, but also has the ability to resist a secret acupuncture technique. The guy laughs loudly and tells William that he managed to press the acupuncture point on his forehead during his attack. Master Tian is very disappointed. He believes that his subordinates are complete idiots. Professor William lies prostrate on the ground, unable to control the combat manipulators. A loud sound comes from behind the guy, causing him to turn around and see what it is. Singlong, clad in huge metal armor, looks at him with a blazing gaze full of rage. The stranger, floating in the air, watches what is happening very carefully. Lin Fan recalls that they were all his opponents, whom he defeated in past fights. The guy is embarrassed by the fact that he did not immediately realize this. In recent days, he had an eventful life. He is interested in the appearance of his former opponents and the reasons why they began to work for Master Tian. 
Master Tian tells the guy that his organization has a rule according to which employees who fail a mission are transferred to him for Taoist experiments. Thanks to Master Tian's magical abilities, combat capabilities can quickly evolve. The strength of Lin Fan's opponents is multiplied tens of times. Their capabilities are colossal. With tremendous force, Singlong grabs the guy with his metal manipulators. Lin Fan makes incredible efforts to free himself from the grip. The levitating warrior girl is called Bai Hu, and from above she watches the ongoing battle. The guy uses all his skills acquired from the system, but he fails to cope with the capture of Singlong. Bai Hu throws a swarm of deadly knives in the direction of the guy. With a whistle they cut through the space, approaching Lin Fan. Lin Fan notices the knives coming towards him, but he is unable to react as he is in a steel grip. The guy's concentration is at its limit. He needs to repel this deadly attack. With incredible efforts, the guy manages to dodge the knives flying at him. Singlong's grip does not weaken. Lin Fan is aware of the danger and bloodthirstiness of his opponents, and he understands the critical consequences if he misses an attack. Master Tian believes that the guy has very little time left, since superiority and strength and luck are on his side. The system tells the guy that the only way out is to retreat. Lin Fan shields himself from the swarm of deadly knives flying at him with his singlong manipulator hand. Bai Hu begins to doubt her fighting skills as none of her blades hit the target. Lin Fan frees himself from the metal shackles of singlong. He thinks that the system helped him with this. The guy activates secret acupuncture points on his body in order to improve his combat level. The changes are not long in coming, Lin Fan feels an improvement in his fighting skills. With new strength, he continues the battle, focusing on using the superpowers provided by the system. The guy unleashes an energy blast of colossal force on Singlong, piercing his metal armor with an electric discharge and disabling it. The system praises the guy for his determination and enormous courage in a battle with superior enemy forces. Lin Fan remembers that he has a sufficient number of system points that he can use in battle. The guy informs the system of his intention to purchase a spring mushroom from it. He stands opposite his opponents, holding a spring mushroom in his hands, his face expressing confidence in a quick victory. The head of the rapid response team, Tenlin, tells the girls about magical dumplings that can change their lives. Spring Mushroom insists that Lin Fan not eat it, warning of the possible consequences. The guy understands that eating a spring mushroom is very difficult, but he realizes that this is his only chance to win. Lin Fan closes his eyes, intending to eat the spring mushroom and hears the song he sings. Suddenly the song of the mushroom is interrupted. The mushroom turns around, something attracted his attention. By whose deadly blades fly just a few centimeters away from Lin Fan. This greatly frightened the mushroom. Mushroom is very upset, he begins to cry, dissatisfied with the fact that he got into such trouble. Baihu quickly runs up to the mushroom couple and snatches the mushroom from the guy's hands. Lin Fan stands motionless, stunned by the girl's lightning speed. He didn't even realize the loss of the mushroom. Baihu realizes the fantastic possibilities of the spring mushroom and plans to eat it. Wary and apprehensive, the girl slowly brings the spring mushroom to her mouth. Having closed her eyes, she begins to leisurely eat a spring mushroom. Lin Fan and the system dissuade her from eating the spring mushroom, warning her of unpredictable consequences. Master Tian notices that Bai Hu snatched something from the guy's hands, but he has no idea what it is. Bai Hu is in the center of an energy vortex. Bright light and lightning discharges illuminate the space around her. Bai Hu, with the help of her jet boots, soars into the air. She hovers a few meters from the ground and freezes in a motionless state. Lin Fan is curious about what will happen if someone eats a spring mushroom without the system's support. He invites the girl to use her internal energy to force the mushroom to leave her body. Sing Long sneaks up on Lin Fan unnoticed from behind. The guy notices the presence of Sing Long. He is surprised at how quickly he recovered after being exposed to a powerful energy discharge. Sing Long, overwhelmed by a thirst for revenge, furiously rushes at the guy, his eyes sparkling with hatred. Lin Fan realizes that Sing Long is significantly stronger than him, especially compared to his second skill. Fortunately, the enemy is slow to act. Lin Fan, using his speed advantage, decides to attack Sing Long from above. The enemy realizes his intention and meets the guy with a huge metal fist. Lin Fan almost manages to reach the weak spot in the Sing Long armored suit. Master Tian sees the guy's intention and uses the Taoist technique of controlling the body from a distance. 
Lin Fan's hands are bound by energy lines and he loses control over his body. Anger and despair fill the guy. He, using his superpowers, tries to break the magical knots. Sing Long notices Lin Fan's temporary loss of combat capability and plans to use this advantage to destroy him. The guy, remaining calm, holds back the multi-ton leg of the Sing Long armored suit. Master Tian is confident that without the help of his Taoist magic, Lin Fan can easily deal with Sing Long. He offers to save the guy's life in exchange for a map of the dragon's territory. Lin Fan is extremely surprised by the fact that such a powerful magician like Master Tian still does not know that Lin Fan does not have information about the location of the dragon territory map. Master Tian turns on the Sing Long armored suit to maximum power. Sing Long activates the jet boosters to crush the guy. Lin Fan, holding back the enemy's pressure with all his strength, begins to count down the seconds. Master Tian smiles mysteriously, believing that the guy is counting down the seconds until his death. Sing Long, in the heat of battle, does not notice how an incomprehensible object flies at his head. Sing Long gets a cup of hot magic dumplings on his head, instantly incapacitating him. Master Tian looks around in fear. He does not understand who could be involved in the teleportation of the cup of magic dumplings. Lin Fan, taking advantage of the moment, frees himself from Sing Long's grip and rolls to take a more advantageous position. The system praises the guy for his resourcefulness and intelligence. Lin Fan himself believes that this time he was just lucky. Jumping high into the air, the guy is about to throw a series of Sing Long punches. Lin Fan intends to expand his list of combat skills using the system. Sing Long, incapacitated by a cup of magic dumplings, is ordered by Master Tian to pull himself together and calm down. Sing Long cannot get rid of the cup of hot dumplings chained to his head. In this state, he is unable to continue fighting. Lin Fan uses this situation to his advantage by activating the fifth level of boxing combined with supernatural power. Master Tian is stunned by the guy's incredible abilities. It remains a mystery to him how Lin Fan was able to achieve such a high level of skill in a short time. Lin Fan breaks Sing Long's metal armor into pieces. The armor pieces scatter in different directions for tens of meters. The guy pays special attention to the combat armor glove of the Sing Long suit. He thinks that he has already seen it somewhere. Lin Fan remembered that he had already dealt with a similar glove. This product was designed by the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. The guy asks the defeated Sing Long where he got these gloves from. Master Tian laughs loudly and praises the guy for his attention to small details. Master Tian confirms Lin Fan's guess that the armor of his fighters is the invention of Elder Zhao's group. The guy asks Master Tian how he was able to gain access to the inventions. Taking advantage of the fact that Lin Fan was distracted by a conversation with Master Tang, Bai Hu throws a blade at the guy. Bai Hu is confident that this time she will definitely not miss. Having noticed the girl's attack in time, the guy manages to react. He is surprised how he could forget about her presence. In order to invite Lin Fan to visit her, Mei must obtain permission from her father. Mei tells her father that she won the world championship today and asks permission to invite her friend to dinner. The head of the Xiao family rudely responds to Mei, refusing her request and ordering her to shut up. Mei hears a lively conversation in the next room. She intends to join the conversation. The Xiao family has gathered in full force and is talking to a man sitting comfortably on the sofa opposite them. A man named Sai notices Mei and is distracted from his thoughts. He is a crisis manager in the Xiao family. Uncle Lin Fan happily counts his profits and rejoices at today's record in dumpling sales. Xiao begins to tell Tsai unpleasant things about his sister. Tsai rudely interrupts his story. Mei and her father are indignant at Tsai's rude reaction. The crisis manager tells the Xiao family that he has been doing all the dirty work for years, and now they are obliged to pay him billions of dollars for his work. The third son of the Xiao family, Tsun, asks the crisis manager not to escalate the situation and to discuss all the disagreements that have arisen in a calm atmosphere. He invites him to go into the room and make sure that there is a masterpiece worth tens of billions of dollars there. The crisis manager enters the room. Tsun closes the door behind him. Those around him are surprised by his actions. Curses and threats from Sai are heard from behind the closed door. He intends to break down the door and severely punish everyone. Something strange is happening behind the door. Loud screams and howls are heard. Thick black smoke is pouring out of the room. The noise stops. An oppressive silence sets in. Those around you carefully look at the door. The crisis manager hits the door with his head. 
muttering something incomprehensible and incoherent. Mei and her father are outraged by Tsun's action. They ask him about what might be happening behind the door. Tsun tells them that now he will independently manage the affairs of the family and does not need the help of a crisis manager. The battle continues. Lin Fan deftly dodges the blade flying at him. Bai Hu fires dozens of knives at the guy in the hope that at least one of them will reach the target. Discharges of magical energy illuminate the space around her, and demonic laughter is heard. The guy miraculously escapes from another Bai Hu attack. Deadly blades pierce the ground millimeters from him. Lin Fan is immobilized. Bai Hu approaches him to deliver the final decisive blow. The guy is struggling to hold back Bai Hu's hand, which is aiming the blade at him. Lin Fan doubts the girl's appropriate behavior, since during the fight she showers him with compliments and talks about his attractiveness. The system informs Lin Fan that Bai Hu's strange behavior is a consequence of her eating spring mushroom. A mushroom, when eaten by a person, causes the human brain to produce various hormones. The spring mushroom is able to direct its effect to the area of the brain that is responsible for the chosen talent or ability. Without control from the system, the spring mushroom can cause a hormonal explosion, leading to an intense thirst for love. Bai Hu tells the guy that she loves him very much, and at the same time has a great desire to destroy him. The system informs the guy that a quick change in the girl's feelings is impossible. At the moment in the girl's eyes, Lin Fan appears as a charming, handsome man who is impossible to resist. Bai Hu is satisfied with her current state. She wants to continue the battle, under the influence of romantic feelings. The guy uses proven methods to get the girl out of the influence of the spring mushroom. Lin Fan realizes that he still cannot move freely and use his strength. Master Tian watches the battle with great interest and films what is happening on his phone. He tells the guy that he now has an excellent tool for blackmail. Lin Fan realizes how important the fight recording is for his future relationship with Elder Zhao's niece. Master Tian informs Lin Fan that family relationships in the Zhao clan are much more complex and deeper than he assumes. Master Tian begins to tell Lin Fan the story of his youth. A university teacher describes young Master Tian as an elegant and kind young man with great promise in studying martial arts. The university teacher knows about young Master Tian's feelings towards Zhao's niece. He tells the girl that he sincerely wishes her happiness in her personal life. Elder Zhao's niece looks at young Tian with curiosity, seeing him as something unusual rather than unpleasant. The stands are full of spectators. They loudly chant speeches, shout enthusiastically, and whistle in support. Master Tian uses his talent to defeat his enemies. He can easily lift his opponent into the air. Using his unique skill, he spins a helpless opponent in the air. Master Tian then throws the defeated opponent to the ground. The university teacher tells Elder Zhao's niece that Tian has great promise and is quite experienced in martial arts. Master Tian accepts congratulations for his victory from grateful spectators. He is elegant and well-mannered, but his slight excess weight spoils his appearance. Master Tian is not an idol or an object of veneration for Elder Zhao's niece. Indignant girls gathered on the site near the house, they express their dissatisfaction with what is happening. A university teacher uses magic to stop a criminal stealing underwear. Surprisingly, the culprit turned out to be Master Tian, which shocked all his friends and classmates. Master Tian was expelled from the university for stealing students' underwear. Having gone from proud disciples to malicious criminals, Master Tian cries, dissolving in deep sadness. Years passed, he lost weight, got into good shape, and changed his name. The guy overhears Elder Zhao's conversation, which says that Tian and the elder's granddaughter are relatives. The prospects for further personal life for Master Tian are completely destroyed. Elder Zhao is his relative. The guy is in a state of deep despair. He receives an offer of cooperation from the Xiao family group. Master Tian experiences great disappointment, realizing that his dreams are unattainable. His soul is filled with sorrow and disappointment. His hopes for a happy life were dashed. By pressing a button on his belt, Bai Hu activates his jet boots. With the help of jet propulsion, she instantly finds herself behind Lin Fan. The guy is surprised by the unexpected successful maneuver of Bai Hu. The girl is preparing to strike. Accompanying his attack with a shrill battle cry, Bai Hu brings his fist down on Lin Fan's head. The guy draws attention to the design features of the Bai Hu combat glove. A blow of incredible force falls on the guy's head. The girl is confident in her victory. Incredibly, the guy managed to repel Baihu's attack and reliably blocks the girl. 
Lin Fan quietly activates the secret acupuncture point on Bai Hu's head. The guy uses acupuncture points on the seventh meridian, which are intended to treat mentally ill people. The therapy has a beneficial effect on Bai Hu. She loses consciousness. The guy hopes that she will soon come to her senses and get out of the influence of the mushroom. Lin Fan feels the presence of some foreign liquid on the back of his head. The guy cannot understand how this incomprehensible protoplasm ended up on his neck. Master Tian is perplexed at how easily the guy managed to defeat Singlong and Bai Hu. Master Tian deduces that Elder Zhao appointed Lin Fan as his son-in-law because of his excellent fighting skills. Using Taoist magical powers, Master Tian propels his bicycle and lifts it into the air. The bicycle floats in the air. It begins to disintegrate into its component parts. The wheels separate from the bicycle and burst into flames. The voice of Master Tian is heard, saying that he has no choice. Master Tian activates the deadly Taoist fire skill. He sends a fiery energy clot towards the guy, interrupting the silence of the night with his loud laugh. Lin Fan, using his speed skill, deftly dodges a burning bicycle wheel flying at him. Singlong continues his unsuccessful attempts to free himself from the cup of magic dumplings. He runs chaotically along the road, waving his huge manipulators at the armor of his suit in all directions and screaming loudly. A burning bicycle wheel flying at Lin Fan cuts the Singlong suit's armor in half. Lafan is outraged by Master Tian's cruelty, having just witnessed Master Tian ruthlessly sacrificing his warrior to achieve his goals. What surprises Lin Fan is how easily the burning bicycle wheels cut Singlong's armored armor in half. Two fiery wheels make a circle around the guy floating in the air and at the same time begin to approach him. With superhuman agility, Lin Fan dodges both burning wheels while avoiding the blows. The burning bicycle wheels attack the guy again and again, creating a real threat to his life. Lin Fan requires the system to immediately exchange his points for a skill that can be used to counter the fire wheels. A magic pole appears in the guy's hands. Its power allows him to restrain the Taoist magic of Master Tian. The guy with dexterity throws the fiery wheels several tens of meters away from himself. Despite this, Master Tian is not going to give up and prepares for the next attack, spinning his fiery wheels for a throw. The guy stands in a stable stance. He is confident in his defense. He has a reliable weapon in the form of a pole. Master Tian sends out another fiery wheel, which approaches the guy at an extremely high speed. The level of his Taoist battle magic is quite high, but this is not enough to defeat Lin Fan. Master Tian wonders where Lin Fan got a fighting pole that effectively protects him from magical attacks. Lin Fan jokes with Master Tian and tells him that he has a small magic bag. Master Tian once again invites the guy to voluntarily tell everything in order to save his life. He unleashes the full power of fiery bicycle wheels charged with Taoist magic on Lin Fan. Master Tian intends to either get the information he needs or turn the guy into ashes. With surprise, Master Tian discovers the disappearance of the guy. He examines the surrounding area in search of him. Master Tian is surprised that the guy disappeared. He admires Lin Fan's skillful use of magic. His thoughts are interrupted by a strong, unexpected blow to the back, which throws him far to the side. Master Tian is very confused and desperate because he cannot detect the enemy. Lin Fan sneaks up on him using the camouflage skill he received from the system. He gives Master Tian another tangible blow with his magic pole. Master Tian retreats. He has no choice but to use the forbidden techniques of Taoist magic. He concentrates energy lines around himself, preparing to attack, with a huge red cape fluttering behind him. Lin Fan quickly approaches to deliver the next blow, wondering how long Master Tian can hold out. Master Tian wants to know where the guy gets his magical power from and what its nature is. Lin Fan still remains invisible. Master Tian strives to find a way to counter the guy's invisibility skill by any means necessary. It seems that Master Tian has found a solution to this problem. He concentrates the energy field in his hand. Using an energy grid, he envelops Bai Hu's body, intending to control her from a distance. Master Tian lifts it high into the air to bring it down on Lin Fan's attacker. The guy is outraged by the cruelty of Master Tian. He feels sympathy for Bai Hu. Using the full power of Taoist fire magic, Master Tian directs Bai Hu at Lin Fan. The guy and the system are outraged by the use of Bai Hu's unconscious body as a weapon. Lin Fan is seriously injured. The invisibility clothing cannot disguise him and a bloodthirsty smile appears on Master Tian's face. 
The system informs the guy that using the invisibility skill no longer makes sense. Two burning bicycle wheels appear in the sky, heading towards Lin Fan. Using the last remaining strength, the guy tries to parry the blow. Master Tian considers the guy's resistance useless and hopes that he will not be able to cope with this attack. A huge explosion occurs in the sky. A bright light illuminates the entire area. Master Tian's insidious plans were crowned with success. Lin Fan, struck by the blow, falls down. Master Tian experiences great joy from his victory and thinks that the reason for the guy's invisibility is the new technologies of the Zhao family. The guy lies exhausted on the ground. He believes that Master Tian belongs to the Cultivator Clan. Master Tian invites Lin Fan to reveal the location of the Dragon Territory map before dying. The guy is in a lot of pain. He is thinking about whether he has enough system points to heal. Master Tian uses the pressure of the moon hoop to loosen the guy's tongue. Bai Hu, lying next to the guy, tells him that now is the time to go on his last journey and become a real ghost. Master Tian believes that it is useless to mess with the guy. He is going to incinerate him. Lin Fan never ceases to be amazed at Master Tian's bloodthirstiness and unscrupulousness. Master Tian carefully examines the defeated enemy, his eyes shining with an icy light. He begins to tell the guy the story of Bai Hu many years ago on the orders of the organization. He burned down her house. All of her relatives were destroyed because they dared to pursue the organization. Master Tian and Sing Long, fascinated by Bai Hu's beauty, decided to let her live. The use of drugs and Taoist magic helped Master Tian brainwash Bai Hu and erase the past from her memory. Master Tian tells Lin Fan that Bai Hu has already failed twice, so he decided to cremate them both. Lin Fan feels deep hatred for Master Tian. He hugs the girl tightly to him. Master Tian finds this situation extremely romantic, and he softly hums a simple melody and raises the fire wheels into the air. Lin Fan hugs the girl close to him and holds the magic pole tightly in his hand, preparing to repel the attack. In the student dormitory, there is a heated discussion about the volleyball final between the American team and the university team. Lin Fan's classmates watch his interview with the TV channel with great interest, planning to add special effects to the video and publish it on social networks. Students discuss how creative Lin Fan's video was. Lin Fan's classmate stands on the balcony and enjoys watching Lin Fan's interview. Brittany slowly approaches him and asks him why he is still awake at such a late hour. Brittany is interested in what the guy is looking at on his phone. He asks her not to ask too many questions about his best friend. The guy invites Brittany to move on in life together. He is holding a phone in his hand, on which is a video with Lin Fan, which has gained a huge number of views. Lin Fan, using a magic pole, protects himself and the girl from the fiery wheels of Master Tian. The guy's balance in the system begins to replenish. He is surprised by the insignificant amount of points accrued. Previously, the guy had deposits to his account measured in hundreds and even thousands of units, but now the charges are made one point at a time. However, he is pleased that there are a lot of accruals for one point. Master Tian generates a huge stream of plasma and directs it towards Lin Fan. The contemplation of the flame burning human bones and flesh brings pleasure to Master Tian. Lin Fan decides to put an end to Master Tian's crazy antics. Master Tian did not expect to see the guy alive after the explosion of a huge ball of fiery plasma. Lin Fan and Bai Hu survived thanks to the recovery function provided by the system. Master Tian goes into a state of frantic rage. He does not understand how it was possible to survive after a huge explosion that could destroy the entire house. Lin Fan requests permission from the system to purchase one set of invisible clothing. The system requires the guy to confirm his request again. Lin Fan confirms the request and purchases two healing kits and invisible clothing. Master Tian did not have enough strength and skills to defeat Lin Fan. He plans to stay away to stay alive. Master Tian looks in a daze at the multi-ton limousine thrown at him by Lin Fan. Horror has frozen his muscles. He cannot move. He can only watch as a multi-ton piece of metal approaches. With the help of his magic cloak, Master Tian throws the car to the side. He almost lost control over what was happening. Master Tian activates a move known as the Firewheel's Phoenix Burst. Lin Fan, using visible clothing, sneaks up on the unsuspecting Master Tian from behind. He prevents Master Tian from activating the move and unleashes the full power of the Firewheels on him. To stay alive after the colossal explosion, Lin Fan activates his acquired healing functions. Master Tian, using his red magic cloak, jumps out from the epicenter of the explosion. 
His joy is interrupted by the realization that something is wrong. Master Tian is unable to escape from the battlefield as Lin Fan grabbed him by the cloak. The guy demands that Master Tian immediately return and continue the battle. Master Tian attempts to generate a protective energy shield around his body. Lin Fan does not give him the opportunity to do this. He delivers a sharp blow to him. Master Tian jumps to the side, surprised by the guy's skill and gigantic strength. Lin Fan, very angry with Master Tian, decides to acquire an additional level of supernatural power from the system. Master Tian is not going to give up, and using his battle magic, he opens the teleportation gate. He reaches into the open portal and pulls out an automatic weapon. The sound of a long burst of machine gun fire is heard in the night. Master Tian confidently walks towards Lin Fan. The guy doesn't know how to counter this weapon. His healing function ends after one minute. Master Tian continuously shoots indiscriminately at the guy. The guy cannot understand how he manages to remain invulnerable. Not a single bullet reached him. Master Tian is sincerely surprised by what is happening. His next plan to defeat the guy was not successful. The darkness is illuminated by bright flashes of light. A stranger who suddenly appears shields Lin Fan from bullets with his body. A mysterious stranger in white robes holds a huge sword behind his back. The machine gun in the hands of Master Tian turns into ice and begins to crumble into small pieces. Master Tian is in a state of great tension, with cold sweat running down his face. Lin Fan wonders who this strange person who can deflect bullets is. Master Tian begins to guess who this mysterious stranger might be. The mysterious stranger's name is Yu Long. He is one of the best sword masters. The guy is amazed at the meeting with the great sword master. He did not expect such a person to come to his aid. Lin Fan wonders if this master belongs to the real world. Yu Long always carries a sword with him, and his clothing style is very different from modern fashion. Master Tian is neutralized by Yu Long's magic and is securely imprisoned in a huge ice cube. Yu Long approaches Lin Fan and calls him by name. The guy is surprised that the sword master knows his name. Yulong tells Lin Fan that he is very similar to his best friend. The guy is nervous. It seems to him that he is starting to guess who his friend might be. Lin Fan asks Yulong if he knows any of his family or relatives. Yulong says that Lin Fan's father has been his best friend since time immemorial. The guy hopes to get answers to many of his questions from the Swordmaster, including where his father disappeared and whether it has anything to do with the map of Dragon Territory. Yulong tells Lin Fan that his father wants to make sure that he is on the right path. Lin Fan tries to remember if he has ever seen Swordmaster Yulong before. The Swordmaster invites the guy to become his student and immerse himself in the ancient secrets of fencing. If he agrees, Yulong promises to make the guy a Swordmaster of the highest level. The guy is fascinated by the idea of becoming one of the best fencers in the world. Yulong tells Lin Fan that this will not be an easy ride or fun. It will be a difficult path full of dangers. Lin Fan asks to give him time to think about the proposal. The system begins to award points to the guy. The Swordmaster is outraged that the guy is thinking about his decision for too long. Yulong argues for the need for training by saying that the guy needs to have his own skills. He cannot always be under the protection of the Zhao family. After some deliberation, Lin Fan agrees to begin training under the tutelage of Swordmaster Yulong. Lin Fan's main reason for training is not to improve his swordsmanship, but to find his father. Yulong tells the guy that first he needs to pass a test, which is given one week. Swordmaster Yulong flies up into the air and flakes of snow-white snow begin to fall on Lin Fan from above. The guy can't shake the feeling that he's met the Swordmaster Yulong somewhere before. His deep thoughts are interrupted by the bright light of an approaching car. Elder Zhao tells the guy that he sent a driver to pick him up. He wonders what Lin Fan is doing here. Lin Fan briefly tells Elder Zhao about the events that happened. Mei is in her room. Her hands are tied behind her back. She is screaming loudly. The girl says that she is tired of the illegal criminal actions of her family. The head of the Xiao family believes that he raised his daughter incorrectly. His son agrees with him. Soon decides to destroy the Zhao organization in order to rule the city alone. Lin Fan continues to tell Elder Zhao about his recent battle with Master Tian. Elder Zhao does not listen to the guy. He carefully examines Bai Hu lying on the seat. Elder Zhao breaks away from contemplating the girl and turns to the guy. He demands Lin Fan to immediately answer the question of whether he is a virgin. Elder Zhao tells Lin Fan that lately, he has been paying too much attention to girls, to the detriment of serious matters. The guy emotionally tries to justify his actions. He does not agree with the position of Elder Zhao. 
Lin Fan is worried about where his opponents got the Zhao family battle armor from. The guy decides to get to the truth at all costs and find a weak point in the security system of the Zhao family. Lin Fan doesn't understand how Wei's maid could gain access to the company's top secret developments. Elder Zhao decides to tell the guy what was on the flash drive stolen by Maid Wei. The development of the fifth generation ultra powerful combat processor is the flagship direction of the Zhao family company. Elder Zhao says that the protection of processor blueprints is at a high level, even with the use of special programs it cannot be bypassed. The armor protection of Elder Zhao's granddaughter suddenly flies away in an unknown direction and is not tracked by radar. Tsun is at a business conference and makes an official announcement that his company is launching a new product line soon. Elder Zhao believes that the Xiao family managed to crack the encryption system of the drawing and begins producing microprocessors. The guy is delighted with the capabilities of the new microprocessors. Elder Zhao tells him that he is only familiar with the basic commercial functions. The hidden functionality of processors has enormous capabilities that are inaccessible to understanding at this stage of human evolution. The Xiao family, driven by petty selfish interests, opened Pandora's box by deciphering the secret blueprints. Elder Zhao comes to the conclusion that he greatly underestimated the capabilities of the Xiao family. The guy doesn't know what to do in this situation. Elder Zhao tells him that he needs to immediately stop the production of microprocessors. A huge black limousine rushes at high speed along the night highway. The limousine driver stands next to Master Tian, who is in a huge cube of ice and looks at him carefully. Elder Zhao tells the limousine driver that they are in a hurry and asks him to stay put until the police arrive. The limousine driver is concerned that the police have not yet arrived at the scene. Master Tian, immobilized by the ice cube, remains conscious. He intends to lull the limousine driver's vigilance and free himself from the icy shackles before the police arrive. Classmate Lin Fan and Brittany are having fun, watching movies and eating pizza. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is unhappy that her grandfather brought Lin Fan to their home again. She believes that his antics in the women's restroom and using the KTG women to manipulate the dumplings are sufficient grounds to throw Lin Fan out of their house. Elder Zhao asks his granddaughter to calm down he explains to her that there are more serious problems than her personal grievances. Lin Fan asks Elder Zhao's granddaughter to show him a map of the dragon's territory, to which he receives a categorical refusal. The guy thinks it's unfair that the dragon territory map only belongs to Elder Zhao's family. Realizing that a simple request will not achieve results, Lin Fan decides to resort to alternative methods. He tells Elder Zhao's granddaughter that he is not the person she thinks he is, Elder Zhao's granddaughter begins to have doubts about the correctness of her opinion regarding Lin Fan. The guy asks Elder Zhao's granddaughter to believe him. He tells her that he is actually a good person. Suddenly, an unbearable pain pierces Lin Fan's body. He is unable to bear it. Lying on the floor, he recovers from a low blow. Elder Zhao's granddaughter tells him that his attempts at seduction are disgusting. Elder Zhao stands up for the guy, considering Lin Fan to be a respected young man who is not capable of bad deeds. A maid enters the room and asks Elder Zhao about what room to prepare for the girl Lin Fan brought. Elder Zhao shifts responsibility for what is happening to Lin Fan, since it was the guy's desire to bring Bai Hu to their house. Lin Fan feels deep dissatisfaction with Elder Zhao's position. Elder Zhao's granddaughter, hearing all this, goes into a state of violent rage, clenching her fists. She heads towards Lin Fan. The guy is sitting on the steps at the entrance to the house. He believes that his life is too difficult and unfair. The window of a convenience store illuminates the deserted street with its neon light. Lin Fan reflects that Elder Zhao's family underestimates his help and is too cruel to him. An unfamiliar girl hides behind a display window and carefully looks at the guy. The girl looks at Lin Fan, then at her phone, then at the guy, and again at her phone. Finally plucking up the courage, she timidly approaches Lin Fan and tries to talk to him. A girl asks a guy if he participated in an international volleyball tournament. She introduces herself as a big fan of volleyball and says that she watches all the competitions with the participation of the local team. Lin Fan, captivated by the girl's beauty, begins to worry and stutters as he tries to answer her. The girl approaches the guy and shows him the video on her phone. Lin Fan sees his interview, which was put on with special effects by his classmates. The video went viral and gained a huge number of views. 
Suddenly, Lin Fan realized the reason for the huge number of single points being awarded by the system. A large number of single points allowed the guy to acquire two healings and emerge victorious from the battle with Master Tian. The guy sees the number of likes on the phone screen. It corresponds to the amount of points awarded. Lin Fan intends to use this method in the future to replenish the account with more points. Lin Fan asks the girl to explain to him how to use the application installed on her phone. Despite the fact that the guy is new to the blog, the girl considers him very promising and offers to meet next week. The girl gives Lin Fan her business card. Their conversation is interrupted by a phone call. The stranger tells Lin Fan about the need to carry out urgent matters and says goodbye to the guy. Lin Fan follows the girl with her eyes. She leaves in the direction of her expensive car. The system informs the guy that a new urgent task has been received, which is to deactivate a bomb in a car. Lin Fan runs out into the street and shouts loudly, the guy must not allow the engine to start. The girl is sitting in the car. She watches in surprise as Lin Fan runs towards her. Not hearing the guy's warning, the girl inserts the key into the car's ignition. The guy is very excited. He sees the girl turn the key in the ignition. There is no explosion. Lin Fan and the girl look at each other in bewilderment. Passersby gather around, attracted by the guy's scream. Lin Fan is going to carefully inspect the car, and the first thing he does is crawl under the bottom of the car. He immediately draws attention to a small object located under the car. The bomb timer indicates that there are less than three minutes left before the explosion. Lin Fan reports that the car is mined and demands everyone to move to a safe distance. The reaction of others is not long in coming. Passersby run away in horror. The girl demands that Lin Fan eliminate the threat as quickly as possible. The guy nods his head to her in agreement. Lin Fan hears a very strange sound coming from the explosive device. With great curiosity, the guy looks under the car again. Lin Fan notices a very strange behavior of the bomb. The numbers on the timer do not correspond to real time. The girl is about to run away to a safe distance, but Lin Fan demands that she stay put. The girl follows Lin Fan's instructions and stops. Slowly, she turns towards the guy, not understanding his plan. Lin Fan carefully looks at the bomb timer and asks the girl to take a step back. The girl warily takes one step back. The guy's instructions confused her. She does not understand the meaning of her actions. The explosive device timer stopped the report. Lin Fan is trying to understand how this could be connected with the girl. Feeling enormous stress, he carefully watches the timer. The girl tells Lin Fan that she is very afraid and asks for permission to leave. The guy calms her down. Lin Fan comes to the conclusion that there is a strange sensor in the bomb. If the girl walks more than five steps, the car will explode. Fear paralyzes the girl. She begins to become hysterical. She can barely restrain herself so as not to take off and run away. Lin Fan considers themselves lucky as the timer has stopped and they have two and a half minutes. The girl in tears tells the guy that she is still too young to die. Lin Fan reassures her. He says that everything will be fine and gently strokes her head. The guy is determined to ensure that they both survive in this difficult situation. The system begins to award points to Lin Fan. The stranger realizes that no one except Lin Fan can help her at the moment. Lin Fan asks the girl to give him a toolbox. He intends not to wait for the police and disable the explosive device himself. The guy can't understand why the bomb didn't go off right away, but has such a strange sensor. Lin Fan decides to activate his skills using secret acupuncture points on his face. A bright flash momentarily blinds the guy and he is able to see through objects. Lin Fan additionally utilizes the techno genius and eye of perspective skills acquired from the system. Carefully and slowly, the guy unscrews the protective cover of the explosive device. He can barely restrain his hands from trembling. The girl looks at Lin Fan carefully, hoping that this nightmare will end soon. Lin Fan removes the protective cover of the device. He has almost reached the power supply of the explosive mechanism. Not everyone obeyed the guy's demands. Some brave souls are watching what is happening with interest. Lin Fan had very little time left to defuse the bomb. The preparatory work is done. All that remains is to block the most important mechanism. A skill called Perspective Eye points the guy to the right combination of wires. Lin Fan believes that he has found the main wire he's going to bite it. The crowd of onlookers is pushed aside by the commander of the Tenlin Rapid Response Team. She is furious that someone is trying to defuse the bomb on their own. The noise coming from the surrounding onlookers knocks the guy out of concentration, and the instrument falls out of his hands. 
He angrily shouts at onlookers, telling them that he almost got the wrong wire. Lin Fan is distracted from clearing minds. His attention is captured by the mesmerizing views. The guy misuses a skill called the Eye of Perspective. For a moment, he forgets about the explosive device. The car begins to vibrate, its wheels leave the ground, and it rises into the air. The girl, stunned by what is happening, looks at her car, which suddenly rose into the air. Brittany returns home to America. Classmate Lin Fan sees her off with tears in his eyes. The mystery of the car's magical lift into the air has been solved, and the operation to defuse the bomb continues. The angle of the car's ascent turned out to be too large, and the car fell on its side. The explosive device's timer has activated, with less than one minute left before the explosion. The distance between the girl and the explosive device has increased, and the situation begins to get out of control. The car is unsteady on its side. It can roll over at any moment, which can lead to an explosion. The guy is in a state of maximum tension. He looks carefully at the car. The girl stands motionless, her consciousness immersed in a whirlpool of fear that has paralyzed her body. Their attention is drawn to a huge insect slowly flying above them towards the car. The insect lands on a mined car. Its weight is enough to set the car in motion. A creaking sound is heard. The car slowly begins to roll over. Changing its position will lead to the immediate detonation of the explosive device. Feeling despair and realizing the hopelessness of the situation, the girl screams loudly. Lin Fan does not intend to give up. He concentrates as much as possible, activates the skills received from the system, and prepares for the decisive jump. A moment later, the guy finds himself near a car bomb. He hits it with a strong blow. The car approaches the girl with a loud grinding sound. The distance between them decreases, which leads to the temporary shutdown of the explosive device's timer. The girl's eyes widen in horror when she sees a multi-ton structure rushing straight at her. The explosive device's timer is temporarily disabled with less than a minute left before the explosion. Lin Fan's classmates are amazed by his physical capabilities. They do not understand how the guy was able to throw a car several meters with a blow. Lin Fan accuses the policeman that his screaming could have caused him to make a mistake that could have killed them. The head of the rapid response team, Tenlin, tells Lin Fan that he does not have the authority to defuse the explosive device himself. The girl asks to immediately stop the argument and start defusing the bomb. The guy tells the girl that there is no reason to worry and that now he will solve this problem. Lin Fan's dialogue with the girl is interrupted. The guy is grabbed by the arm and pulled back sharply. Lin Fan turns around. He is very outraged by such gestures towards him. Tenlin orders the guy to immediately step aside and wait for professional sappers to arrive. The guy tells the head of the rapid response team that there is less than a minute left. Tenlin, realizing that the sapper team will not have time to arrive in such a short time, decides to act independently. The head of the rapid response team continues to scold the guy for engaging in amateur activities, endangering his own life and the lives of others. Without specialized mind clearance skills, Tenlin must rely on her instincts. There is no confidence in her actions. She does not know which wire to cut, red or blue. Tenlin closes her eyes. She trusts her intuition and decides to cut the selected wire. Suddenly, her actions are interrupted. Someone takes her hand, preventing her from cutting the wire. Tenlin turns around sharply. She wants to see whoever has the audacity to interfere with her work. Lin Fan tells Tenlin that he is a candidate from the Wushu Education Department and knows a lot about bombs. Tenlin shoos the guy away and tells him to immediately realize the seriousness of the situation. Lin Fan acquires a new skill from the system called Gaze of the Abyss. Impressed by the guy's confidence, Tenlin allows him to defuse the explosive device. The girl tells Lin Fan that she is very scared and asks permission to hug him. Lin Fan, using the gaze of the abyss, scans the girl and gives his consent. The team stands in front of the explosive device. Lin Fan declares that he is ready to begin clearing the mines. Using the gaze of the abyss requires fine tuning. The unusual perception of objects confuses the guy. Focusing on the explosive device, Lin Fan sees the timer counting down to the last seconds. After some thought with trembling hands, the guy bites the red wire. The head of the rapid response team and the girl hope that the guy's choice is the right one. Lin Fan makes a loud sound simulating an explosion. The girls scream loudly in fear. The guy apologizes for scaring the girls. The system awards Lin Fan a large number of points. Tenlin thinks the guy's joke in this situation is idiotic and is very annoyed by his trick. The punishment for his stupid act does not take long to arrive. Tenlin unleashes his wrath on the guy. With a smile on her face, 
The girl expresses her gratitude to the guy for saving her and watches what is happening with interest. Lin Fan tries to fight off the head of the rapid response team while holding an explosive device. The guy doesn't hold the bomb tightly enough. It slips out of his hands. Tenlin, in horror, watches the explosive device fall and tries to prevent it from hitting the ground. After catching the explosive device, the head of the rapid response team scolds Lin Fan for his carelessness. By using the Abyss Gaze, Lin Fan learns shocking details. He was very focused on diffusing the explosive device and did not notice an important detail related to his new acquaintance. Lin Fan learns from his classmates that his new friend is a famous blogger and an idol for most students. The guy cannot come to terms with the fact that she is a man. Tanit finds it strange that the criminals installed a proximity sensor instead of simply detonating the bomb. Lin Fan is trying to understand what the point of using such a sensor is. Suddenly, the guy realizes that perhaps the criminals who planted the bomb are somewhere nearby. Using the abyssal gaze skill, Lin Fan begins to survey the nearby area. It scans the buildings around it and the people near them. A mysterious man located on the balcony of a neighboring building carefully watches the guy. Lin Fan turns on his abyss gaze skill to its maximum maximum power. Having the ability to see through objects, the guy notices that a stranger standing on the balcony has wires identical to those in the bomb. Lin Fan tells Tenlin that he has found the criminal and offers to arrest him immediately. The stranger jumps off the balcony and tries to escape. Lin Fan and Tenlin give chase. The head of the rapid response team orders the guy to stay put. Lin Fan refuses, and the two of them continue to pursue the criminal on a busy street. The head of the rapid response team orders the stranger to stop immediately. The stranger struggles to break away from the pursuit and turns into a narrow alley in the hope of hiding. Tenlin tells the stranger that he is surrounded and draws attention to an unusual object. A deadly flying disc is heading towards Lin Fan and Tenlin. Lin Fan pushes Tenlin aside, barely managing to dodge the deadly disc himself. The criminal does not intend to give up. He decides to destroy Lin Fan and Tenlin. The head of the rapid response team once again admits that Lin Fan was right. The stranger has a sign on his hand indicating that he belongs to a secret organization. Tenlin orders Lin Fan to remain silent and hide around the corner of the building. She thinks about how she can neutralize a criminal using a strange weapon. Tenlin pushes Lin Fan against the wall. She is convinced that action must be taken urgently since time is not on their side. The head of the rapid response team presses himself very tightly against the guy, which makes him a little nervous. Tenlin turns to Lin Fan. She is very angry about what is happening. Tenlin demands the guy to immediately step aside as his sword is resting on her. Deciding to attack the enemy, the head of the rapid response team activates an explosive device. With a deft throw, she throws a bomb towards a stranger standing around the corner. Brittany decided to bring her new friend to her home in America. A flying battle disc approaches Tenlin at great speed. Its destructive capabilities are enormous. It can easily cut huge concrete blocks in half. The stranger, using his combat disc, destroys the explosive device thrown at him by Tenlin. The head of the rapid response team is both surprised and angry at how easily the criminal was able to deal with the bomb she threw. She believes that it is necessary to call for reinforcements, since the strength to cope with the stranger is clearly not enough. Tenlin tells Lin Fan that he needs to pull himself together and control his sword. She radios to police headquarters to call for backup. Lin Fan believes that the tattoo on the stranger's arm is somehow related to the map of the dragon's territory. Tenlin thinks that the criminal is not a loner, but is a representative of a criminal organization. The tattoo on the hand of a criminal indicates his combat level. To capture such a martial artist, at least ten trained specialists are needed. The killer is preparing for another attack and intends to destroy Tenlin and Lin Fan with the help of his formidable weapon. Tenlin suggests that Lin Fan leave and save his life while he still has the chance. The commander of the rapid response squad faced a more dangerous and unpredictable enemy than those with whom she had previously dealt. The killer is surprised at how he was able to be found among hundreds of onlookers on the street. The battle disc flashing its deadly knives approaches Tenlin and Lin Fan standing next to her. The disc changes its trajectory, gains greater speed and falls on Tenlin. The girl takes out her service weapon and releases the clip into the killer's combat disc flying towards her. Tenlin quickly reloads the revolver and fires another clip in hopes of stopping the disc. Realizing that the disc has not suffered critical damage, she aims at the killer. The head of the rapid response team uses the skill of rapid fire. 
The combat disc reliably protects the killer, reflecting all bullets fired by Tenlin. The girl was amazed at the enemy's combat level. Not a single shot hit the target. The killer takes a knife from his coat pocket and with a sharp movement throws it at Tenlin. The killer's blade reaches its target. The head of the rapid response team drops the revolver from his hands. Struck by an enemy knife, Tenlin falls to the ground and is visited by thoughts of death. Killer tells Tenlin that giving chase was a very bad idea for her. The war disc quickly approaches Tenlin, its sharp knives making a high-pitched whistling sound. Lin Fan runs up to Tenlin, grabs her by the shoulders and throws her to the side to a safe distance. The guy amazingly dodges the killer's combat disc flying at him. Lin Fan slightly underestimated the power of the throw when he threw the girl aside from the combat disc flying towards her. The guy apologizes to the head of the rapid response squad for the inconvenience caused. The killer considers Lin Fan to be a fairly experienced and worthy opponent. The guy's courage inspires him with admiration. The killer spins his battle disc. He points it at Lin Fan with great speed. The guy activates his fighting skills and performs a series of breathtaking dodges to avoid the deadly weapon. The killer cannot believe that the guy has such a level of combat skill. Lin Fan approaches him and delivers a quick series of hard punches to the body. The killer goes for a knockdown. He asks the guy to tell him his name and the martial arts school to which he belongs. Lin Fan does not intend to waste time talking. He wants to neutralize the enemy as soon as possible. The killer cannot believe his loss. He always considered himself the strongest fighter in the city. Lin Fan finishes his attack with a series of precise and powerful strikes without giving the enemy a single chance of effective resistance. The killer no longer poses a threat. The system awards Lin Fan a large number of points. The guy is trying to find out from the killer the reasons why he wanted to blow up the car. The killer tells Lin Fan that he does not have an understanding of the whole picture of what is happening. He clarifies that he received an order and did not ask unnecessary questions. The guy does not believe in the sincerity and truthfulness of the killer's explanation. He believes that he is trying to mislead him. Lin Fan drags the defeated enemy by the leg, intending to hand him over to the police. The killer asks him not to do this and tells the guy that he has some information for him. Lin Fan realizes the correctness of his approach and wants to obtain information about the map of the dragon's territory. The killer tries to psychologically manipulate the guy, hoping to convince him to work for the Zhao family. The killer's speech puts Lin Fan into a state of intense anger, and the guy silences his opponent. The killer plaintively asks Lin Fan to stop and tells him that he has information about the map of the dragon's territory. The voice of a girl is heard asking Lin Fan if he is okay. The guy turns around and sees in front of him his new acquaintance, whose name is Ya Chun. The killer understands the importance of the moment. This is his last chance for salvation. He jumps to his feet with a sharp movement and quickly runs towards Ya Chun. The killer takes Ya Chun hostage, holding her tightly and holding a knife to her throat. He threatens to kill her. Jumping from balcony to balcony, the killer and the girl find themselves on the roof, and in the silence of the night his curses addressed to Lin Fan can be heard. The killer being on the roof shouts to Lin Fan that the guy will not receive information about the map of the dragon's territory. The killer reflects on how cleverly he used the situation to free himself from captivity. Ya Chun is pleased by the fact that the killer does not know who she really is. Ya Chun performs magical manipulations. A sparkling energy discharge appears on her palms. The killer sees sparks in Ya Chun's palms. His mind is filled with chilling horror. A powerful blow below the belt returns the killer to the existing reality. The killer experiences unbearable pain. He rolls his eyes and loses consciousness. Ya Chun is fascinated by Lin Fan's courage and courage, and the feeling of fear and anxiety leaves her. Lin Fan jumps off the roof, holding Ya Chun in his arms. The hitman's unconscious body flies down after them. There are bright lights in the windows of the building. Despite the dead of night, work continues at the police headquarters. Tenlin slowly fills out the protocol and asks Lin Fan how long he has known Ya Chun. The guy tells her that he met the girl today in the store and knows practically nothing about her. Tenlin doubts the veracity of the guy's answer. She does not believe that you can risk your life saving a stranger. Tenlin remembers how easily the guy threw her aside during the fight. She believes that the guy is not who he says he is. The head of the rapid response team cannot believe that such skills are available to an ordinary student. Lin Fan decides to share some of the information with Tenlin to clear himself of suspicion. 
The guy tells Tenlin that he cannot tell all the details since Master Yulong forbade him to do so. The head of the rapid response team falls into a state of indescribable joy. She is an ardent fan of Master Yulong. Lin Fan asks Tenlin to keep this information secret. She agrees to his request. The head of the rapid response team asks Yachun about the possible reasons for the attempt on her life. The girl thinks that it may be jealousy of the fans. Tenlin tells the girl that the interrogation is completed and she can go. Yachun thanks the head of the rapid response team for the work done. As she leaves, Yachun tells Lin Fan that she has never met such a brave and strong guy and kisses him on the cheek. Lin Fan has a sudden hormonal surge. Tenlin asks him if he is okay. The voice of a stranger is heard saying that the girl should be careful, since a lot of time and money have been spent on her. Tsun asks Ya Chun what she was doing outside at such a late hour. The girl replies that she was bored and decided to go to the store. Ya Chun says that she met a very nice guy and hopes to develop further relationships. Tsun doubts the existence of good people in this world and asks Ya Chun not to forget what the main goal in her life is. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted by a loud knock on the front door. An exhausted master, Tian, appears on the threshold of the house. He tells those present that his opponent turned out to be stronger than he expected. Tsun is dissatisfied with the mediocre use of mechanical armor that was provided to Master Tian. Master Tian is outraged by such remarks addressed to him and the rude tone of the conversation. He believes that he did everything possible at the risk of his life. Tsun looks arrogantly at Master Tian reminding him that he provided everything he needed to successfully complete the operation that he failed. Rage fills Master Tian's mind, and he has a great desire to destroy Tsun. Tsun believes that Master Tian overestimates his strength and suggests first dealing with Ya Chun. Master Tian is unable to effectively use his combat prowess as his arm is still under the influence of ice magic. Master Tian realizes that now is not the time to easily win the fight. He uses his combat magic and hopes for the speedy release of his hand from the ice captivity. Master Tian's hands are free. He intends to use Taoist combat magic for his energy attack. Master Tian does not have time to concentrate enough energy in his hands. Ya Chun grabs the helpless Master Tian by the throat and does not drag him towards the door. A huge release of energy occurs and Master Tian's body finds itself at the epicenter of a plasma explosion. All the many years of experience and magical power of Master Tian could not protect him from the destructive force. Master Tian is thrown out into the street. His helpless body falls to the ground. He feels hatred and despair. The doors of the Xiao family's house are closed in front of him. Tsun orders Master Tian to get lost and announce his new status as chief ruler to the city's underworld. Morning has come. The bright sun illuminates the blue cloudless sky, and bird song can be heard outside the window. Lin Fan, not wanting to get out of bed, slowly wakes up. The night passed quickly. He hardly rested. A lot of events happened to Lin Fan last night. The guy was very overwhelmed with impressions. Suddenly he notices a strange, incomprehensible movement under the blanket in his bed. Ya Chun appears from under the blanket and asks Lin Fan how he slept last night. Lin Fan, frightened, jumps back sharply. He does not understand how the girl could be here. Creepy fantasies and guesses begin to occur to Lin Fan. Cold sweat flows down his face. Mei and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao are standing on the threshold of the room. They are sending angry curses at the guy. Lin Fan wakes up, his eyes filled with horror. He can't control his emotions and screams loudly. After a second, the guy calms down and comes to his senses, realizing that it was just a nightmare. Master Yulong was levitating next to Lin Fan in the lotus position. The guy shared with him the contents of his nightmare. Uncle Lin Fan swings a mop, he shouts loudly, chasing the dog out of his kitchen. Lin Fan's uncle tries to find the guy all over the restaurant to no avail. He doesn't understand where the guy could be. Yulong and Lin Fan find themselves in a huge clearing in the forest. The sword master intends to begin training the guy. Lin Fan is very surprised by the teleportation. He clearly remembers that they were just in his room. Yulong tells Lin Fan that they are on the hill behind the school and training will now begin. The guy cannot remember when he managed to change clothes. Yulong tells the guy that he has developed normal speed and can soon reach the pinnacle of his skill. Master Yulong takes out his sword from its scabbard. He is about to begin his training with special training. In his hands, Lin Fan holds an ice sword, which is light as a feather, but at the same time capable of cutting through metal. 
Master Yulong tells the guy that if he can hit him, he will tell the guy's father's secret. Lin Fan is very surprised by Master Yulong's excellent physical fitness and appearance. The guy has no intention of destroying Master Yulong. He is a little outraged by the task assigned to him. Master Yulong tells Lin Fan that death is only possible if his sword reaches its target. The guy agrees with the master's proposal. He copes with his excitement and is ready to start the fight. Holding a sharp ice blade in front of him, Lin Fan rushes into a desperate attack. Master Yulong stands motionless in place, his face expressing calm and serenity as he meets the guy's attack. Lin Fan uses his skills gained from the system. Master Yulong is amazed at the grace with which the guy moves. Master Yulong barely manages to dodge Lin Fan flying at him at great speed. Such skills surprise the Swordmaster. He did not expect such skill from the guy. The guy is amazed by the fighting characteristics of Master Yulong. He is impressed that even the help of the system cannot cope with him. With great effort, the guy tries to pull the ice sword out of the rock in which it is stuck. Lin Fan believes that he did not use his skills to the fullest and decides to repeat the attack. Lin Fan never ceases to amaze Master Yulong with the level of his combat prowess. The guy quickly launches another attack on Master Yulong, confident that this time he will be able to hit the master. Master Yulong stands motionless, Lin Fan runs up to him and raises his ice blade to strike. At the last moment, Master Yulong skillfully dodges and the guy flies past at great speed. The guy slowly goes to the Yulong master. He is amazed by the sharpness of the ice sword, which was able to cut the tree in half. The master sees that the guy is unable to cope with him. He decides to play giveaway. The system counts the guy points on his account. Lin Fan is concerned that the virtual screen of the system has stopped appearing in front of him. The guy tells Master Yulong that the time for games is over and he will fight with his full strength. The serenity and calmness of Master Yulong evoke genuine admiration from Lin Fan. Approaching the master at great speed, Lin Fan raises his sword to strike his hand. The ice blade whistles down on Master Yulong, who continues to stand motionless. With lightning speed, Master Yulong jumps to the side. The ice sword hits the ground, scattering pieces of soil to the sides. The crack formed after the ice sword hit the ground begins to grow, tearing the clearing in half. The crack quickly reaches a huge stone that stands at the edge of the clearing. With noise and a crash, the stone begins to move. It splits in half. The earth shakes from the powerful impact. Yulong tells the guy that at the moment his skills are only suitable for washing clothes. Lin Fan agrees that his level of combat skill is not yet sufficient to fight the master on an equal footing. The guy begins to think that Master Yulong's power may lie in his white robes. Lin Fan begins to doubt that Master Yulong is truly calm and confident in his abilities. The guy intends to use the gaze of the abyss received from the system against Master Yulong. Master Yulong is very surprised when Lin Fan suddenly changes his expression. The guy starts screaming loudly. He rushes into another frantic attack on Master Yulong. Master Yulong stands motionless opposite the guy. Around them there are a huge number of cut-down centuries-old trees. Lin Fan realized in practice that Master Yulong was deservedly the best sword master in the region. Master Yulong tells the guy that there is enough training for today, they will continue it later. Lin Fan is looking forward to tomorrow to resume training. He is pleased that even if there are no good results in training, the system still gives him a large number of points. The guy remembers the imminent opening of the dumpling shop and starts running to get to the city as quickly as possible. Master Yulong watches Lin Fan run and rubs his back in the hope of easing the pain. In an expensive restaurant, Brittany and classmate Lin Fan exchange glances, and an atmosphere of romance reigns around. Lin Fan is late for the opening of the restaurant. He observes a huge line at the entrance. Uncle Lin Fan makes excuses to the customers in every possible way, explaining to them that the chef is a little late. Uncle Lin Fan asks the guy to immediately start preparing dumplings, since the visitors are already waiting for their favorite dish. The restaurant waitresses ask visitors not to be nervous and do their best to persuade them to wait a little. Lin Fan is surprised by the large number of customers in the restaurant. Someone slowly approaches the guy. Feeling the approach of a person behind him, Lin Fan turns around sharply, surprised by what he sees. The girl gently touches Lin Fan and activates the fifth meridian acupuncture points on his shoulders. Lin Fan comes to the conclusion that only high-level masters can perform such a technique. The guy asks the maid's daughter Wei about what this means. She explains to him that this is a new pre-meal service that she developed. 
Maid Wei's daughter informs Lin Fan that she has already taught the staff this magical technique. Lin Fan believes that customers will have a pleasant time waiting for their favorite dish, which will undoubtedly affect the establishment's profit. Maid Wei's daughter says that no one can compete with her in terms of innovation. She asks Lin Fan to come closer to say something confidential in his ear. Maid Wei's daughter warns Lin Fan that if he disappears and doesn't prepare the dumplings, she will massage him to death. Lin Fan, using the system's virtual monitor, calculates the required number of points for preparing dumplings. With great excitement, he orders a huge number of portions of magic dumplings from the system. Restaurant patrons finally get their favorite dish, and their long wait is worth it. The girls get to work. The clients are delighted with the taste of the magical dumplings and the quality service. Uncle Lin Fan is very happy with what is happening. Business at his restaurant has never been so good. Uncle Lin Fan shares with the guy information about yesterday's record profit, expressing his intention to earn even more today. Martial arts teacher William opens the door of the restaurant and slowly walks inside. He stops in the middle of the dining room and takes his phone out of his jacket pocket. Lin Fan and his uncle stop their conversation and look at teacher William with bewilderment. William's teacher tells Lin Fan that he has enough evidence to expel the guy from the university. Teacher William intends to report to the academic office and the director about poor hygiene and the fact that girls with low social responsibility are being recruited to work. Lin Fan tells Teacher William that the dean and director are now in the restaurant, pointing to the table where they are sitting. Teacher William is outraged by what is happening and asks the director a question about what he is doing in such a disgusting company. The university director demands that William immediately calm down and watch his language. Slamming his fist on the table, the university director demands an immediate apology from William. He approaches Lin Fan and tells him to immediately report any problems if they arise. The university director and visitors demand that Professor William leave the institution immediately. Lin Fan, while in class at the university, believes that it was in vain that he acquired from the system a skill called sleeping genius. The system tells Lin Fan that he underestimates the capabilities of the new skill. Fellow students recommend Lin Fan study social networks. He listens to their opinions, trying to use social networks to earn even more points from the system. Watching his old video, Lin Fan thinks about how he can repeat his huge success. He decides that first he needs to register his account on a new social network. After completing the registration procedure, contacts are synchronized, and a chat with Ya Chun appears on the phone screen. The fact that Lin Fan knows Ya Chun arouses great envy and genuine interest among his classmates. Classmates surround Lin Fan, trying to convey their greetings to Ya Chun. The girl ignores them and invites Lin Fan to lunch. The students present in the class are very closely following Lin Fan's conversation with Ya Chun. Lin Fan's classmates ask him for permission to attend dinner with him, promising to pay him any money for this. Glamorous women believe that such fuss over an immature teenager is unfounded. Lin Fan carefully examines the glamorous women standing next to him with great interest. Elder Zhao's granddaughter believes that she was wrong to view Lin Fan as a decent young man. Lin Fan's classmates are fans of Ya Chun and consider her a special girl, not like everyone else. A glamorous woman expresses her opinion that for her, all men are the same and disgusting. Her friend claims that the beauty of glamorous women is far superior to the beauty of Ya Chun. The third glamorous woman declares that their charm can easily defeat any women. Glamorous women believe that people who like fakes and freaks are disgusting and deserve to be destroyed. Lin Fan sends glamorous women flying with a powerful blow and films it on his phone. Ya Chun is still chatting with Lin Fan. She is broadcasting the events happening live. The system begins to award Lin Fan a large number of single points. The guy compares the number of points awarded by the system with the number of views of his new video. Lin Fan comes to the conclusion that he has found a quick and effective way to earn points from the system. The guy tells Ya Chun that it's time for him to go to class. He invites the girl to call him later. The break between classes ends. Lin Fan slowly walks towards the classroom. He is noticed by his classmates, who quickly approach him and ask him to wait for them. Classmates tell Lin Fan that they have always been best friends. They are very surprised by his friendship with Ya Chun. Lin Fan's classmates praise him non-stop, admiring his resourcefulness and martial arts skills. The guy asks Lin Fan if he is afraid to challenge the swordsman. Lin Fan doesn't understand what he is talking about. The guy explains that Mei ranks sixth in the martial arts department. 
First place goes to a swordsman who is an ardent fan of Yachun. Lin Fan's classmates warn him that if the swordsman finds out about their communication, it will cause him to become insanely angry. Lin Fan says goodbye to his classmates. They once again remind him to be careful when dealing with Yachun. A guy walks down the street in a good mood. He is happy that he has found a proven way to get points from the system. Lin Fan thinks that his life is finally starting to change for the better. Suddenly his thoughts turn to the swordsman and the possible threat he could pose. Turning the corner of the building, Lin Fan suddenly finds a swordsman there and instantly assumes a fighting stance. The swordsman warns Lin Fan that he will regret his decision to associate with the living legend. The swordsman's threats make Lin Fan very worried and he begins to get a little nervous. The guy tries to explain to the fencer that he has nothing to do with Yachun, but the fencer does not want to listen to his explanations and insists on a duel. The swordsman tells Lin Fan that he hurt his feelings and will have to pay for it. The jealous swordsman reports that two of his rivals have already been defeated and Lin Fan will become the third. Seeing that the swordsman is serious, Lin Fan prepares for the fight. He realizes that he has a serious fight ahead of him. The swordsman delivers a series of quick attacks. Lin Fan, using the skills received from the system, skillfully dodges the enemy's blows. Lin Fan's movement speed is colossal. He stops the swordsman and invites him to part ways with the world. The fencer, in anger, pushes the guy aside and rushes into another attack. He intends to perform his signature move called the Kiss of Death. Lin Fan does not give up hope of dissuading the swordsman. The enemy tells the guy that imminent death awaits him. The swordsman intends to be careful as he understands that Lin Fan's combat level is high. Lin Fan tells the enemy that he has friendly relations with Ya Chun and he has no intention of stealing his girl. A feeling of wild jealousy fills the swordsman. He does not listen to Lin Fan's words. Anger takes possession of him. The swordsman, filled with rage, flies into the air and aims his sword for a killing blow towards Lin Fan. Lin Fan is impressed by the opponent's speed and impeccable sword technique. The guy jumps to the side to a safe distance. The blow of the sword breaks the asphalt on which Lin Fan stood a moment earlier. The guy continues to retreat. The fencer strikes him with a strong, slashing blow. The fencer deservedly takes first place in the university's martial arts department. Lin Fan has to use all his skills gained from the system to defend against such a serious opponent. As the intensity of the swordsman's attacks increases, Lin Fan realizes that the swordsman really wants to destroy him. Lin Fan ends up with a stick in his hands with which he blocks the blow of the swordsman's sword. Using a stick, Lin Fan technically reflects the enemy's techniques that have been practiced over the years. Lin Fan activates his super strength skill and strikes the swordsman, sending the opponents flying in different directions. The swordsman is amazed that Lin Fan, using only a stick, can withstand his skill. The swordsman carefully peers into the guy's face. It seems to him that he has seen Lin Fan somewhere before. Lin Fan concentrates a powerful stream of energy around itself to create a protective shield. The swordsman is convinced of the high level of combat skill of Lin Fan, since only experienced masters can use the flow of energy. Lin Fan believes that the swordsman has not yet used all his sword skills. The guy is once again trying to talk to the enemy. The swordsman demands that Lin Fan immediately stop talking and continue the fight. For the swordsman, Yachun is the main meaning of his life. He realized this when he saw her for the first time. The swordsman recalls his acquaintance and first meeting with Yachun. He is filled with pleasant, nostalgic memories. Joint training with Yachun was a pleasure and a daydream for the fencer. The swordsman believes that Yachun belongs only to him. He is very jealous of people who could potentially pose a threat to their relationship. Many years ago, the swordsman decided to devote his life to Yachun. He intends to grind his opponent who happened to be in his way into dust. Lin Fan believes that the swordsman has gone crazy. The guy doubts his adequacy. The swordsman attempts to break through the energy shield generated by Lin Fan and deliver the finishing blow. Lin Fan's opponent is 100% sure that the guy's main goal is to take Ya Chun from him. The guy's persuasion cannot stop him. A loud telephone rings. The match stops. Lin Fan looks closely at the fencer. The swordsman answers the phone. He listens for a long time continuing to look at Lin Fan with hatred. The swordsman tells Lin Fan that he is forced to leave the guy for a while, but he will return soon. Tsun welcomes the journalists and members of the media team gathered in the hall. Tsun is in a huge hall. He begins a press conference dedicated to the launch of a new product line. He shows off a small object in his hand. 
saying that it is a new revolutionary product that will change the future. Evening is coming. The space of the city is illuminated by a bright crimson sunset. Lin Fan walks down the street, wondering why he always gets into trouble. The system tells the guy that it doesn't think so, and everything that happens to the guy has a positive effect on the development of his skills. Lin Fan comes to his uncle's restaurant. The guy is invited to sit at the table and end the evening with a pleasant dinner. The maid's daughter, Wei, appears in the room and brings a hot dish to the dining table. The Lin Fan family is having dinner. At the table, they are lively discussing the events that have happened today. Uncle Lin Fan thanks Maid Daughter Wei for her help in cooking and serving customers today. Maid Wei's daughter offers to try her family's signature dish, and she slowly lifts the lid of the pan. The aromatic smell of peas with fish head and red oil quickly spreads throughout the room. After dinner, Lin Fan and his uncle sit on the porch of the restaurant and admire the signature soup of the Maid's Daughter Wei. Lin Fan and his uncle are discussing today's news about the launch of the Xiao family's new product at the Exhibition Center. A TV reporter broadcasts live in front of the Xiao family business center. The video camera of the television crew records how the granddaughter of Elder Zhao and Master Poison enter the building. Tsun says that their research group was able to introduce artificial intelligence into their robots. Lin Fan carefully watches the live report from the scene. Suddenly something worries him. He sees Elder Zhao's daughter enter the conference room, accompanied by Master Poison. Suddenly, strong electromagnetic interference degrades the picture quality of the live broadcast. Despite the poor quality of the picture, Lin Fan and his uncle manage to see the broadcast host screaming in horror. They are sitting on the sofa in front of the TV and do not understand what could have happened in the business center. The broadcast picture has improved, and now they can clearly see the presenter who reports on the attack of combat robots on the business center. A huge combat robot informs those present that the business center is temporarily completely blocked. Lin Fan hears loud bangs outside the window and turns around to see the cause of the sounds. Lin Fan's uncle's daughter admires the beautiful pattern in the sky. Lin Fan recognizes this fireworks as the secret alarm signal of the Zhao family. Lin Fan and his uncle are aware of the seriousness of the incident, as such, Zhao family signals are only used in exceptional cases. Uncle Lin Fan invites the guy to go to the business center and provide his help if something serious happens there. Uncle Lin Fan's daughter persistently intervenes in the conversation and expresses her desire to go to the business center. She is strongly advised to stay at home. The daughter of the maid Wei asks Lin Fan to take her with him. The guy does not want to do this because he does not understand how she can help. He asks the girl to stay at her uncle's restaurant, since going to the business center is unsafe. The maid's daughter, Wei, tells the guy that she is grateful to the Zhao family, as they gave her a new job and a roof over her head. Lin Fan is surprised by the reaction of Wei's maid's daughter. He considered her a selfish and cruel girl. Lin Fan agrees to take Wei's maid's daughter with him, but on the condition that she does not disturb him. Maid Wei's daughter and Lin Fan approach the Xiao family headquarters. They look at a complex of huge reinforced concrete buildings, illuminated by bright neon lights. The maid's daughter, Wei, tells the guy that all the doors in this building are securely locked. Lin Fan tells her that he will definitely find a way to get inside. The girl finds this task extremely difficult, since the security system of the business center is very complex. Lin Fan activates the perspective gazing technique using acupuncture points on his face. Perspective view is activated, the guy begins to thoroughly scan the surrounding space. After some time, Lin Fan finds the entrance to the building and informs the maid's daughter, Wei. Using perspective, which allows him to see through objects, he notices a ventilation shaft. The entrance to the ventilation shaft is closed by a regular grill that does not have locks or other security systems. Lin Fan and Maid Wei's daughter go around the building to use the entrance they found. Lin Fan removes the grill of the ventilation shaft. The girl admires the guy's intelligence. With a deft movement, Lin Fan climbs inside the ventilation shaft, which leads to the conference room. Maidway's daughter and Lin Fan crawl through the narrow, winding labyrinths and reach the conference room. They jump down and get inside the room. Lin Fan cautiously looks around. Lin Fan uses the perspective look technique. He sees the presence of Elder Zhao's granddaughter and Master Poison in the next room. The guy wonders what could have happened in the Xiao family business center. In the middle of the room are the granddaughter of Elder Zhao and Master Poison, with dozens of unconscious people lying around them. 
Lin Fan thinks about what the couple could be doing here and how they are involved in the incident that happened. Master Poison notices Lin Fan and addresses him by name. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao insults the guy. She asks Lin Fan what he is doing in the business center and how he got into the locked room. Maidway's daughter talks about how Uncle Lin Fan asked them to come help. The conversation is interrupted by a sharp sound, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter turns around sharply. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao barely manages to dodge the root of a huge plant flying at her. Another root flies at high speed towards Lin Fan. The guy deftly dodges his attack. Master Poison is also attacked by the roots of a huge plant. He breaks the root into pieces with strong slashing blows. Elder Zhao's granddaughter uses her fighting skills to cut the root in half. In the fog, the figure of a man is visible who uses mysterious roots. The stranger is slowly approaching. A forest root is writhing around her body. The mysterious stranger's name is Musugen. She is a high-class martial artist and is very well versed in chemistry and plants. Master Poison says that people in the business center lost consciousness due to the use of Musugen organic poison. Musugen tells Elder Zhao's team that even after calling in reinforcements, they do not have enough strength to deal with her. Master Poison is going to detain Musugen and orders the others to go upstairs in order to return the chip stolen from Elder Zhao. Musugen unleashes numerous forest roots into Zhao's team. She plans to bury her opponents in this building. Letting out a piercing animal roar, the forest root, chattering its teeth, approaches Lin Fan. As they approach, the forest roots increase in size and take on a giant, ugly shape. Master Poison charges at the forest root, demanding that Elder Zhao's team leave immediately. Master Poison runs up to a huge forest root and strikes it with a powerful blow. Elder Zhao's team wastes no time, moving quickly to find the chip. The forest root cannot withstand the blow of colossal force. Emitting a piercing howl, it falls at the feet of the Master Poison. Musigan notices that Master Poison uses poisonous gas to protect himself, which comes as an unpleasant surprise to her. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao wishes Master Poison a quick and easy victory, telling him what will be waiting for him at the top. Musugen, intending to delay Elder Zhao's team, launches a forest root at them. Master Poison rushes towards the flying forest root at the cost of his life covering the retreat of Elder Zhao's team. The forest root opens its huge, terrible mouth, and foul-smelling mucus flows in a stream from its sharp fangs. Master Poison delivers a series of blows just below the jaw of the forest root. The eerie plant falls. Musigen considers his opponent to be a naive fool, as he intends to fight her alone. Master Poison realizes that it is the cause that needs to be attacked, not the effect, and attacks Musugen. Elder Zhao's team rushes to the upper floors of the building, trying to capture the secret microprocessor as quickly as possible. Master Poison realizes that Musugen is a very powerful opponent, and he cannot cope with her with ordinary martial arts techniques. Despite the fact that his own poison will poison his body, Master Poison decides to remove the protective seal from his combat glove. He intends today to put an end to Musigan and its demonic creatures once and for all. Lifan hopes that he will soon become a recognized master in the Zhao family. The guy is confident that today he will be able to prove his loyalty to Elder Zhao and earn the trust of his granddaughter. Master Poison removes the first protective seal from his combat gauntlet. Musugan watches him carefully. Deciding that the opportune moment has arrived, Master Poison rushes to attack Musigan and her forest roots. Musugan spins a huge forest root around himself to throw Master Poison. A forest root flies in the direction of Master Poison. He is about to bite off his head. Master Poison grabs a forest root with his poisonous hand, and the poison begins to penetrate into the aggressive plant. The poisonous combat glove operates at maximum power. Its own poison begins to poison the body of the poison master. The forest root makes demonic sounds. It tries to escape but the strong grip of the Master Poison prevents him from doing this. The Master, using all his strength, tears the forest root into small pieces. Musugan throws more and more forest roots at the Master Poison, in the hope that at least one of them will reach the goal. The Master activates a protective gas field around himself that can slow down the movement of forest roots. Musugan sees that her numerous attacks using the forest roots do not lead to the expected result. Suddenly, Musugan notices that the forest roots are being decomposed by the toxins that Master Poison is using. Her battle garb begins to fall apart, and the toxins also affect her clothing, made from plant fibers. 
Musugan completely loses all his clothes, which fell into pieces and fell down in small shreds. The naked girl is enveloped in forest roots, and Master Poison experiences great excitement as he watches what is happening. Musugan cannot believe that Master Poison repelled all the attacks of the forest roots. She is truly surprised. Poison stands opposite his opponent, floating in the air. Destroyed forest roots lie motionless next to him. Master Poison is unable to look at Musugan, as it contradicts his moral principles. Musugan asks Master Poison not to be shy and enjoy the current situation. She asks Master Poison to open his eyes wider, since he has not yet seen the most interesting thing. Musugan shows Master Poison a syringe containing a new experimental chemical solution. She injects a chemical solution into a huge forest root nearby. The experimental liquid enters the forest root and is carried through the arteries throughout the creature's body. Master Poison loudly orders Musugan to immediately stop the dangerous experiments. It becomes too late. The forest root, under the influence of the experimental liquid, transforms into a huge monster. The master watches what is happening in horror, and the heart-rending, hellish roar of the monster is heard. The creature acquired new regeneration abilities. Its fibers became stronger and stronger, and its speed was much higher than before. Master Poison quickly attacks the forest root, intending to pierce it right through with his sharp sting. Poison assumes a fighting stance and creates a powerful gas shield around his body. Thanks to the protective screen, the impact of the forest root does not reach the Poison Master. Activating his poisonous glove to maximum power, Poison intends to finish off the monstrous creature with one blow. Master Poison's attack reaches its target, and the loud crunch of the monster's fibers breaking is heard. Emitting a piercing screech, the forest root continues to resist, shooting its poisonous buds in different directions. Poison does not understand why the forest root continues to resist despite the fatal toxic blow. A forest root hangs over the master poison, opening its bud wide with poisonous teeth. Musugan is pleased with the effectiveness of the new experimental substance. The poisonous gas emanating from the master's hand has no effect on the forest root. Poison understands that poisonous gas does not harm the forest root, but on the contrary, only increases its aggressiveness. Elder Zhao's team runs through the labyrinthine corridors of the Xiao family's business center with very little time left at their disposal. Their run is stopped by a mysterious stranger who appears at the end of the corridor. Elder Zhao's granddaughter orders the stranger to immediately step aside and not interfere with their movement. The mysterious stranger does not respond to the words of Elder Zhao's granddaughter. The sound of ominous laughter echoes along the corridor. The confident Bai Hu walks along the deserted corridor to meet Elder Zhao's team. Lin Fan asks Bai Hu about the reasons for her presence in the business center, the guy puts forward the version that Baihu received orders to stop them. Baihu explains to the guy that she arrived at the business center before Elder Zhao's team arrived for backup. Baihu tells Lin Fan that she is currently working for the Zhao family and does not pose a threat to them. Lin Fan reflects on how Baihu has changed since the last meeting at Elder Zhao's house. The guy does not see the girl as a threat and thanks her for joining the Zhao family. He extends his hand to her. Baihu sharply hits Lin Fan on his outstretched hand and tells the guy in an orderly tone not to touch her. Elder Zhao knows that Baihu has been added to the list of traitors of the Xiao family and offers her his protection. In the depths of his soul, Baihu continues to hate justice and kindness. Baihu takes out a sharp throwing blade from her hidden sheath. The girl tells Lin Fan that even now she still wants to kill him. Baihu throws a throwing blade towards Lin Fan. It hits the lamp on the ceiling, and for a moment the light in the corridor disappears. Elder Zhao's team is surprised by the sudden disappearance of Baihu. Lin Fan does not understand what all this could mean. The guy sees the silhouette of a man at the end of the corridor and thinks it's Baihu. He calls out to her. A stranger approaches Lin Fan, and the guy is surprised by his appearance. A wushu master named Jian appears in front of Elder Zhao's team. Elder Zhao's granddaughter has heard about Master Jian, who is a specialist in assassin weapons. Master Jian jumps from the ceiling. He freezes in place. Elder Zhao's team watches him warily, waiting for his next actions. Master Jian wonders why he saw four people when the order he received was to kill only three. Master Jian takes out combat shurikens. He stops caring about the number of opponents. He intends to destroy them all. Bai Hu suddenly appears in the corridor. She orders everyone to leave and intends to detain Master Jian. Elder Zhao's team begins to retreat, and Baihu prepares to take on an unequal battle. 
Master Jian unleashes a swarm of deadly shuriken at his opponents. Baihu moves along the corridor and responds by throwing his throwing knives. Baihu intends to hold off Master Jian for as long as possible so that Elder Zhao's team has time to capture the superprocessor. Master Jian appreciates Baihu's fighting skills. It remains a mystery to him where the girl received such excellent training. Baihu and Master Jian stand motionless opposite each other. Neither of them intends to be the first to attack. Master Jian praises the long and wide throwing knives of Baihu. Taking advantage of the fact that Baihu was distracted by his conversations, Master Jian throws shuriken at the girl. At great speed, the shuriken moves towards Baihu. The girl deftly dodges it. The battle continues. Baihu responds by launching his throwing knives at Master Jian. Master Poison is aware of the threat that plants enhanced with an experimental substance can neutralize and decompose his poison. Musigan asks Master Poison if he hopes to emerge victorious from the duel. Musigan expects that very soon Master Poison will surrender to her onslaught. Removing the seal of protection from the poisonous glove of the Master Poison makes itself felt. His body is affected by its own poison. Musigan leaves no choice for Master Poison. He decides to resort to drastic measures. Musigan looks attentively at her opponent, wondering what Master Poison will do next. Poison realizes that he was not ready to fight such a strong opponent. He has no other option but to remove the second seal of protection from his poisonous glove. Master Poison removes the second seal of protection from his poisonous glove. His poison begins to infect his own body even more. Musigan sends a modified forest root towards the Master Poison. The Master sends curses to the monstrous plant. Musigan considers his opponent too old to put up a worthy resistance to her. The level of toxic gases in the body of the Poison Master increases to a critical level. His body begins to consume toxins. At the same time, his adrenaline levels increase in his body, which increases the speed of his reaction. Toxic poisoning of the body is not the only problem for Master Poison. He experiences temporary paralysis of his legs. Musigan notices changes in Master Poison's body. She considers the increase in the enemy's adrenaline level dangerous for herself. Poison makes a controlled release of adrenaline in his body. He has ten minutes to carry out an effective attack. Musigan sends a large number of modified forest roots towards Master Poison. Master Poison deftly dodges forest roots, which with enormous force destroy the ceiling of the building. Master Poison's speed has increased noticeably, allowing him to get closer to his opponent. Musugan thinks that he's had enough of messing around with Master Poison, and it's time to finish with him. Poison, with the help of its toxic gas, manages to disable some of the buds of the forest root. Musugan throws another forest root at Master Poison, believing that he will not be able to resist for long. The Master activates a protective gas shield around himself, realizing that he has less than five minutes left to snatch victory in the fight. Musigan is extremely surprised by Master Poison's resilience and cannot believe that he is still able to resist. The forest root hangs over the Master Poison. He opens the mouth of his bud, emitting a demonic roar. Suddenly, Musugan realizes that she has lost contact with her forest root and can no longer control it. Master Poison strikes, enhanced by a toxic gas field at Musugan's defenses. The defense, consisting of several layers of forest roots, cannot withstand the blow of the Poison Master. A huge explosion occurs, which tears the forest root into small chips. Musugan's defenses are completely destroyed. The remains of the forest root are smoking at her feet. Musugan looks at poison with hatred. She still cannot believe his enormous strength after removing the protection seal from the glove. The picture of how Master Poison's poisonous gas touched the rhizomes of her plant weapons is still before Musugan's eyes. After Master Poison touched the forest root, concentrated gas poison entered it, and the rhizome soon detonated. Clothes on Musigan made from organic fibers continued to deteriorate along with the remains of the forest root. The voice of Master Poison is heard, saying that the strength of the Zhao family members cannot be underestimated. Musigan doesn't think it's over. She takes out an injection gun to revive the forest root. A girl injects a huge dose of an experimental drug into a forest root, which instantly recovers after a devastating explosion. Musigan continues to inject, one after another, huge doses of the experimental drug into the forest root. The girl is confident that now the chances of winning are balanced. The forest root makes hissing sounds and wraps itself around her body. Master Poison feels that his strength is gradually leaving him, and the consequences of toxic poisoning are affecting him. 
Elder Zhao's team reaches the upper floors of the business center and is surprised by the lack of security. Lin Fan is tensed by the deserted corridors of the room. He feels a hidden threat in this. Suddenly, Lin Fan received a strong blow to his back. He was unable to continue moving and stopped. The guy feels very good. He feels boundless pleasure in every cell of his body. Elder Zhao's granddaughter and Maid Wei's daughter look at Lin Fan in surprise. They don't understand what happened to the guy. The next blow hits the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. A powerful energy discharge runs through her body. Elder Zhao's granddaughter falls into a state of intense euphoria and loses control over the situation. Maid Wei's daughter opens her mouth wide in surprise, looking at Lin Fan. She doesn't understand how the acupuncture pressure points could be activated. With her peripheral vision, the daughter of the Maid Wei notices an incomprehensible object flying at her back. The girl deftly dodges the attack of an unknown enemy. A fast-moving object is directed towards the motionless Lin Fan. Lin Fan receives another powerful low blow and the guy screams loudly. Maid Wei's daughter watches Lin Fan roll his eyes and faint. A stranger slowly plucks petals from a chrysanthemum flower and the quiet singing of a lullaby can be heard. Lin Fan lies on the floor in an unconscious state. The voices of girls can be heard calling him to wake up. Maidway's daughter goes into a state of rage because she cannot see the enemy attacking them. An unfamiliar girl slowly approaches Elder Zhao's team. The stranger is very surprised by the abilities of the daughter of the Maid Wei, who was able to dodge her lightning strikes. Elder Zhao's team takes a close look at the strange stranger who appeared out of nowhere. The mysterious opponent of Elder Zhao's team is called Miao Shu. She is a senior massage therapist of the highest category. Loud curses are heard, which the daughter of the Maid Wei sends towards Miao Shu. Lin Fan, gradually regaining consciousness, tries to get up and stand on his feet. For quick recovery, he activates secret acupuncture points in his face. Having quickly regained his strength, Lin Fan activates the skill of perspective. The guy is completely ready to fight with a new opponent. Seeing Lin Fan come to his senses, Miao Shu decides to immediately attack him using his unusual weapon. Using the skill of perspective, Lin Fan determines the location of the pulsating acupuncture points on Miao Shu's body. Now the guy can confidently attack the enemy, since he knows the weak points in Miao Shu's defense. Master Miao Shu attacks the guy with his unusual weapon. Lin Fan dodges the sting flying at him. Approaching Miao Shu, Lin Fan manages to click on the dotted dots of his opponent. The result is not long in coming. Miao Shu loses her ability to resist. She falls into a state of ecstasy experiencing unreal pleasure. Taking advantage of the moment, Lin Fan intends to deal a crushing blow to Miao Shu. The maid's daughter Wei is fascinated by the guy's fighting technique, but she doesn't fully understand his plan. Lin Fan decides to wait until Miao Shu comes to her senses to activate the secret point on her body. Maid Wei's daughter subconsciously senses something wrong and tries to stop Lin Fan. The guy approaches Miao Shu to activate her acupuncture point. Maid Wei's daughter rushes headlong towards Lin Fan, determined to stop him at any cost. The girl asks Lin Fan to leave Miao Shu, expressing her desire to complete the matter on her own. The guy does not fully understand the motivation of Wei's maid's daughter. The girl says that there is no reason to worry and asks Lin Fan to step aside. Elder Zhao's granddaughter and Lin Fan leave the girl as they need to continue searching for the super processor. Miao Shu remains conscious but is unable to move after activating the secret acupuncture point. Lin Fan thanks the system for providing him with the useful skill of acupuncture massage. Elder Zhao's granddaughter insists that Maid Wei's daughter quickly resolve the situation with Miao Shu and join them. The voice of Wei's maid's daughter is heard saying that past mistakes will not be made this time. The girl asks Miao Shu if she is in a comfortable position. Miao Shu looks at the maid's daughter Wei in surprise. Miao Shu asks the girl if she likes Lin Fan's massage technique. Maid Wei's daughter offers Miao Shu a massage that will be the most enjoyable of her life. Miao Shu is worried that her body is immobilized. She can only use her unusual weapon from a distance. Miao Shu gathers all his remaining strength and jumps a considerable distance away from the girl. Using his multimeter tongue, Miao Shu attacks the daughter of the Maid Wei. The girl easily dodges the unusual weapon, performing a graceful dance. Maid Wei's daughter performs complex ballet pirouettes, making her movements unpredictable. Miao Shu cannot hit the girl since the dance makes it difficult to predict her trajectory. The girl tells Miao Shu that her skill is not enough to win. 
Maid Wei's daughter remembers her past life, where dancing took up most of her time. At the KTG Entertainment Establishment, a client in a drunken stupor throws a bottle at a dancing girl. Using her dancing charms, the girl deftly dodges a bottle flying at her. Nothing can stop the dance, not even shoes flying at the dancer. By practicing hard every day, Maid Wei's daughter achieved perfection in the art of dancing. Dancing continuously, Maid Wei's daughter moves ever closer to her opponent. Miao Shu cannot tear himself away from contemplating the mesmerizing dance and gradually falls into a state of light trance. Miao Shu sees the irony in this, realizing that it is the dance that can cause her imminent death. The maid's daughter Wei comes very close to Miao Shu and extends her hand to her. The girl touches Miao Shu and presses a secret acupuncture point on her body. The result is not long in coming. Miao Shu's body is completely relaxed. She is in seventh heaven with pleasure. Gradually regaining consciousness, Miao Shu is amazed at how quickly Maid Wei's daughter was able to approach her and press the acupuncture point. Miao Shu realizes that she will not have another chance. She concentrates and strikes with her powerful tongue. Maid Wei's daughter had foreseen a similar situation, so her strike misses the target. The girl is disappointed with Miao Shu's fighting abilities, since she is not capable of anything else besides a tongue attack. Maid Wei's daughter playfully dodges Miao Shu's blows. She clearly mocks her opponent. Having played and believed in herself, the girl misses the next attack. The giant tongue of Miao Shu strikes the daughter of the Maid Wei at the main point of the Ninth Meridian. The girl moans loudly. She plunges into a state of unreal bliss. The opponents stand opposite each other, exhausted by a long, continuous battle. Suddenly, Wei's maid's daughter realizes that Miao Shu is incredibly annoying, and the girl's eyes sparkle with rage. Having gathered her strength, the girl decides to use the combat technique of the multi-armed deity. She crosses her arms over her chest, concentrating an energy ball in her palms. Miao Shu uses his unusual weapon to continuously attack Maid Wei's daughter. Heart-rending screams are heard. The rivals scatter and rush at each other in frantic rage. Maid Wei's daughter tries to use her unusual technique to reach the treasured acupuncture point and deliver the finishing blow. Suddenly, the girl misses another Miao Shu attack, which paralyzes her. However, before this, the daughter of the Maid Wei still manages to reach the desired acupuncture point, Miao Shu. Struck by an unexpected hit to an acupuncture point, Miao Shu falls to the ground, exhausted. Maid Wei's daughter, under the acupuncture effect, falls next to her. The girl realizes that Miao Shu, with the help of her unusual weapon, can perfectly press points on her body. The maid's daughter Wei has a vision in which she feels the spring wind in every cell of her body. Miao Shu, being in a state of deep euphoric trance, tries to gather her thoughts. She is surrounded by dozens of small fluffy puppies. She plays with them, experiencing indescribable pleasure. Lin Fan and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao are running along the corridor. The guy hears the heart-rending screams of the daughter of the Maid Wei. They stop at the large entrance door, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter warns Lin Fan of the possible danger. The guy slowly tries to open the front door. A slight creak is heard. The door swings wide open. Lin Fan enters the room with Elder Zhao's granddaughter, and what they see inside surprises them. In the room opposite them stands a young man of athletic build. Elder Zhao's granddaughter calls the athletic guy an idiot and asks Lin Fan to quickly get him out of the way. A young man of athletic appearance is offended by the remarks of Elder Zhao's granddaughter and demands an apology from her. Lin Fan doubts his ability to physically cope with the young athlete. The guy believes that, having such huge muscles, he is incredibly strong. The young athlete's name is Moji. Although he is a martial artist, he chose the path of fitness. Moji admires Lin Fan's face shape, character, and body, considering the guy perfect. Moji has very strange fantasies, the nature of which is not compatible with the life principles of the Zhao family. Fitness trainer Moji asks Lin Fan if the guy is interested in swimming or training under his guidance. Elder Zhao's granddaughter nudges Lin Fan, winks at him, and wishes him good luck. This behavior of the girl begins to greatly irritate the fitness trainer Moji. He tells Lin Fan and Elder Zhao's granddaughter that he knows about their intentions to find Soon and is ready to help them on one condition. Moji voices the condition that only one person can pass. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao decides that she will move on, and Lin Fan will remain with the fitness trainer. Lin Fan is extremely dissatisfied with the proposed option. 
Elder Zhao's granddaughter wonders why fitness trainer Moji allows one person to go to Tsun. The fitness trainer tells her that Tsun's personal security is very professional, and their strength is terrible. The elder's granddaughter changes her mind and allows Lin Fan to leave, while she intends to stay with Moji. Lin Fan is disappointed with the position of the elder's granddaughter. He believes that she succumbed to fear. The girl tells Lin Fan that she made the right choice, since Lin Fan does not want to stay in the same room with the fitness trainer. The conversation between Lin Fan and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao is interrupted by the flight of a fiery arrow. Moji is tired of listening to the arguments between Lin Fan and the girl. He intends to destroy them both. Without taking his eyes off Lin Fan, Moji slowly draws the string of his huge bow. Elder Zhao's granddaughter jumps high into the air and raises her hand to strike. In an unequal fight, the granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Moji collide. The fitness trainer meets the girl's attack with a block of his huge hand. Moji calls out to Lin Fan, insistently demanding that he not run away, but stay with him. The fitness trainer is unhappy with the current situation and tells the elder's granddaughter that she is nothing without her mechanical gloves. The fitness trainer is going to demonstrate all his fighting skills to the granddaughter of the elder. He is confident of his quick victory. The girl destroys his hopes for a quick and easy victory. She breaks through Moji's defense with her well-aimed blow. Fitness trainer Moji is perplexed and disappointed, wondering how he could have missed a blow from Elder Zhao's granddaughter, since he considered himself a great master after years of training. The smitten Moji is horrified that he underestimated the fighting skills of Elder Zhao's granddaughter. The girl orders the fitness trainer to get out of her way, declaring that she has no time for empty talk. Lin Fan runs with all his might towards the office of the chief director of the Zhao Family Corporation. The guy realizes that he has very little time left to complete the task. The voice of artificial intelligence is heard, informing that the activation of the program is almost complete. Tsun is pleased with the results of his work, believing that all his plans are being carried out strictly according to plan. Wushu Master Jian compliments Baihu, saying that she is the first woman who was able to resist for so long. Bai Hu realizes the difficulty of the situation. She used almost all of her throwing knives. Wushu Master Jian has only one shuriken left. The fighter's chances are balanced. Bai Hu tries to remember the number of shurikens fired at her. Wushu Master Jian activates the nano bracelet on his wrist. The right hand of the Wushu Master Jian is enveloped in a magical energy field. Bai Hu does not lose heart. She has one more way to win. Bai Hu's own father comes from a secret village. Their family has been ninja for many generations with a rich history. In the Xiao family's research laboratory, work is being done day and night to integrate martial arts with modern technology. Wushu Master Jian calms his mind as he prepares for the final attack on Baihu. Jian is going to use his main trump card, a new invention of the Xiao family scientists. Wushu Master Jian carefully examines his plasma glove, which can emit solid objects. The plasma glove allows you to generate an unlimited number of deadly items. Baihu gets tired of the narcissism of the Wushu Master Jian. She throws her last blade at him. Wushu Master Jian uses his plasma glove to generate a protective energy field around himself. A knife thrown by Baihu is unable to penetrate the enemy's energy field. The girl is unable to reach the Wushu Master Jian. The energy field reflects all her blows. The throwing blade reflected by the energy field flies towards Bai Hu and casually inflicts a slight wound on her. The girl looks at Jian with an angry look. Her own helplessness begins to irritate her. Wushu Master Jian apologizes to Bai Hu in a sarcastic manner for scratching her face a little. Bai Hu tells Jian that her throwing knives are gone, and now he will appreciate her abilities in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Wushu Master Jian admires the girl's drive and fearlessness in the face of imminent death. Baihu, holding two small knives behind her back, tells Wushu Master Jian that she will not disappoint him. The girl jumps high in the air and throws throwing blades at the Wushu Master Jian. The enemy notices this and with a sharp movement of his hand tries to generate a protective field. Baihu, following the first knife, sends a second throwing blade at his opponent. The girl put all her strength and skills into throwing her throwing knives. Wushu Master Jian was upset that Baihu still had two knives left. He was counting on the fact that the girl had already used up all her deadly weapons. The girl was subjected to a powerful energy blow from the nano gloves of the Wushu Master Jian. Baihu cannot recover from the shock caused by the powerful energy strike. Losing her last strength, the wounded girl falls to the ground. 
Wushu Master Jian is pleased with the fight. He believes that he has not had such a serious fight for a long time. Lin Fan is trying to get to the upper floors of the Xiao family business center as quickly as possible. The guy stops. He stands rooted to the spot, carefully looking at the wall. Lin Fan carefully examines the elevator door, not understanding what could have happened here. He is filled with a feeling of anxiety, and with a great effort of will he forces himself to move forward. There are a few meters left before the entrance to the elevator. Lin Fan tries to collect himself and calm down. The guy approaches the elevator door and presses the call button. The sound of the electric motors of the lifting device is heard. The sound of the elevator rising is heard. Lin Fan ponders his future fate. Doubts arise in the guy's soul about whether he can complete this difficult mission alone. The elevator has arrived and the door begins to open, making a slight grinding sound. It's dark inside the elevator cabin. The guy carefully looks inside the cabin, trying to discern the cause of the strange noise. Suddenly, Lin Fan notices a stranger standing motionless inside the elevator. A second later, a sharp fencing blade from Master Jerry flies towards the guy. Lin Fan dodges the unexpected attack. The guy manages to jump to the side and fencing Master Jerry rushes past him. The guy is very surprised by the presence of the jealous fencing Master Jerry. He wonders what he is doing here. Fencing Master Jerry offers to continue the conversation that was interrupted earlier. Lin Fan realizes that Fencing Master Jerry works for the Xiao family and is Tsun's personal guard. Looking around the room, the guy comes to the conclusion that Fencing Master Jerry killed a large number of people before Lin Fan got here. Swordsman Jerry tells Lin Fan that he has never killed an innocent person and everything he does is an act of love. Tsun orders Fencing Master Jerry to guard the top floor of the building and not let any members of Zhao's team through. Fencing Master Jerry meekly agrees to the received order. Tsun and Yachun leave the room, leaving the girl turns to Jerry and waves goodbye to him. Yachun asks Fencing Master Jerry to be careful and fight with dignity. The Fencing Master Jerry is overwhelmed with feelings. He stands motionless, watching the departing Yachun. Tsun and Yachun leave in the elevator. Jerry stands motionless and looks at the elevator doors for a long time. The feeling of love destroys the fencing master Jerry, he loses control over himself. Yachun's gaze can make a hero's blood boil and cloud his mind. Fencing master Jerry considers Yachun the most beautiful girl in the world, he is ready to carry out any orders and give his life for her. He decides to kill Lin Fan, remembering his wonderful days spent with Yachun. Fencing Master Jerry tells Lin Fan that the guy has not known love and has no right to take Yachun from him. Lin Fan, realizing that Swordsman Jerry has lost his mind, turns around and runs away. The voice of Fencing Master Jerry is heard, ordering Lin Fan to stop immediately. The guy does not turn around and continues to run. Lin Fan runs into the elevator car. He needs to get to the top floor of the building as soon as possible. The guy presses the button several times, but the doors refuse to close. In an irritated state, Lin Fan continues to press the elevator button. He hears Fencing Master Jerry shouting curses behind him. The elevator doors are still open. Lin Fan is thinking about how to get rid of the crazy swordsman. The elevator fails Lin Fan. The guy realizes that Fencing Master Jerry is already very close. The Fencing Master runs into the elevator cabin. Lin Fan expects a blow from him, but Jerry hesitates. He begins to tell the story of his family to the guy. Jerry explains that his family was an ancient order of knights that combined Western and Japanese traditions. The family of the fencing master Jerry was very famous for a long time in European countries. Throughout the continent, they had no equal in the martial art. In modern times, the Jerry family began to use new technologies to overcome the physical limitations of warriors. Numerous training in symbiosis with modern technology creates powerful knights capable of fighting hundreds of enemies. The swordsman tells the guy that he has no choice. He must kill Lin Fan for the honor of the family and his love for Yachun. Fencing Master Jerry presses the elevator button with the tip of his sword. Lin Fan is deep in his thoughts. The fencing master tells him that he will give the guy an easy death. Lin Fan notices that the elevator car is too narrow, so it will be difficult for him to use his super abilities. The guy invites the fencing master to go out into the corridor for a duel. Jerry agrees to Lin Fan's proposal. Fencing Master Jerry believes that this situation is predetermined by fate. Jerry starts talking about his beautiful princess again, but Lin Fan abruptly interrupts him and informs the Swordmaster that his beautiful princess is actually a prince. Fencing Master Jerry is surprised at the guy's courage. 
Lin Fan admires how skillfully Yachun pretends to be a woman. Lin Fan's revelations do not have much impact on Jerry. The fencing master intends to eliminate the third wheel. Jerry gets into a fighting stance and uses his magic, calling on the power of Hermes. The space is filled with a fiery glow. The fencing master Jerry is ready to use magical power. Lin Fan watches what is happening in surprise. He has no experience in resisting such magical skill. Swordsman Jerry tells Lin Fan that it is time to pay for his actions. Lin Fan, devoid of any sense of fear, accepts the challenge of the fencing master with his head held high. Jerry begins the fight. His combat movements occur at tremendous speed. The guy is not able to track the enemy's trajectory. The fencing master approaches Lin Fan with lightning speed. The guy does not have time to react to his maneuver. Jerry's speed stuns Lin Fan. He does not understand where the enemy is at the moment. The guy turns around at the sound of malicious laughter, but the fencing master is no longer in his original place. Lin Fan realizes that it is urgent to take action against the power of Hermes that Jerry is using. The guy decides to calm down and pull himself together, realizing that his excitement only plays into the hands of the enemy. The tip of fencing master Jerry's sharp sword approaches the back of Lin Fan's head. The guy remains calm. The fencing master, raising his sword over Lin Fan, asks him if he realized his insignificance compared to his strength. He tells the guy that Yachun prefers fast and experienced warriors, and Lin Fan has no chance. Lin Fan, assessing his capabilities, asks the fencing master for a short pause to collect his thoughts. Jerry nobly agrees with the guy's request. The fencing master rushes into another attack on the guy. Lin Fan intends to quickly adapt to the high-speed battle. The guy has the ability to record the movement of the fencing master, but his body does not have time to react. Lin Fan resorts to the help of the system. He asks her for advice on how to upgrade his skills. The system cannot answer the guy's question and activates a randomly selected skill. The guy stands with a cup of magic dumplings in his hands, not understanding how this can help him in the fight. Swordsman Jerry looks in bewilderment at Lin Fan standing in front of him with a large cup of magic dumplings. Lin Fan asks him to wait a few more seconds to prepare and continue the fight at full strength. After generating enough cups of magic dumplings, Lin Fan throws them at the swordsman. Jerry has difficulty dodging a large number of cups of dumplings flying at him. He thinks Lin Fan's trick is idiotic. The number of points on the system balance allows Lin Fan to generate enough portions to temporarily stop the fencing master. Lin Fan considers the idea of magic dumplings not so bad. In addition, the guy receives a new skill from the system. The fencing master is even more angered by Lin Fan's antics and rushes into a decisive attack. Lin Fan miraculously dodges the deadly blow of Jerry's sword and tries to jump to a safe distance. Fencing master Jerry demonstrates excellent sword technique. He believes that by using his final attack, he will be able to finish off the guy. Thoughts of Yachun do not leave him. Lin Fan launches a counterattack and lands a series of successful strikes on the swordsman. Jerry, struck by Lin Fan's blows, falls backwards to the ground. The initiative in the battle passes to the guy. Swordsman Jerry wonders how he could have missed Lin Fan's attack. His signature move had never failed before. Lin Fan tells his opponent that he is the number one best swordsman student. Jerry can't believe that such a simple guy like Lin Fan can be Yulong's disciple. A wave of fierce hatred fills Jerry. He calls on the power of Hermes, rushing into another attack. By activating the system's skills to maximum power, Lin Fan deftly repels all enemy attacks. The fencing master's attack is unsuccessful. He receives a worthy rebuff and is knocked out. The power of Hermes allows the fencing master to quickly recover and continue the fight. Lin Fan has enough strength and skills gained from the system to resist Jerry. The voice of Jerry is heard who once again calls on the power of Hermes to his aid. The system informs the guy that it is time to end the fight, since there is very little time left to complete the mission. Lin Fan leaves his opponent and runs towards the elevator. The system's virtual screen accompanies his run. The defeated fencing master Jerry lies motionless on the floor. He no longer poses a threat to the guy. Lin Fan wonders where Master Poison might be now, and whether everything is okay with him. Master Poison... Having activated his poisonous gas, continues the battle with an enemy superior in strength. He hits the most vulnerable parts of the forest route, trying to neutralize its nasty toothy buds. The forces are too unequal. Master Poison receives numerous wounds and is very tired. The onslaught of the forest route does not weaken. 
Musugan reminds Master Poison that he has not yet seen the full power and capabilities of the Forest Root. The Forest Root transforms into a large number of individual animal plants, which slowly approach the Master Poison. Master Poison believes that he has enough strength to repel this hellish attack. Musugan enjoys the fight. She believes that the Master does not have the slightest chance of salvation. Not wanting to become food for animal plants, Master Poison resorts to removing another seal of protection from his poisonous glove. Musugan holds in his hands protoplasm, which is used for unlimited regeneration of animal plants. She throws clots of protoplasm towards the defeated and motionless animal plants. The protoplasm instantly revives them. They let out a loud roar and rush into battle. Opening its disgusting, toothy mouth, the huge plant beast heads towards the master poison. The plant beast grows larger and larger, emitting a loud roar and slowly surrounding master poison. Musigan continues to scatter clots of protoplasm onto the destroyed parts of the forest root. Loud laughter from Musugen is heard, and she invites Master Poison to surrender, claiming that he has no chance of winning. Master Poison concentrates a huge amount of poison in his unlocked glove. He does not give in to Musugen's intimidation and decides to fight her to the end. Young Master Poison, before joining the Zhao family, served in a dark organization of assassins, Young Master Poison stands opposite his boss and receives detailed instructions on his new task. Poison used a design with an ideal needle capable of spreading poison throughout the body with a single blow. He intended to perfectly complete the task assigned to him and eliminate the object with a handshake. Poison did not suspect that his own design would be unreliable, and the result was that the Master was poisoned. The organization abandoned Master Poison after a failed mission. He is rescued by the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Master Poison does not intend to disappoint the Zhao family, since he owes her a lot. Musugan, touched by the life story of the Master of Poison, looks at him with admiration. Master Poison screams loudly, doubling the generation of poisonous gas. A huge poisonous gas cloud forms around the Master and begins to spread around very quickly. The beast plants convulse and emit a heart-rending roar. The poisonous gas destroys them. Musugan, Seeing that her creation is dying in terrible suffering, screams loudly and calls on Master Poison to stop. A huge, poisonous gas field envelops everything around her. Musugan's loud scream is interrupted as she loses consciousness. Master Poison realizes the enormous power of his poison, which has proven so destructive. Musugan's lifeless body falls to the ground along with her disgusting creatures. Master Poison, struck by his own poison and numerous wounds, is unable to stand on his feet. Musugan and Master Poison lie unconscious opposite each other, surrounded by numerous bodies of plant animals. The elevator doors open, and inside the cabin there is the lifeless body of a young man. Lin Fan shows no signs of life. His glassy, lifeless eyes are aimed at the roof of the elevator car. A huge shadow belonging to a mysterious stranger approaches the guy's body. A mysterious stranger of enormous stature carefully examines the guy's body. The stranger is the guard on the last floor, he comes very close to the guy's body. The system informs Lin Fan that a strongest opponent awaits him on the sixth floor, and he must purchase items or activate new skills. The system offers the guy to use a new superpower in the form of creating a full-fledged biological copy. Lin Fan admires his clone but is not satisfied with the lifeless look of the copy. The guy sends his clone to the door of the main office, while he himself remains to observe what is happening. The clone confidently walks towards the armored door. Lin Fan looks after him with excitement. Strange sounds and knocks are heard behind the armored door, attracting Lin Fan's attention. The guy thanks the system for his new superpowers. He hopes that with their help, he will easily defeat his opponents. Before he could even walk ten steps, Lin Fan's clone was hit by a powerful energy attack, knocking him off his feet. The mysterious defender of the last floor, using his magic, deals with the clone of Lin Fan. The guy addresses the system, expressing his outrage at the cruelty to which his clone is subjected. Taking advantage of the fact that the huge stranger is busy with the Lin Fan clone, the guy runs past the guard with lightning speed to the treasure door. Lin Fan's speed is so enormous that the guard on the top floor cannot see the guy in the whirlwind that rushed past him. A huge stranger looks at the armored door of the main office, not understanding what is happening. The system tells the running Lin Fan that he must be careful and should not underestimate his new enemy. A huge, gloomy stranger using his biofield delivers a control blow to the Lin Fan clone. The guy, being at a safe distance, secretly watches everything that happens near the elevator. 
Yachun, seeing what is happening, experiences inexpressible annoyance and despair. This is reflected on her face. The mutilated body of the Lin Fan clone lies on the floor of the elevator car, a grimace of dying horror imprinted on his face. Yachun cannot contain her emotions and begins to cry bitterly, talking out loud to herself about what she has done. Lin Fan quickly approaches the top floor guard with the intention of striking unexpectedly. The guy concentrates all his strength. He raises his hand in order to deliver a strong blow. Suddenly the stranger turns around. Lin Fan recognizes the guard as Yachun. The guy is very surprised. Lin Fan can't believe that Yachun is in front of him. He looks at her with wide eyes. Lin Fan, shocked by this development, asks Yachun what she is doing here. The girl asks the guy how he feels and if everything is okay with him. A satisfied smile appears on the girl's face. She is glad that the guy's clone was destroyed and not Lin Fan himself. The Lin Fan clone lying in the elevator begins to collapse and turn into a puddle of liquid clay. Lin Fan tells the girl that he tried to create a person, but first he decided to experiment with clay. The guy suddenly interrupts the conversation and quickly runs towards the armored doors. Lin Fan's running stops the explosion of a huge fireball. The guy turns around and looks at the girl. The blast wave quickly spreads throughout the room. Lin Fan deftly dodges its impact. Yachun apologizes and tells Lin Fan that he cannot let him inside. The guy is very upset by the girl's intentions. He looks at her with a sad look. Moji draws the string of his huge bow and intends to shoot the granddaughter of the elder in Zhao running towards him. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao deftly dodges a huge arrow flying at her. The girl jumps high in the air to strike the Moji fitness trainer. Moji receives a powerful straight right hand blow from the elder's granddaughter. The force of the blow is colossal. He drops the bow from his hands. The fitness trainer falls. He realizes that his level of combat skill is not enough to resist the girl. Elder Zhao's granddaughter says that she can fight well without using mechanical gloves. The fitness trainer gathers his strength to get to his feet and continue the fight. Elder Zhao's granddaughter performs a kick, but the fitness trainer is unable to block her kick. The girl walks slowly towards the fitness trainer in order to finish what she started. She crosses her arms over her chest and kneads her knuckles. The girl decides that the fitness trainer must answer for everything in full. Elder Zhao's granddaughter takes a fighting stance, intending to defend the honor of the Zhao family. Moji no longer expects to win and is thinking about how to get out of the fight with the least damage. He pushes off the ground and leaps high into the air to deliver his signature punch. The girl's attention is attracted by a flash of bright light, creating a radiant aura around the fitness trainer. Moji uses his ability called transformation and flying boots appear on his feet. His body transforms into a perfect athletic figure dressed in antique clothing. Fitness trainer Moji becomes a combination of great strength, aesthetic taste, and great love. An energy bow appears in Moji's hands and he slowly draws the string, preparing for the girl's next attack. A fitness trainer shoots a huge fire arrow at the granddaughter of Elder Zhao, intending to incinerate the girl. Elder Zhao's granddaughter delivers a well-practiced taekwondo strike to the fitness trainer, which Moji could not resist. With thoughts about the need to study taekwondo, the fitness trainer loses consciousness. Elder Zhao's granddaughter hurries to join Lin Fan, realizing that she has wasted a lot of time dueling with the fitness trainer. The girl runs down the corridor, hoping that Lin Fan is still alive and has not failed the operation. Elder Zhao's granddaughter considers Lin Fan to be a sneaky type, however. She does not want him to die in this task. The girl takes off her shoes in order to approach her opponents as quietly and unnoticed as possible. Suddenly, Elder Zhao's granddaughter stops as she sees the eerie sight before her eyes. Carefully approaching the elevator car, the girl presses the call button, thinking that this might be Lin Fan's blood. Her thoughts are interrupted by the sound of the elevator doors opening, and she raises her head to look ahead. Suddenly, from the open doors of the elevator, Mei attacks the granddaughter of Elder Zhao in a furious attack. Having repulsed Mei's unexpected attack, the granddaughter of Elder Zhao retreats back to a more advantageous position. Elder Zhao's granddaughter suspects Mei of killing Lin Fan. For Mei, it is a shock to learn that Lin Fan is a contract groom for the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Vivid images of Lin Fan's possible future life with the Elder's granddaughter appear in her mind. Recalling her past Taekwondo training, the granddaughter of Elder Zhao realizes that she always emerged victorious in her fights with Mei. Mei is indignant that the Elder's granddaughter wants to take away Lin Fan, with whom she is secretly in love. 
the granddaughter of Elder Zhao is determinedly ready for a serious fight with her new opponent. Mei sends angry curses towards the Elder's granddaughter and wishes her a shameful loss. The girl believes that she will fight until her last breath, and only death can stop her. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is confident that her taekwondo skills will allow her to win easily. She jumps high into the air and pounces on Mei, hoping to perform a high-speed attack. Mei skillfully steps back, competently parrying the biting blows of the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Elder Zhao's granddaughter delivers a series of sidekicks to Mei's head. Mei gains enough distance and kicks her opponent. Elder Zhao's granddaughter skillfully avoids the blow. Her movements are smooth and harmonious. The girl counters Mei. She uses her signature kick called a whip kick. Mei makes a mistake in defense and the blow from Elder Zhao's granddaughter hits her head. Elder Zhao's granddaughter tells her opponent that all her efforts have brought no results. Mei pushes off the ground intending to punish Elder Zhao's granddaughter for her arrogance. The girl performs a series of masterful kicks to the body of the granddaughter of Elder Zhao. Mei's eyes glow with fire. She intends to emerge victorious in today's battle at all costs. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao is outraged by Mei's impudence and treachery. The girl is unable to overcome her irritation. She is outraged by the use of prohibited techniques by her opponent. For a moment, the fight stops. The girls stand motionless and look into each other's eyes. Elder Zhao's granddaughter has a great desire to slap Mei's cheeks. Mei is outraged that Elder Zhao's granddaughter is rejoicing at the blows she missed. A feeling of wild rage overshadows Mei's mind. She rushes into a furious attack. Mei grabs Elder Zhao's granddaughter by the hair, intending to tear out a clump of hair. Elder Zhao's granddaughter tells Mei that she shouldn't touch her hair because it costs her a lot to maintain. The girls come together in an aggressive clinch, trying to ruin each other's hairstyles as much as possible. Elder Zhao's granddaughter begins to doubt that Mei was involved in Lin Fan's death. Mei explains that she had to break the family rules because of Lin Fan, and therefore this fight is a mere trifle for her. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao suggests not to waste time on a pointless fight, but to save Lin Fan if he is so dear to Mei. The girls take a long break to get themselves in order after the fight. They run in the direction of the elevator, throwing cutting, sarcastic phrases at each other. Ya Chun does not want to let the guy into the main office. She shoots a huge plasma field towards Lin Fan. The guy jumps to the side, away from the fiery whirlwind. He realizes that his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills are not enough to neutralize Ya Chun. Lin Fan decides to resort to cunning and use the skill of acupuncture massage. Ya Chun guesses the guy's intentions. She considers such manipulations completely harmless to herself. Lin Fan approaches Ya Chun and presses the secret acupuncture point on the ninth meridian. An uncontrolled release of a huge amount of energy occurs. Lin Fan is thrown aside. The guy urgently requests information from the system about what kind of unknown protection the girl used. The system tells Lin Fan that this type of defense is a complex martial art, which is unattainable for him at this stage of training. Lin Fan asks Ya Chun how she has such unique fighting skills. Ya Chun is very worried and tells the guy that now she cannot reveal many secrets. Lin Fan insists that the girl tell him what kind of relationship she has with the Xiao family. Suddenly, fencing master Jerry appears in the corridor. He moves intermittently towards Lin Fan. Screaming wildly, Jerry throws his sword forward and rushes at the guy, intending to protect Ya Chun. Lin Fan says that the sword master is starting to annoy him and stabs him. The guy is perplexed as to how a fencing master could end up here. The girl replies that Jerry has the ability to use the emergency ladder. Ya Chun tells the fencing master that she forgot his name and asks him to introduce himself. Lying on the floor, the fencing master tries to pronounce his name, but he can only make inaudible sounds. A wave of convulsions runs through Jerry's body. He is in a very critical condition. Lin Fan believes that Swordsman Jerry had a very heroic death. The guy asks the system for information on how he can take control of Ya Chun's abilities. Wushu Master Jian stands over the body of the defeated Bai Hu. He is about to return to the main office to help the guards. Wushu Master John heads towards the main office, talking about the pointlessness of resisting Bai Hu. The girl gradually begins to regain consciousness. She lies motionless so as not to attract attention to herself. Bai Hui remembers her childhood when her father told her about her family, which has held legendary power for hundreds of years. The father tells Bai Hu that the undead energy of her family members in a dying state is activated. This energy allows you to get a short-term vision of the future, 
but at the same time it poses a danger to the wearer as it can kill him. Father Baihu warns that this power is too unpredictable and will likely cause many problems in the future. Bai Hui receives a farewell message from her father, who wishes her a long and happy life. The girl almost completely comes to her senses and begins to slowly get to her feet. Wushu Master Jian expects to receive a large fee for performing his work. Jian hears strange sounds behind him. He turns around and is very surprised at what he sees. Bai Hu quietly hums a marching march and marches along the wall with an army step. The girl does not pay attention to the Wushu Master John and, as if nothing had happened, continues to march. Bai Hu stops his parade march and tells Wushu Master Jian about what a handsome young guy he is. Wushu Master John is very surprised. He does not understand how Bai Hu could survive. John activates his cybernetic combat gauntlet. The LED indicator on it informs about the activation. He rushes to attack Bai Hu. His surprise knows no bounds. He still cannot believe that the girl is alive. Bai Hu moves away from the line of attack with deft dance movements. The master's blows do not reach her. Wushu Master John does not understand how the girl could know the trajectory of his movement and avoid his deadly shuriken. Bai Hu is subject to short-term vision of the future. It is not difficult for her to repel the blows of the master. Jian activates the plasma weapon function on his cybernetic glove. He is sure that the girl will not be able to resist the plasma rays. Believing that the girl has no chance, Wushu Master Jian fires a series of deadly plasma beams at her. He stands opposite the place where Bai Hu was a second ago, but the girl is not in her original place. Bai Hu sneaks up behind the Wushu Master and grabs him tightly. This is a big surprise for Jian. The girl showers the Wushu Master with compliments. Continuing to hold him tightly, Jian loses his composure. He screams loudly. Wushu Master Jian demands that the girl let him go immediately and threatens to grind her into powder. Bai Hu does not loosen her grip. She uses a chokehold together with love magic. The girl's efforts are not in vain. The Wushu Master Jian loses the ability to resist and falls to the ground in an unconscious state. Lin Fan aggressively demands that Ya Chun immediately answer the question of why she is working for the Xiao family. The girl apologizes to the guy and says that even if she wants to, she cannot tell him the whole truth now. Lin Fan does not want to cause Ya Chun suffering, but the girl leaves him no choice. The system informs the guy that the main flow of the enemy's energy is concentrated in his abdominal cavity. The guy, with the help of his superpowers, generates a powerful energy field around his fist and raises his hand to strike. Hoping to break through the defense and knowing the enemy's weak points, Lin Fan hits the abdominal area. In his attack, the guy uses all the power of his boxing skill and the speed received from the system. A huge release of energy occurs. Ya Chun's force field remains unharmed and the guy is thrown tens of meters away. Lin Fan tries incredibly hard to stay in place, but the energy wind knocks him down. The system tells the guy that the stronger his attack, the stronger the response will be generated. The girls are in the elevator car incessant arguments and clarification of the relationship between them can be heard. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao wonders why they have not yet met worthy resistance from the guards. Mei begins to remember all the opponents who blocked their path to the main office. The girl wonders where the daughter of the maid Wei might be now, and whether she emerged victorious in the fight. On one of the lower floors, the daughter of the maid Wei and the massage master Miao Shu are lying exhausted on the floor. Maid Wei's daughter gradually regains consciousness. She raises her head and looks at her opponent. Massage Master Miao Shu recovered quite quickly. She intends to gather her strength and get back on her feet. Maid Wei's daughter remembers how skillfully she used the secret massage technique. The girl believes that, being the youngest and strongest student at the Faculty of Education, she could achieve greater results than now lying on the floor in the business center building. Massage Master Miao Shu considers himself much more talented and capable than Maid Wei's daughter. There is a skirmish between the girls. They argue about which of them is the best massage master in the city. The girls learn that they studied at the same educational institution, the only difference being that they graduated at different times. Maid Wei's daughter asks her new acquaintance why she chose the path of martial arts. Massage Master Miao Shu says that the main reason was getting into the university elite class. She had to put in a lot of effort to climb the social ladder. The main goal of Miao Shu was to join the cast of great masters of world-class massage services. 
For the maid's daughter, Wei, it remains a mystery why Miaoshu works for the Xiao family. Massage master Miaoshu explains that in a difficult life situation, she had no choice but to start working for the Xiao family. The maid's daughter, Wei, calms the girl down and tells her that everything will be fine in the future. She tells her new friend that she also has a difficult fate. Miaoshu develops a strong sympathy for the maid's daughter, Wei, and her hatred leaves no trace. Close friendships are established between the girls. They agree to solve all sorts of problems together in the future and deal with their enemies. Maidway's daughter offers to settle accounts with the Xiao family for all the trouble she caused them. Massage master Miaoshu agrees with the girl, but suddenly their conversation is interrupted by a strong blow. The force of the blow is enormous, and the massage master flies to the side, turning over in the air. Maid Wei's daughter doesn't understand who could have done this. She turns around. Her gaze stops at Mei, who considers her maid's daughter a traitor. Maid Wei's daughter is outraged by the treacherous attack on her new friend and goes on the attack. Mei makes short work of the maid's daughter Wei. She tells her that she doesn't have time and leaves. The granddaughter of the elder Zhao, together with Mei, stand in front of the elevator door. They count how many opponents each of them neutralized. Elder Zhao's granddaughter doubts Mei's fighting feats and makes sarcastic remarks towards her. Artificial intelligence informs the operator that the program has been activated successfully. Tsun believes that his ingenious plan has no analogs in the whole world. He is proud of his work. Lin Fan stands at a safe distance from Yachin and does not dare to attack first. The system informs the guy that his current level of combat skill does not allow him to fight on equal terms with his opponent. Yachun is at a loss. She doesn't understand how a simple student can resist her. Lin Fan asks the system to activate new combat skills for him. The system offers him a lottery. Li Fan does not want to continue the battle with Yachun. He runs away from the battlefield. The system is shocked by the guy's reaction. The guy quickly runs towards the armored door, fearing that Soon has already managed to realize his evil plan. Colossal electrical discharges block Lin Fan's path. He cannot break through the energy field. Falling into despair, the guy realizes that his abilities are not enough to resist Yachun. The guy slowly turns towards the girl. He is still in a state of shock from the electric shock. The system prompts Lin Fan to cast an F-level secret spell. Lin Fan asks Yachun to immediately stop interfering with his plan. He does not want to harm her. Yachun explains to the guy that she doesn't want to hurt him either, but she has obligations that she must fulfill. Lin Fan asks the system to play the lottery again and give him a random combat skill. Yachun has a great desire to radically change his entire life. But secret obligations force her to confront Lin Fan, and she concentrates a plasma field in her hand. Her manipulations with energy are interrupted by Lin Fan standing opposite him with a huge number of portions of magic dumplings. Yachun asks the guy where this food came from here. Lin Fan asks her to let him through the door again. Yachun categorically refuses, explaining that he cannot do this. Lin Fan believes that he has done everything he can, leaving him with no choice but to use his fighting skills against the girl. The guy runs with all his might in the direction of Yachun. The girl does not leave her position, preparing to repel the attack. The room lights up with a crimson light as Yachun activates a defense called Black Iron Armor. Li Fan is almost close to the girl. She asks him to stop resisting, believing that the guy will not succeed. The girl demands that Lin Fan immediately stop his attack, otherwise she will have to destroy the guy. Lin Fan delivers an energy strike to the enemy's most vulnerable spot, a secret point in the abdominal area. With the help of his skills, the guy hopes to break through the defense called Black Iron Armor. He manages to knock Yachun down. The girl is in great pain. Lin Fan apologizes. He takes the girl's hand and activates an acupuncture point that can eliminate pain. Yachun is surprised by the quick effect of pressing the acupuncture point. Her pain instantly disappears. The guy doubts whether to use other acupuncture points to immobilize Yachun. Voices are heard saying that only the grave will correct the pervert. The guy turns around sharply. Standing in front of him are the granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Mei, who are watching Lin Fan fight with Yachun. Elder Zhao's daughter asks the guy who the girl is on whom he is performing acupuncture massage. Lin Fan says it's a long story, but promises to tell it very quickly in a short form. While at the medical department, Lin Fan tells the story of how Yachun came to visit and felt severe pain in her stomach. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao delivers a powerful blow with his right hand, and Mei, standing nearby, loudly shouts at the guy. The girls quarrel among themselves, 
they loudly sort things out, deciding who will punish Lin Fan first. The knocked out Lin Fan is lying on the floor. He asks the system for help, but the system is unable to help him in this situation. Mei is annoyed that Elder Zhao's granddaughter hit a guy in the face and asks Lin Fan how much it hurt him. The guy does not have time to answer. Mei, in a fit of wild jealousy, attacks Lin Fan, demanding an immediate explanation. Having not received a clear answer from the guy, the girl delivers a technical hook to his jaw with her right hand. Lin Fan tries to collect his thoughts. Crawling on the floor, he hears loud screams of girls arguing among themselves. Yachen is watching what is happening very carefully. She still cannot understand what is happening here. Yachun asks the guy who these girls are and why they staged strange proceedings here. Tsun is located in the armored main office of the business center and watches what is happening on the big screen. He is extremely dissatisfied with the presence of his sister in the business center and does not understand how she managed to escape from home. Through a hidden intercom located in Yachun's ear, she receives further instructions. Soon says that it is necessary to delay the opponents a little longer, since the programming of the chip is not yet completed. Soon praises Yachun for the work she has done and reassures her that the chip capable of making her dream come true is almost ready. Soon says that he worked hard to make Yachun's dream a reality. Yachun intends to get rid of both girls and Lin Fan decides to let them live. Mei and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao, not paying attention to those around them, continue to sort things out. Yachun confidently walks towards the girls. Tsun orders her not to use lethal weapons on his sister, but simply to limit her movement. Lin Fan, together with the system, are carefully watching the fight between the granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Mei. The guy sees Yachun approaching them. He shouts out to her, trying to stop her. Lin Fan tries to move from his place, but he fails. He is very surprised. The system informs the guy that magic rope ties have been used against him. The girls freeze in place stopping the fight and look attentively at the guy. Yachen uses magic rope ties to block Lin Fan without harming him. The guy has a lot of questions for Yachun. He immediately wants answers to them. Lin Fan can no longer restrain his emotions and tells the girl that Soon is a villain and the very last scoundrel. The guy sees Yachun Mei approaching. He screams loudly, intending to stop what is happening. Mei delivers a series of strong kicks to Yachun, Despite the fact that the girl is her brother's subordinate, she intends to take revenge for Lin Fan. Mei's attack does not cause any damage to Yachun. The girl activates her energy field and throws Mei away at a great distance from herself. Mei is unable to move as her body is wrapped in magical rope ties. Unable to move, the girl is unable to stay on her feet. Uttering a curse, she falls to the floor. Lin Fan is once again going to solve the problem through negotiations. He continues to persuade Yachun to stop protecting the head office. Yachun begins to get very annoyed by the guy's behavior. She finds him too annoying. Lin Fan learns from the system that Yachun has not been a human for a long time. This greatly surprises him. Yachun agrees that she has undergone a physical transformation, but she claims that she still has human feelings and emotions. Taking advantage of the fact that Yachun was distracted by a conversation with Lin Fan, the granddaughter of Elder Zhao suddenly attacks her. In a split second, the black iron armor is activated, effectively protecting Yachun. Lin Fan shouts loudly to Elder Zhao's granddaughter, telling her to be careful. Elder Zhao's granddaughter's attack collides with Yachun's black iron armor. The elder's granddaughter is unable to break through such a powerful defense. Elder Zhao's granddaughter jumps back, realizing the power of the forbidden black iron armor. She is surprised by the fact that Yachun uses black iron armor, since only her family knows this secret. For the granddaughter of the Elder Zhao, it is a mystery who Yachun really is. Elder Zhao's granddaughter asks Yachun how she got the skill to use black iron armor. Yachun answers her. She says that these are complex techniques, but with proper training they can be mastered quickly. Lin Fan demands that Yachun immediately answer all of Elder Zhao's granddaughter's questions. The Elder's granddaughter suspects Yachun of involvement in the disappearance of martial artists. Yachun says that she was a student at the university's martial arts department. Her progress was impressive and she showed great hope for the future. However, this did not suit Yachun, since her true dream was to become a great star in show business. After spending more than a year at the university and attending the martial arts department, Yachun eventually decided to drop out and follow her dream. Yachun began her career as a streamer, spending long hours working, but her popularity remained low. 
One day she met Tsun, who came to her with a business proposal. Tsun, having significant financial resources of his family, promised to help her realize her old dream. The easiest way for Yachun to realize this dream was to use the power of technology. Yachun underwent surgery to transform her body into which a chip was integrated, allowing her to have several thousand skills, allowing her to become the most famous streamer in the world. However, this was not enough for her, and Yachun continued the transformation of her body, turning into a cyborg. The girl acquired more and more unique skills, often unrelated to show business. When Yachun defeats her enemies, she is able to take their unique abilities and skills for herself. Yachun leaves his opponents alive, only takes away their abilities and skills. The power of the magical rope ties weakens. Lin Fan tries to quietly free himself from their captivity. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao believes that the effect of magic rope ties is limited in time. The elder's granddaughter considers Yachun a naive and stupid girl who allowed herself to be manipulated. Yachun does not want to believe the elder's granddaughter. She believes that Soon cannot deceive her. Yachun says that Soon did a lot to make her dream come true, the goal of which was to become an ideal show business star. Yachun turns his attention to Lin Fan. She asks the guy if he is okay. Mei is infuriated by the number of competitors around her. She cannot contain her emotions. Yachun never gives up on her goals. She intends to achieve her goal by any means necessary. The granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Mei attack Yachun, intending to destroy the cyborg. Lin Fan is unhappy with this development and orders the fight to be stopped immediately to calmly discuss the situation. Elder Zhao's granddaughter reminds Lin Fan of the purpose of their presence here and asks him to pull himself together. Without stopping, the girls shower Yachun with powerful blows and she fights them off with great difficulty. Lin Fan insists on his own and demands that the girls immediately stop the battle and come to an agreement. Suddenly, the girls' attack stops. Mei and the granddaughter of Elder Zhao freeze motionless in place. Elder Zhao's granddaughter realizes that she cannot move. Her muscles are paralyzed and refuse to listen to her orders. Lin Fan is surprised at how limitless Yachun's fighting abilities are, which she uses in battle. Yachun believes that the time has come to get rid of annoying competitors and finish what he started. The girl activates her black iron armor skill. The energy pressure scatters the attackers in different directions. Mei tries to group herself and stay on her feet. She is in hellish pain. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao is thinking about how she can deactivate the enemy's black iron armor. The elder's granddaughter decides to confront Yachun with her impeccable manipulation technique. She asks Yachun how many martial artists the cyborg killed in order to take over their secret skills. Yachun tells Elder Zhao's granddaughter that she only takes secret skills, leaving opponents alive. The elder's granddaughter does not believe a single word uttered by the cyborg, especially her humane approach. Lin Fan demands Tsun to immediately open the armored door and stop activating the stolen microprocessor. Elder Zhao's granddaughter calls Lin Fan an idiot, and orders him to find another entrance to the main office. Yachun says she has been a proponent of peaceful solutions to problems all her life. She clenches her fist, her knuckles cracking loudly. This time, Yachun is ready to resort to drastic measures. Yachun begins the process of activating his black iron armor. The room is filled with a heavy crimson light. Yachun is in a very surprised state and is unable to activate her black iron armor. Elder Zhao's granddaughter asks Yachun in a sarcastic manner about what happened to her. Mei decides that now is the right moment to strike the decisive blow against the cyborg. The system prompts the guy to immediately find the entrance to the main office, since he has very little time left. Lin Fan sees the Taoist energy protection on the doors of the main office. The guy does not have the slightest idea to solve this problem. The guy thinks he has found a brilliant idea on how to get inside the main office. Yachun realizes that she can no longer use her black iron armor. Without her help, the girl's powers are limited. Realizing that the fighting capabilities have become equal, the granddaughter of the Elder Zhao attacks Yachun. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao is going to deal with the girl and return the processor to its rightful owner. Even without the use of magical skills, Yachun's hand-to-hand -hand combat technique is very good. The girl blocks the attack of the Elder's granddaughter. Mei uses her effective kicks against Yachun, but this does not lead to the desired result. Yachun, having a huge superiority in speed, deftly repels all of Mei's blows. The cyborg inflicts a powerful kick on Mei, throwing the girl tens of meters away. Despite the fact that Mei is in severe pain, she intends to continue the fight. 
The granddaughter of Elder Zhao recognizes in the Yachun fighting technique the style of a disappeared family whose martial art was one of the best in the country. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao has no doubt that the cyborg destroyed a large number of great masters, taking their fighting skills for himself. Yachun effectively uses the numerous combat skills she took from the defeated masters. The system believes that the capabilities of the granddaughter of elders Zhao and Mei are not enough to cope with the cyborg. Lin Fan selects a random skill suggested by the system, and a huge number of cups of magic dumplings appear around him. The guy is disappointed by the lack of ability to choose skills. He doesn't like random super abilities. The system informs Lin Fan that these actions are necessary in order to be able to receive second-level items. A guy buys a second-level super ability from the system. The system informs him that the skill will be delivered soon. For Yachun, it is not difficult to dodge the blows of Elder Zhao's granddaughter. Yachun moves gracefully and blocks all of his opponent's strikes. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao admires the cyborg's excellent technique and her ability to maintain a balance between attack and defense. Even though Mei uses the most effective Taekwondo techniques, they have no effect on Yachun. Mei's attack ends in another failure. Yachun's reaction is very fast, and it is almost impossible to win it in close combat. The girls look carefully at the cyborg. They hope to find a weak spot in her defense. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao realizes where Yachun has the weakest point in her defense. She rushes into the attack with lightning speed, trying to get closer to the cyborg as quickly as possible. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao delivers a light diversionary blow to Yachun's head. She hopes that the cyborg will not be able to recognize her plan. Yachun blocks the attack of the elder's granddaughter with his hands raised high. She recognizes her deceptive maneuver. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao takes an advantageous position to deliver her main blow. The girl hits the heels of Yachun's shoes with great force, hoping that her plan will work. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao is very disappointed that her insidious plan was not realized. Yachun looks at the granddaughter of Elder Zhao with surprise and tells her that she is very naive and stupid. Yachun throws the granddaughter of Elder Zhao several meters away from him. She thinks that she needs to hold out for a few more minutes in order for the microprocessor to activate. The granddaughter of the Elder Zhao and Mei experience a feeling of great anger. They are completely helpless in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the cyborg. Yachun tells the girls that no one dares to stop her from realizing her dream. Lin Fan takes a very careful look at the new Tier 2 weapon that the system provided him with. The guy is surprised to find small nail clippers in his hands. He struggles to understand how this will help him in battle. Lin Fan believes that the system is bullying him at the most inopportune moment. The system tells the guy to throw all unnecessary thoughts out of his head and realize the enormous power that the most ordinary objects can give. The guy focuses on the nail clippers, the magical object is activated, and energy discharges coming from it fill the surrounding space. A strange-looking man appears in front of the guy whose name is Ganpachu. Lin Fan is extremely disliked by this man. He asks the system to stop mocking him. Ganpachu orders Lin Fan to calm down immediately and begins teaching the guy how to properly use the wire cutters. Lin Fan tries to cut the threads of the energy ropes, the remains of which were left after the battle. Ganpachu requires the guy to calm his mind and start cutting larger objects, such as the entrance to the main office. Lin Fan is greatly surprised to discover that the Taoist magic seal protecting the entrance to the main office has been removed. Ganpachu tells the guy that impossible things become possible if you believe in them. Ganpachu says goodbye to Lin Fan. He says that he will look forward to the next meeting and disappears into thin air. Lin Fan rejoices. He is pleased with himself as he finally managed to open the door to the main office. The guy's thoughts are interrupted by the loud conversation of the girl standing next to Yachun sitting on the floor. The granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Mei are determined to avenge the martial artist destroyed by the cyborg. Yachun tries to activate the skills she previously captured, but all her attempts are to no avail. The huge armored door of the main office emitting a slight grinding sound begins to slowly open. A voice is heard saying that today's show brought a lot of pleasant impressions. Lin Fan is under great stress. He does not know what is hidden behind the huge armored doors. Sun comes out of the main office with a leisurely gait. He calls those present scum and is outraged that they are trying to interfere with him. Yachun turns sharply towards the doors of the main office. She greets Tsun and says that she is glad to see him. 
Soon asks May how much she enjoys ruining the family company while teaming up with the misfits. May is unhappy with her brother's harsh remarks. She believes that the biggest threat to the company is Tsun himself. Lin Fan demands that Soon immediately stop the cheap farce and hand over all the developments along with the stolen microprocessor. Soon tells the guy that he has no right to interfere in the affairs of his family's business empire. Soon approaches Yachun and asks her how she is feeling after the tiring battle. The guy apologizes to the cyborg for the fact that his brilliant plan could not be realized. This information greatly upsets Yachun. She cannot hold back her tears. All her efforts were in vain. Elder Zhao's granddaughter demands to immediately explain in detail what Soon's brilliant plan was. Soon throws a secret flash drive to Elder Zhao's granddaughter, not intending to talk to her, and asks her to leave the premises, taking his intellectual property. Elder Zhao's granddaughter catches the flash card with her hand with a deft movement. She does not suspect that with her touch, she activates the information self-destruction program. Soon thinks hard about how the Zhao family got his sister on their side. Lin Fan believes that Soon will not get away with mere talk. He intends to punish him severely. Soon tells others that he is very busy and does not have time to continue empty conversations. Elder Zhao's granddaughter received the stolen flashcard and is thinking about what to do with Soon. The girl notices a burning sensation in her hand. The flashcard with secret information has been destroyed. Elder Zhao's granddaughter demands an explanation and orders Soon to be stopped immediately. Yachun, accompanied by Tsun, heads to the main office. Quiet, malicious laughter is heard. Tsun makes a temporary backup of the secret flashcard, which he takes out of his pocket. With a sharp movement of his hand, Tsun inserts the backup flashcard into the slot located on Yachun's neck. Yachun screams loudly. She freezes in a motionless position. Secret programs are downloaded into her brain. Lin Fan manages to notice the manipulation of the flashcard and tries to stop Tsun. Lin Fan is aware of the potential threat that the flashcard could pose to Yachun. The guy grabs Tsun's hand, but it's too late. The flashcard is inserted into the connector, and the download of information begins. Loud screams from the girls are heard. They tell Tsun that they consider him a treacherous bastard. Yachun wonders why her neck started to hurt so much. She asks Tsun what happened. The downloaded information from the flash drive forces Yachun's body and brain to work at maximum capacity. A huge energy field is formed around the cyborg's neck. It throws strong electrical discharges away from itself. The chip has been activated. It begins to penetrate the central nervous system through molecular penetration. Lin Fan is very worried about Yachun, but he is unable to do anything to help her. The elder's granddaughter Zhao and Mei carefully observe Yachun's unusual transformation. The activated chip has the ability to join the Xiao family's space communications network. The chip allows you to control people at great distances using the space constellation of satellites of the Xiao family. Sun believes that this technology gives it great opportunities to realize its plans. Yachun's body undergoes severe transformations, discharges of energy fields, and a girl's scream are heard. Yachun changes beyond recognition. She moves to a new level of using her fighting skills. Sun has a great desire to take over the whole world and rule it unlimitedly. Tsun's deep thoughts are interrupted by the voice of Yachun, who plaintively calls him. Yachun asks Tsun if he was deceiving her from the very beginning with his plan. Tsun tells the cyborg that the main goal of his ingenious plan was to realize Yachun's dream. Yachun begins to remember that after Tsun put something on her neck, she felt something strange. Cyborg comes to the conclusion that Tsun was using her to satisfy his selfish desires. Yachun is very upset by Tsun's actions, tears welling up in her beautiful eyes. Tsun says that perhaps there is some bitter truth in her words. Yachun intends to immediately sever all relations with Tsun and the Xiao family. Yachun is unable to understand how one can be such a vile and selfish creature. Tsun demands that the Zhao family team return his sister to him immediately. Lin Fan tells Tsun in an aggressive manner that he will now pay him back for all his vile deeds. The guy believes that the theft of a secret chip, Yachun's deception and vile slander are good enough reasons for severe punishment. Elder Zhao's granddaughter demands the chip be returned immediately. May asks Tsun to give the microprocessor back and return home. Tsun categorically refuses these demands. Lin Fan threatens him with brute physical force. Tsun says that if even a finger is touched on him, everyone present will immediately die a terrible death. 
Lin Fan raises his hand to strike and asks what such a statement could mean. Soon tells those present that he has programmed the microprocessor located in Yachun's body to self-destruct. To enhance the explosive effect, Soon placed TNT bombs within a three-kilometer radius. Yachun believes that only she can prevent this terrible catastrophe. Lin Fan appreciates Tsun's evil plan and wonders how Mei will be protected in the event of an explosion. Sister Tsun is very indignant. She cannot believe that her brother can kill her, realizing his crazy plans. Tsun tells Mei that she is a disgrace to him, and he never considered her his sister. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao, standing next to him, is very surprised by such family relationships. Tsun tells Yachun that the cooperation agreement is still valid, so he orders her to deal with Lin Fan. If the order is refused, Tsun intends to activate the self-destruct function of the microchip located in Yachun's body, which will lead to a huge explosion. Tsun continues to blackmail Yachun, telling her that he is ready to burn all her dreams with her. He gives Yachun two minutes of time for the girl to make a decision. Tsun tells her that in 20 minutes a helicopter will arrive that can pick them both up. Tsun turns towards Lin Fan, taking advantage of the situation, intending to punish the guy. Tsun beats up a defenseless guy who cannot resist for fear of activating the microchip. Yachun demands that Tsun stop immediately and stop beating the defenseless guy. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is surprised by the level of hatred present in Tsun. Mei's voice is heard, which speaks of the need to immediately stop the outrage. Knowing that the guy doesn't want to activate the chip's self-destruct process, Sun asks Lin Fan if he's ready to fight back. Lin Fan thinks about how quickly Sun will be able to leave the dangerous three-kilometer zone if he begins to resist. Yachun doesn't know what to do in this situation. The cyborg realizes how stupid she was in the past. Sun delivers a series of powerful punches to Lin Fan's body. The guy holds firm and continues to stand on his feet. Sun doesn't stop. He attacks Lin Fan furiously. His level of hatred is limitless. The granddaughter of the elder Zhao and Mei demand to immediately stop the unequal duel and come to an agreement. Lin Fan is defeated. He lies grouped on the ground. Tsun's voice is heard, which says that he will destroy the guy. Yachun cannot make up her mind, but she is sure that she does not want to die. Lin Fan faints, his lifeless body crashing to the ground. Tsun says that the guy ruined his best clothes from an expensive limited edition collection. In return for ruining the clothes, Tsun threatens to ruin Lin Fan's body. Mei demands that Soon immediately stop the massacre. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao hopes that Lin Fan will remain alive. The girls think that such a dramatic moment needs to be recorded on video. Yachun looks at them in bewilderment. Soon receives a signal that the helicopter has arrived and orders the roof to be opened. The heavy reinforced concrete roof slabs slowly move apart and the hum of helicopter rotors can be heard. From the roof of the business center there is an excellent view of the sleeping city at night illuminated by bright moonlight. A powerful lifting mechanism quickly lifts part of the floor to the roof. Soon says that he has done a great job, but no one can appreciate his efforts. He reports that the two minutes he was given to make a decision have long passed. Soon demands that Yachun give an immediate answer as to whether it will fulfill the terms of the contract. Soon orders Yachun to remove Lin Fan's arms and follow him into the helicopter that arrives. Soon asks Yachun with a sarcastic grin if she wants everything to blow up right now. Yachun informs those present that she has made her final decision. Mei awaits Yachun's response with great excitement, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter ponders further options for events. Lin Fan's tension reaches its peak, and cold sweat runs down his face. Yachun dances cheerfully and says that Lin Fan wins this fight. The guy cannot hide his emotions, his mouth open in amazement, he looks at the cyborg girl. Mei asks Yachun why she chose Lin Fan instead of her brother. Yachun says that she cannot bring herself to cause any harm or pain to Lin Fan. The guy thinks that since the microprocessor was integrated into Yachun, she has been acting a little strange. Lin Fan looks at Yachun and thinks about whether the system can save him if the explosive device detonates. Yachun confesses to Lin Fan that she wants to be close to him, even despite the threat of death from the explosion. Tsun goes into a state of frantic rage. Yachun's behavior is a mystery to him. The cyborg girl comes very close to Lin Fan and asks him to break away from his thoughts. Lin Fan turns around sharply. He tells Ya Chun that he is experiencing a wild, uncontrollable feeling of fear. Mei invites Ya Chun to die alone. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao has a different opinion. She invites Lin Fan to die along with the cyborg girl. 
Soon is greatly pleased by the fact that Lin Fan is afraid of death and experiences wild, uncontrollable fear. Soon receives a message that the helicopter is slightly delayed and will arrive at the site only in 15 minutes. A voice over the speakerphone tells Tsun that at the moment the chip cannot detonate in Yachun's body. Tsun realizes how terrible a mistake his technical support team made. A message intended for a closed channel was broadcast over the speakerphone. He looks at those around him with horror. The guy does not understand how such a mistake could happen. The operator at the communications control center accidentally presses the speakerphone button. Tsun calls the telecom operator a complete idiot and tells him that he is fired. Soon cannot take his eyes off those present on the roof, who begin to very slowly approach him. Lin Fan tells Soon that it's time to pay his bills. Sun begins to slowly back away. He asks Lin Fan what he is going to do and suggests not getting too excited and discussing everything. Soon tells Ya Chun how much he spent his time and money to make her a worldwide media star. Soon tells the cyborg girl that because of her, all his colossal efforts over many years have been wasted. Screaming that he can't just leave it like that, Tsun tries to stab Yachun. The girls are outraged by Tsun's behavior. Mei tries to stop her brother. Lin Fan does not have time to react to Tsun's vile prank. He intends to destroy the scoundrel if he harms the girl. Yachun successfully activates the black metal armor. She orders Tsun to stop. Tsun cannot come to his senses. He is in a state of shock. The girl's effective defense has paralyzed him. Tsun concentrates all his strength and struggles to get to his feet. It comes as a surprise to him that Yachun raised her hand to him. Lin Fan suggests that Soon immediately stop resisting and reminds him that he does not have the slightest chance of emerging victorious from the fight. Soon invites Yachun to free her body from the microprocessor and thereby eliminate the threat to her life. Soon approaches the girl and instead of pulling out the microprocessor, he tries to stab her. Yachun instantly reacts to the sneaky trick and using his fighting skills knocks out the enemy. Soon realizes that he has no chance of defeating the cyborg girl in a fair hand-to-hand -hand fight. Elder Zhao's granddaughter tells Mei that her brother is not only a scoundrel, but also a complete idiot. Soon struggles to get to his feet and showers those around him with angry curses. Yachun tells Soon that she no longer needs his protection and intends to achieve everything in life on her own. Maddened by impotent rage, Soon launches a desperate attack on the cyborg girl. Soon comes to terms with the fact that he cannot defeat Yachun in battle and falls into a severe depressive state. Yachun stands bending over the defeated Soon. The girls behind her are waiting for the further development of the situation. Mei is extremely dissatisfied with her brother's behavior and intends to have an educational conversation with him. Yachun is very pleased that she has excellent fighting skills and the ability to use her super abilities. Soon provokes the girls by asking them to kill him so that the microchip implanted in Yachun will be activated. Soon's speech is interrupted by a powerful blow from Lin Fan, who no longer intends to listen to his plaintive monologues. Lin Fan is tired of fussing with Soon. He says that his university classes start at 8 in the morning. Soon informs Lin Fan that the chip can be pulled out by pressing on Yachun's seventh cervical vertebra. Lin Fan, having this information, begins to remove the microchip from the cyborg girl's body. Yachun quietly screams from his manipulations. The microprocessor slowly emerges from her neck, and the surrounding space is illuminated by crimson flashes of energy. Lin Fan tells Yachun that she is now completely free of the microchip and her obligations. Mei breathes out a sigh of relief, happy that it's finally over. Yachun cannot believe that all the worries and fears are left behind. Lin Fan calms the girl down. The guy believes that nothing is over yet and intends to deal with Tsun. Tsun is outraged by his intentions, since he helped deactivate the secret microprocessor in the cyborg girl's body and hoped that after this, he would be left alone. Lin Fan tells him that his crimes are too serious to go unpunished. Tsun asks Lin Fan what he's going to do with him, to which the guy replies that he won't hit him too hard. Lin Fan is outraged that Soon likes to insert microprocessors into living people. He wants Soon to feel it for himself. Lin Fan has the intention of inserting a microprocessor into Soon's body, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter supports his decision. Sun asks the guy not to manipulate the microprocessor. Lin Fan says he will think about it. Soon hopes that he can hold out the time by talking until help arrives. Lin Fan tells Soon that every person has a chance for forgiveness if he does not repeat his crimes. Mei is inspired by Lin Fan's nobility, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter believes that Soon should be punished. 
Yachun tells Tsun that he is able to start a new life by going over to the side of good. Tsun perceives everything that is happening as a mockery of him. He cannot contain his anger. Lin Fan continues to tell Tsun that he still has a chance to correct all his mistakes that led to people's suffering. Tsun fully agrees that he has a chance and suddenly attacks Lin Fan. He says that nothing is finished yet, and everyone will pay dearly for his humiliation. The girls react very emotionally to Tsun's behavior. Mei asks her brother not to make mistakes. In a fit of jealousy and fierce hatred, Tsun strikes Yachun. The girl does not have time to react and activate protection. Tsun's voice is heard, which says that Yachun is nothing without a secret microprocessor. Tsun calls the cyborg girl an ungrateful creature who did not appreciate the effort and money invested in her. Lin Fan approaches Tsun from behind and says that the guy didn't use his chance in vain. Lin Fan had high hopes that Tsun would abandon his criminal past and start a new life. Lin Fan delivers a series of powerful blows to Tsun. The enemy has no way to reflect them. Tsun's loud screams and curses are heard. Lin Fan inserts a microprocessor into his body, and Elder Zhao's granddaughter encourages the guy. Mei is upset that her brother did not take advantage of the chance. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is happy with what is happening. Tsun stands limply in front of the girls. A secret microprocessor is built into his body. He experiences not only severe physical pain, but also moral pain from the humiliation inflicted on him. Lin Fan invites Tsun to experience the same pain that the victims of his sinister experiments experienced. The guy demands Tsun promise to stop his illegal activities. Lin Fan suggests that Tsun go to the hospital at dawn and hopes for his speedy recovery. Mei cannot hold back her tears. She is deeply upset by what is happening. Lin Fan asks Yachun about her well-being after Tsun's fierce attack. Tsun flees for his life, carefully trying to climb into the helicopter that came after him. He states that nothing is finished yet and threatens Lin Fan with brutal revenge. In parting, Tsun advises Lin Fan to carefully study the contents of his sister's phone. People around look at the flying helicopter with long, piercing glances. A loud telephone ringing is heard. Lin Fan asks Mei if this is her phone. The sound of a flying helicopter's blades does not drown out Tsun's piercing screams and curses. The helicopter pilot asks Tsun about his well-being and the results of the special operation. Tsun rudely responds to the helicopter pilot, ordering him to mind his own business. Experiencing enormous physical and mental suffering, Tsun lies on the floor of a flying helicopter. Tsun lets out quiet moans as he slowly and carefully approaches the co-pilot's seat. Breathing heavily, he vows to himself that he will take revenge on Lin Fan, no matter what the cost to him. The helicopter pilot asks Tsun why the microprocessor was not automatically destroyed after it was removed. Tsun tells the pilot not to rush things as everything is going according to a pre-planned plan. Tsun's face lights up with a happy smile. He does not doubt for a second the successful implementation of his brilliant plan. Those present are actively discussing recent events. Lin Fan carefully looks at Mei's phone. The girl shows Lin Fan her phone, which has a missed message from her brother. The granddaughter of Elder Zhao understands that Soon has deceived her by destroying the original flashcard and making himself a virtual copy of the contents. The initiative passes to Soon. He hopes that his opponents will pay dearly for what they did to him today. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is heard cursing as she throws the destroyed flashcard onto the ground. Lin Fan expected that the mission would end with the victory of the Zhao team, but the latest news convinces him otherwise. May tells the guy that he underestimated the cunning and cunning that her brother is capable of. Elder Zhao's granddaughter is concerned about the fact that information about the super processor project is stored in a virtual cloud. She tells Lin Fan that in this case, Soon has the ability to create an unlimited number of copies. Ya Chun suggests that Elder Zhao's team head to the Xiao family's home to radically solve this problem. Elder Zhao's granddaughter explains that the superprocessor was created for medical purposes and was intended for disabled patients who are missing limbs. Lin Fan asks Elder Zhao's granddaughter how to block virtual copies of the superprocessor. Elder Zhao's granddaughter has no answer to this question and decides to consult her grandfather. The girl takes an oath. She intends to return the secret superprocessor to the Zhao family. Lin Fan decides to leave the Zhao team because he needs to attend classes at the university. Mei takes Lin Fan aside to get answers to questions regarding their personal relationship. Ya Chun is infinitely grateful to Lin Fan for her salvation. She looks with tenderness at the clarification of the relationship between the young people. 
May tells Lin Fan that she is extremely dissatisfied with his increased attention to other girls. A helicopter flies over the city, heading to the main residence of the Xiao family. Soon feels very unwell and asks the helicopter pilot when they will arrive. The helicopter pilot informs the guy that the flight will last at least 10 more minutes. Suddenly, the helicopter encounters severe turbulence and the aircraft begins to shake violently. Soon is unable to stand on his feet and his body is thrown all over the cabin, causing him severe physical pain. Soon loses his balance and falls to the floor of the helicopter. He feels that the superprocessor is too tightly integrated into his body. The guy demands that the helicopter pilot change the route and immediately fly to the hospital. May tells Lin Fan that it is a beautiful sunny morning and she feels great. Lin Fan tells the girl that he didn't sleep all night and now feels very broken. It is very difficult for him to concentrate. He barely understands what May is telling him. May tells Lin Fan that she is filled with waves of positive energy bursting from within. Lin Fan hears the third bell and realizes that he is late for his classes at the university. May says goodbye to him, running to her classroom for classes. Lin Fan waves after her. He feels completely exhausted after a sleepless night and numerous battles. The sleepless night was a serious test for the guy. He had never been deprived of sleep for so long before. Sitting at his desk in the classroom, Lin Fan thinks about how to return the superprocessor to the Zhao family. Due to lack of sleep, the guy begins to have strange visions showing pictures of last night. He clearly sees Master Tian demanding a map of the dragon territory from Lin Fan. The visions change one after another. Lin Fan watches his father leaving on a secret mission. Being in a borderline state and under the influence of visions, Lin Fan gradually begins to fall asleep. The guy comes up with the idea that the Xiao family is somehow connected with the disappearance of his father. Suddenly, the guy begins to scream loudly, declaring his intention to brutally retaliate against his opponents for the kidnapping of his father. The teacher, busy writing an assignment on the blackboard, turns around to find out who is making noise in the classroom. Lin Fan returns to reality realizing that in his unconscious state, he failed another lesson. The teacher demands that the guy immediately repeat the topic of today's lesson. Lin Fan realizes that he does not know the topic of the lesson, since he did not listen to the teacher at all and was immersed in his thoughts. The teacher reads out loud the topic of today's lesson and repeatedly asks Lin Fan to answer her questions. Lin Fan, without hesitation, answers all the questions of the teacher who are impressed by his academic knowledge. He develops the topic of the lesson with additional information, which delights those around him. The teacher is shocked by the guy's broad-mindedness and impeccable detailed answer. Lin Fan asks the teacher for permission to leave, explaining that he is a little unwell. The guy walks along the deserted corridor of the university. Enthusiastic exclamations and laughter can be heard from the classroom doors. Lin Fan feels completely empty with a great desire to sleep and relax. In the toilet stall, he hears an incomprehensible noise and voices that attract his attention. Lin Fan intends to graduate from martial arts to join the army like his father. The guy again focuses on thoughts about his father, who disappeared many years ago. Deeply immersed in his thoughts, Lin Fan loses control of his body. People around are worried about what is happening outside the door. They ask Lin Fan if he is okay. Lin Fan's younger brothers are discussing the actions of the guy in the booth. They don't understand what's happening to him. The head of the military education department greets Lin Fan and asks him how he is feeling. Muir asks the guy if he remembers her and if he has a desire to study at the military faculty. Lin Fan reminds the head of the military education department that this is a men's room. Muir tells the guy about the need to fulfill agreements made in the past. The head of the faculty of military education asks Lin Fan if the guy has forgotten the terms of the contract. Lin Fan replies that he remembers the terms of the contract and asks Muir to get off his back first. The head of the department tells Lin Fan that it is time for practical classes. Muir has still not changed her point of view and opposes the guy's admission to the military faculty. The guy remembers defeated opponents who were the best graduates of the university's military department. Lin Fan is skeptical about Muir's words that the faculty was created in order to cultivate the elite in the world of martial arts. Muir is afraid that Lin Fan will disgrace the military department of the university. She believes that the guy is unlikely to be able to pass the entrance exam to enter the military faculty. Lin Fan's younger brothers try to listen to their older brother's conversation, but they cannot understand anything. Muir, continuing to destroy the wall, tells the guy that he lacks good manners. 
Lin Fan believes that the main reason is not his fighting skills, but Muir's personal dislike for him. Muir once again invites the guy to consider his decision to enter the military department of the university. Lin Fan replies that he made a clear decision to study at the military faculty and make a military career, like his father. The guy is aware of the full degree of responsibility that lies on him, and understands that admission and study will not be easy. Muir suggests discussing with the guy his personal matter, in which the history of his father is a blank spot. Lin Fan's younger brothers are puzzled by how Lin Fan was able to make a hole in the wall. Muir returns to the question of Lin Fan's father. She wants to know who he is and why there is no information about him in his personnel file. The head of the Faculty of Military Education invites Lin Fan to prove his intentions in practice. Lin Fan confidently accepts Muir's challenge. He is ready to defend the honor of his family. Suddenly, the conversation is interrupted by loud screams and stomping. The guy hears his classmates calling him. Lin Fan carefully peeks out from behind the booth door to take a closer look at those present. Lin Fan's classmates came to the rescue. They intend to find and punish the ill-wishers who attacked the guy. Lin Fan comes out from around the corner and tells his classmates that everything is fine with him, and the cause of the noise and destruction is a clogged toilet. The guy's classmates are happy that Lin Fan is okay. They argue about whether to call the police and emergency services. The loud noise of a conversation can be heard not only in the toilet, but also spreads throughout the corridor. Lin Fan doesn't pay attention to his classmates. He is focused on thoughts about the upcoming entrance exam. The guy believes that he should enter the military department of the university for the sake of his father. Lin Fan tells May the details about the incident with Muir in the men's room. May does not understand why the question of admission had to be decided in the toilet, and not in any other place. May is extremely dissatisfied with Muir's actions. Lin Fan suggests that the girl close this topic and switch to something else. Lin Fan asks May about how the military exams are going. The girl tells him that she doesn't know all the details. May advises the guy not to worry. She is sure that he will pass the entrance exams with flying colors. Graduates of the military faculty of the university are the elite of society with great prospects for social growth. Only especially gifted students and geniuses have the right to study at the military faculty. Craft and skills do not matter. What is important is intelligence, morality, physical and artistic abilities. The girl once again reminds the guy not to worry, as she considers him a capable student. Lin Fan is not confident in himself. He has heard about the very difficult questions and tests in the entrance exam. Lin Fan is a little nervous, but he is reassured by the fact that May strongly believes in his success. May tells the guy that her confidence comes from her heart and it never deceives. She remembers the recent night adventures and thinks that Lin Fan was very good at them. The girl assures the guy that the entrance exams will be a mere trifle for him. The conversation is suddenly interrupted by the director of the university, who quietly crept up to the young people sitting on the bench. May is very frightened by the unexpected appearance of a stranger. The director of the university tries to calm the girl down and invites her to eat a mango. The university director is in a very good mood. He offers the guy dessert. Lin Fan refuses the treat offered to him. The director of the university asks May not to mislead the guy. The university director peels a ripe mango and tells the guy that the military exam is not intended for ordinary students. Lin Fan is informed that only very capable people or geniuses can easily pass the exam. May tells Lin Fan that she has good connections on the board of directors who can help the guy get admitted. The director of the university says that many teachers are unhappy with Lin Fan's desire to enroll in the military department. As he leaves, the director tells Lin Fan that he personally is not against the guy trying to pass the exam. Lin Fan imagines what the military department exam might look like if it were administered by a university director. The director tells May that the guy has a good chance of getting in, especially if he has the support of his loved ones. The director of the university tells young people about the need to keep the university premises clean. Lin Fan and May look at the departing director. They believe that the reason for his good mood is the large amount of mango he ate. Lin Fan is mentally prepared for the upcoming exam, but he continues to be very worried. May's proposal makes the guy break out of his thoughts and turn around sharply. The girl decides to sign up for the exam and enter the military department of the university together with Lin Fan. The guy is very surprised by May's decision. The girl considers her chances quite real, since she has good martial arts skills. 
may suggest taking a shower after a tiring night in daytime classes at the university. Lin Fan is not impressed by this proposal. He would gladly take a bath or a jacuzzi. Young people decide to wash for a long time in the shower, then in the bathtub and jacuzzi, and after that go to the exam. The bright sun is shining. Young people are standing in the middle of the park. All anxieties and worries fade into the background. A virtual system screen appears in front of Lin Fan, and the guy instantly returns to reality. The system considers joint water procedures a bad idea, as this can pose a threat to the guy. Lin Fan refers to the lack of time and invites Mei to immediately go to the exam, bypassing the water procedures. The university's huge indoor sports arena can accommodate tens of thousands of spectators. Registration of participants takes place. Those interested must wait in a long line to receive the questionnaire. From the observation deck, the head of the Faculty of Military Education, Muir, carefully watches Lin Fan. Muir's voice can be heard saying that she likes the guy's perseverance and determination. The university director is amazed at the number of people taking part in the exam this year. Hundreds of people wishing to take part in the exam gathered on the playing field of the sports arena. Muir is surprised by how diverse the population is going to enroll in the military department this year. The head of the Faculty of Military Education has doubts about the correct organization of the event. The director of the university, Eating a Mango, says that there is no reason to worry. This year's exams will be held calmly and according to the regulations. Muir believes that such talk is of little use. Real organizational actions are important. The head of the military faculty is going to select the best applicants for his department. Muir tells the university director that this year she will not listen to his requests and recommendations. Lin Fan is surprised by the number of people present. The guy thought that the exams would be held in a quiet and calm environment. May tells Lin Fan that she sees many familiar faces, most of whom are her fellow students. A guy who can levitate and control lunar energy shows great promise. Students with good sword skills have a greater chance of admission. Lin Fan sees a large number of talented people. He doubts that he will pass the exam. The guy's anxious thoughts are interrupted by a light pat on the shoulder. Breaking away from his worries and heavy thoughts, he turns around sharply. The guy looks around. There is no one next to him. He cannot understand who could be tapping him on the shoulder. Lin Fan sees a junior high school student in front of him. May is surprised by his presence in the arena. A student asks Lin Fan if he is a martial arts student. Lin Fan wonders how a student with such a short stature was able to reach his shoulder. The voice of a schoolboy is heard telling Lin Fan that he can jump high. The system begins to award points to Lin Fan. The guy cannot understand why the system awarded him such a large number of points. May suggests Lin Fan not to bother himself with unimportant questions, but to focus on the exam. The junior high student looks at Lin Fan carefully. A faint smile appears on his face. The student pushes off the ground and jumps high into the air. He asks Lin Fan how prepared the guy is to take the entrance exams for the military department. The student doubts that Lin Fan will successfully pass the exam, but tells him that he will watch him closely. Those around him are distracted from their work. They watch with interest the schoolboy levitating next to Lin Fan. The guy believes that the junior high student is connected with the head of the military department, Muir. The student, in a sarcastic manner, tells Lin Fan that the guy should not screw up the first stage of the exam. Lin Fan believes that he will not disappoint those around him as many have high hopes for him. The guy vows to never retreat or give up, no matter the difficulties and dangers that will appear on his path. May watches the guy reflect. She tries to push him and bring him to his senses. The man behind Lin Fan and May wishes the guy to fail the exam miserably. Xiao and his new girlfriend believe that Lin Fan has no chance of enrolling in the military department. May demands that Xiao immediately shut up and asks him about the reasons for his presence in the sports arena. Xiao does not pay attention to his sister. He approaches Lin Fan and tells him that a non-entity is not worthy of studying at the military faculty. After his last loss, Zhao trained long and hard under the guidance of an experienced coach. In his training, he paid special attention to developing strength and endurance, and also significantly improved his hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Zhao intends to never lose a fight with his opponents again. Zhao advises Lin Fan to stay away, as his long and hard training has made him an invincible fighter. May tells her brother that he talks too much and hits him hard with her right hand. The girl tells Lin Fan that there is no need to be distracted and is encouraged to focus on the exam. The director of the university notices that a mysterious junior student is eavesdropping on his conversations. 
A student asks the university director when the entrance exams will begin. The university director realizes that his supply of mangoes is running low. The mysterious schoolboy tells Muir that the team of judges, university shareholders, and honored guests have already arrived at the site. The inspectors have received their official assignments and are ready to begin the entrance exams. A mysterious schoolboy informs Muir and the university director that the entrance exam can begin. The loudspeaker announces that the entrance exam will begin soon. The head of the military faculty, Muir, orders all candidates present to line up in even ranks. Candidates quickly follow Muir's recommendations, and the university director admires the candidate's impeccable construction. Lin Fan tries to express his thoughts out loud. May demands that he shut up immediately. Muir informs those present that the first stage of the exam is a written test. On the tables in front of the inspectors are sealed folders with exam questions. Muir informs applicants that ten minutes are allocated to complete the test. People around are dissatisfied with the amount of time allotted for the test. Two students are lively discussing the strict rules of taking the exam. Violation of discipline will be severely punished during the test. The participant who violated the rules will be disqualified. A friend of the disqualified student says the punishment is excessive. For such a remark, he instantly goes after his friend. Lin Fan is outraged by the severity of punishment for disciplinary violations. The inspector notices a participant using a cheat sheet and orders him to immediately leave the sports arena. Wearing shorts and sandals during an official exam is considered disrespectful to the teachers and the guy will be disqualified. The appearance of a sumo wrestler is regarded as a violation of appearance and the applicant is expelled. The director of the university comes to the conclusion that, given such requirements, it is unlikely that anyone will pass the exam this year. A mysterious schoolboy tells the university director not to worry, assuring him that the head of the military department has everything under control. Muir turns his attention to contender number three, standing in the fifth row. The student does not understand why the head of the military department paid attention to him. Number three introduces himself to Muir. He tells her that he has achieved good results in sports and leads a socially active life, helping others. Muir informs him that he has been expelled. The student demands to give a justified reason for the disqualification. Muir says that the reason for his expulsion is his extremely unattractive appearance. The head of the military department believes that his appearance does not meet the required standards. The student leaves upset, finally saying that Muir has no sense of taste. He hopes that the head of the military department will pay for her decision. The expelled student has powerful connections among the university's shareholders. The guy believes that he still has everything ahead. He intends to try to enroll in the military faculty again next year. The student has been preparing for the exam for a long time, and disqualification makes him cry bitterly. May has more than 200 applicants removed from the race. She considers Muir's requirements extremely severe. Xiao does not see any worthy competitors in front of him and suggests immediately going directly to the exam. Muir hears Xiao's remark, but she does not react as she remembers that his family is the main shareholders of the university. Xiao is aware of the fact that being born into a very rich family is a huge advantage. The head of the Faculty of Military Education informs the remaining applicants that high expectations are placed on them. The university anthem plays from the speakers. Muir announces the start of the exam and begins counting down the time. Inspectors open sealed folders with exam tasks. Lin Fan is horrified by the number of worksheets. He is not sure that he can solve them in 10 minutes. The guy listens to the conversations of the students around him. They rejoice at how easy the tasks are. The students around Lin Fan quickly solve the tasks given to them, considering the test to be easy. Lin Fan concentrates on the tasks given to him and begins to study them carefully. He is very surprised by what he sees, since the assignments consist of problems for primary school. Lin Fan believes that this cannot be an accident. He thinks that this is part of a cunning plan. The guy is watching the students, many of whom have not yet started the task. May is surprised by the level of difficulty of the exam tasks. She says that they are intended for lower grades. Lin Fan is very worried about the fact that half of the applicants do not solve the exam problems. Xiao and his new girlfriend hold sealed folders with assignments in their hands and are in no hurry to complete them. This reaction seems very suspicious to Lin Fan. He intends to figure out what is happening. The time allotted for the exam does not stand still. Lin Fan is going to solve the tasks as quickly as possible. 
the head of the Faculty of Military Education, Moore, carefully observes the students solving the test task. Lin Fan is distracted from solving problems by loud screams. The guy turns around sharply. What he sees surprises him. A girl lies on the ground. The attack causes her severe pain. People begin to gather around her. May cannot understand what is happening and looks carefully at the people gathered around the girl. Xiao and his new girlfriend still have not opened the folders with the exam task. Their eyes are directed towards Moore. The head of the Faculty of Military Education closely monitors what is happening on the playing field. Lin Fan runs up to the girl who fell on the playing field. He wants to immediately offer his help. The girl cannot get to her feet. She complains of severe pain in her chest. The students gathered around the girl intend to call medical workers and argue about the causes of the attack. Lin Fan is worried about the girl. He believes that she got sick at the most inopportune moment. From the other end of the field, a loud cry from a guy is heard, indicating that his wound has reopened. A man appears next to Lin Fan, sneezing nonstop and complaining of a sudden allergy attack. Lin Fan observes people who are experiencing exacerbation of chronic diseases and recalls his own intestinal problems. Students are wondering why now so many people are experiencing worsening old illnesses. The girl asks the sneezing guy to move away from her to a safe distance. Lin Fan begins to have doubts that the exacerbation of the student's illnesses is accidental. The guy thinks that perhaps this is part of some unknown plan to disrupt the entrance exams. Lin Fan is distracted from his thoughts by loudly shouting young people running past him. He does not understand where and for what purpose the two young guys are running and tries to listen to their conversation. Two young people run towards a student who is having an attack of bronchial asthma. Finding themselves friends with a guy suffering from an asthma attack, they think about how to help him. From the conversation of young people, one can hear the opinion that only emergency measures will help in this situation. One of the guys lands a strong kick to the head of his friend, hoping to stop his attack. He asks his friend if he feels better after using alternative treatments. The student is extremely dissatisfied with the use of such means without his consent. His friend insists that alternative treatment for his asthma attack must be continued immediately. The guy raises his hand to deliver a strong slash and tells his friend not to worry, since he has a special education in the field of resuscitation. He hits his friend hard on the back in hopes of stopping an asthma attack. Lin Fan looks at what is happening with horror. He believes that such treatment methods are not safe and effective. Alternative treatment methods did not bring the desired result. The guys began cardiac massage. The girls wonder why there were so many sick people among the candidates. Using manual techniques, the guy tries to revive the unconscious student. Lin Fan watches as many students continue to take tests while ignoring the sick people around them. Lin Fan is faced with a choice, solve the test in the remaining time or provide help to people in need. Lin Fan realizes that he has very little time left to solve the exam test. He hears a stranger who says that he needs to continue answering tests. An unfamiliar student believes that everything that happened was deliberately arranged by the head of the Faculty of Military Education. He suggests that the main purpose of the test is to identify those who will continue to the end, despite the circumstances. The guy says that Muir comes from a military family, so following orders is the first and main rule. He believes that the head of the Faculty of Military Education deliberately attracts sick people in order to confuse the exam participants. Lin Fan realizes the difficulty of choosing between following orders and being noble. An unfamiliar guy tells Lin Fan that all people are absolutely healthy and do not have any diseases. Lin Fan is surprised by the conclusions of the unfamiliar guy and thanks him for his brilliant analytics. An unfamiliar student tells Lin Fan that this is the easiest test and more serious tests await them. Lin Fan tells the guy that the girl is really sick. He cannot believe that she is faking it. The guy looks carefully at the girl's face and does not believe that it is possible to feign illness so skillfully. Lin Fan asks Mei how the sick girl is feeling and what illness she has. Mei answers Lin Fan that the girl experiences terrible headaches and frequent loss of consciousness. Lin Fan uses his secret acupuncture massage skills to stimulate points on the girl's face to improve blood circulation. Mei hopes that Lin Fan's massage skills will help bring the girl back to her senses. The girl regains consciousness. She winks at Lin Fan and thanks him for his help. The girl's reaction irritates Mei. She decides to once again stimulate the active points on the girl's head. Lin Fan realizes that the girl is not faking and has a serious illness. 
The guy tells May what kind of tests the head of the military education department is conducting. May shares her thoughts with Lin Fan. She believes that only those students who helped sick people will pass the test. Lin Fan carefully looks at candidates with physical injuries and illnesses. The guy continues to watch how strangers help those in trouble. Students independently divided into two groups while taking the exam test. Lin Fan thinks about whether a student can become a great martial artist while only worrying about his own personal interests. The guy turns his gaze to the playing field where a large number of students are helping sick people. May tells Lin Fan that elite martial artists must have high moral principles. Lin Fan realizes that he is at a dead end and does not know what position to take in this situation. May tells the guy that she knows the right choice and asks Lin Fan to trust her. A voice comes over the speakerphone saying that students have less than a minute left to complete the test. The head of the Faculty of Military Education informs those present that the written test is completed. Muir orders the students to stop and asks them to check the test results. 